like a, a hit class. Futures back in negative territory here this morning, coming off the sell-off that uh, we saw on Monday. Back to the downside overall for the market as we get Canadian GDP data coming in line, yeah, with expectations just out there at 8.30. The only economic data uh, to make note of for U.S. markets coming up at 9.45 and then also at 10 a.m. We'll get the consumer board, uh, <laughs> consumer confidence number at 10 a.m. this morning. That has been a market mover over the past couple of months. So I'll bring that to you live when it happens. Overall, a ton of earnings to get through this morning. Uh, big S&P companies coming through, McDonald's, Pfizer, XOM. Uh, there's a ton to talk about as far as earnings are uh, concerned, but not necessarily going to be on the day trading side of things, more investable type stocks. But uh, nevertheless, a good look at the overall market as we bounce around here, trying to get back to positive territory. XOM, in fact, has gone red to green in early trading on news of a buyback. So we'll talk about uh, some of the oil names trying to get back to the upside as well. Going to be a busy day. It's the last day of the month. It's Tuesday, January 31st, 2023. TraderTV.Live starts now. Uh, there we go. Look at some red numbers this morning. 0.32 for the Nasdaq to the downside. 0.16 uh, for both the uh, Dow and S&P coming off what we saw yesterday. Uh, we're also looking at a little bit red here still for crude oil. It was down more than a full percent when I sat down this morning. 0.77 right now. Bitcoin and Ethereum also. Uh, back to the upside, we did get uh, an employment cost index number there for the U.S. at uh, 8.30 as well. Uh, first, I've seen that one. 1% uh, versus 1.1%. So, uh, yeah, a little bit of a, a move there for the overall market coming off that, it looks like. But uh, Canadian GDP in line with expectations. Uh, again, 9.45, 10 a.m. Sharif here with me, uh, mm -hmm. as always. We'll get uh, consumer confidence coming up at 10 a.m., which could be a market mover. Yeah, the, uh, the consumer sentiment index typically moves the market as well. This the market just reacted to this jobs number. Very interesting, bouncing off that 4025 all the way up to 4041. Nice little move there, but I'm, I'm looking how to see how the market's going to di digest these earnings. We had some big earnings today, UPS, GM, a lot of mixed bags, so, uh, and a ZOM as well. Frank. Yeah, uh, we'll talk about oil here a little bit. Still negative on the session, but moving back to the upside, guys. It's uh, going to be an interesting day. There was a negative note once again on Lucid this morning. Uh, from Morgan Stanley, we'll get into these EVs have been just absolutely crazy, but a nice little pop here for futures yeah. overall. Yo. Yeah, I, I don't think it was Canadian GDP that did anything, but welcome. Uh, what happened to the bear? The bear is kind of like laying down. Maybe we won't change anything there. Cars? But yeah, we're back to positive. Uh, I don't it know was, what day it's going to be. But it we'll was continue. negative. I mean, obviously until basically right now on the Nasdaq. So welcome. It's going to be a mon It's obviously going to be a monster week. We got a bunch of earnings today that on big companies that weren't that great. Caterpillar missed for the first time in, in a couple of years. Expectations, they're down a couple of points. McDonald's is down a couple of points. Pfizer is down. However, you've got names like Spotify, which is off to, so, oh, it's only up 9% now. This was up almost 11%, despite the fact that they, they reported a loss. Actually, it's a wider loss than normal, but their, um, their user numbers were fantastic. So there's going to be a lot to digest here today. Going to be looking back at some of the EVs. Samsung stunk overnight. I think that puts some pressure again on the chips. So we'll see what happens with those. And uh, Carvana's doing a, uh, a ton of volume. I almost said something else there. Doing a ton of volume. I'm actually looking... Uh, almost right now for a bit of a dip in front of 1050 because that's starting to pull back. All right, we, uh, yeah, welcome guys. We're already in uh, NVIDIA. We just took 70 cents on the short there. We waited for the pop up there, shorted it. So this is my number one name from yesterday. We absolutely crushed it. We'll hope to do the same here today. Sticky note is out. We got a couple good ones on. We took a loss on XOM already. We'll talk about what that's uh, in there. But I have three positions already, Carvana, XOM, and NVIDIA. So you know, a vending machine company, a chip company, and an oil company. So well diversified here. NVIDIA right now is almost a dollar in the money, uh, as that's going to be a short today, I feel like, off Samsung. So we'll wait to see. But it's big-time earnings coming through. We're excited for it. 
And for some reason, I got this frog in my throat. Got to start Hydration Nation a little early here today. Welcome to Trader TV Live. You're now tuned into the best show on YouTube. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, and let's get this party started, boys, on the desk. Yeah, it looks like we uh, that employment cost data was, in fact, the catalyst here. Uh, Sharif's going to give you the definition here in a second, but uh, let me show you this first. Here it is, U.S. employment cost 1% versus 1.1%, indicating, Sharif, that we are heading in the right direction, tell them Yeah, more. so typically what you want is a higher than expected reading, but not in our situation where we're looking for employment to cool down so the Fed doesn't have to raise as, many inter as much interest rates. So essentially, employment cost index measures the change in the price businesses and government pay for civilian labor. So it's basically a cost measure analysis. Yeah, so not a huge move to the downside, but as you were saying, indicating maybe a softish move to the downside, not uh, no no cliff jumping around here so far this morning, but uh, just like that, guys, both the S and P. There's Lucid, yeah, just like that. Both the S and P and Nasdaq now positive. Didn't take much, but twelve thousand still going to be in play. That's the one thing that we got to watch. Um, got I have an interesting line. It's it's an easy line to draw because it's a round number here, but uh, that's a line we want to watch here because you had all kinds of trouble. Uh, you're bouncing off this at the open yesterday and then essentially, you know, kind of having trouble late in the afternoon getting past it. And if you were watching in the afternoon show, it's like, oh, man, the longs can't do anything unless we get above that number, which we didn't, and overnight resistance. So we creep in towards that. I think there's going to be some fade plays to be had. Maybe, I don't know if Meta gets to 150, but that's one of them that I am watching. Uh, to be sure, I like, I like some intel to get some shorts here. I just feel if we don't get through there, you want to have some idea of names that you want to go to the red side on. If we punch through, hey, we know there's some strong stocks out there. I'm in Carvana for the second time today. I was pre-market trading it yesterday uh, as well, and then we waited for that breakout. And look, this was just a trend of the upside. So this is more about the squeeze play. I don't think it cares about the market, but just looking for that dip into yesterday's high find some support, and then get back up to the top. I was in it above the 11 break early when I sat down, but that just couldn't get past 11.50, so waited for the dip in there on CVNA. But, man, some of these names are coming to the top side. I'm looking for some fades. I don't know if Meta gets far enough for me. That's an obvious one. And another one out there, uh, just where we're looking at big tech in that 12,000 number, I mean, Alphabet, downtrend, rejected 100 a couple of days ago, double top at 100. If we don't break 12,000, I'm looking lower high here today. I was in Alphabet short at the end of the day, and I'm going right back to that well, looking at that 98 level, still about almost a full dollar away uh, before getting a fill off 98 in Alphabet. Yeah, a couple good, I mean, a couple good ideas there. I, I, I'm not sure what the kind of day is going to be, but I know that, you know, heading into Fed, you know, it's been, I, I feel like it's been red the last couple of times, the last couple of days heading into Fed. I mean, we're, we know that they're going to raise a quarter of a point, so we'll wait to see where we go from here. The NASDAQ is still at that 12,000 <coughs> rate now, excuse me, <coughs> right now. So, I, don't, I mean, it's been a key level. We held under it yesterday, uh, busted through it, you know, went back and forth there. You can see here on the 30 minute, I keep pulling down the same sort of chart for everybody here to show that we're, Kind of still in that same range here. I mean, we, we did get down to 11,900, which I'd sort of hope that would be here right now because now you're bouncing back upside. I think you still want to buy any dips into 11,900. So right now we're at 11,960. Just like yesterday, came into 12, bounced a little bit, closed at it. So, you know, that, that was a good level there. And we talked about yesterday during the open when we ripped up that we may come back in to see that 12,000. Now, it didn't happen right away, happened later in the day, but right now you're bouncing again, I feel like, off this 11,900. So, you know, that, that bottom there, we bounced off to 200, which is 11,850, so that's always a really great sign. I guess that's a level to look at, 11,875 or so down there, right where we ticked lower. So if the NASDAQ can come back about 100 points, then you're going to get a huge buying opportunity, but we will be sitting there buying at 11.9 as well. But right now, the future, so we've averaged in. We took an 11 long on Carvana, and then we took a 10.75 right here. Carvana's pulling back in a little bit. We've got three positions already. They're, they're pretty light. We lost. Here's my XOM trade already. We went long at 13, got out at 50 when it broke, and we got a good fill there. So we lost 50 cents early. Uh, now we're only holding 25% uh, of that position. It's very dangerous to hold these earnings plays uh, in the pre-market. So I just thought 113 would hold, and then it was just like 
Wow, all the way down here, pre pretty hard there. Uh, in two candles, we got filled, and then the very next candle, we were out. So I was thinking that there was some sort of a note or whatever out on that. We'll have to check back when their conference call is, probably happening now. But uh, XOM right now, just kind of chilling out here at 113. So this is another name we want to look at. Hey, they only made 56 billion last year, so uh, I don't know why they're down here today. So that's a little strange to me. But we'll we'll look at that, and we'll uh, continue to put on some positions and uh, trade for you here. Records, not enough, I guess, for some of these oil companies. Uh, first segment of the show, guys, brought to you by Surge Trader, where traders can get a funded trading account up to a million dollars. Keep 90% of the profits, trade stocks, indices, Forex, crypto, whatever you want. Program has simple rules, no time limits. Go to surgetrader.com forward slash TTV. Use TTV at the bottom there. You can see uh, TTV, get yourself 10% off uh, from Surge Trader. Shout out to them. Uh, here we go. A ton of things to digest on the earnings front this morning, all ahead of what's to come. Uh, Sharif, you and I were just talking about, man, Wednesday is going to be spicy, uh, to say the least. Going to be interesting what uh, Fed Chair Powell has to say. Uh, down here, if we can go back to this real quick there, Prad. Uh, 25 basis point hike being priced in at this point. This is the first time, though, I've seen on this terminal anyways, the terminal rate <laughs> uh, below five. They're now quoting it at 4.9%. Terminal rate, if you're wondering, is just where they will end. So as far as the increases are concerned, they're now saying 4.9 is going to be where they cap things off uh, coming up in June. And then these two over here, Caterpillar and McDonald's among huge names reporting. Uh, Cat with uh, profit that was a little bit soft, uh, pointing to higher costs in Forex. Uh, squeezing margins as well. McDonald's beating, uh, but they're warning on inflation costs rising still going into the second half of this year. Yeah, like you mentioned, Brendo, CAC complaining about foreign currency problems with the strong U.S. dollar earlier uh, in this year and late last year, as well as supply chain issues. Basically, uh, their input costs went through the roof. So even though they posted a 20% increase in quarterly sales, their margins got squeezed. But Jeffries upgrading today uh, initiating a buy on Caterpillar. So what do they see? Yeah, it's an uh, interesting look, obviously. I, I mean, a lot of people have been talking about when to start putting some money back to work here, guys, with these bigger names on a longer-term approach. I mean, we're getting to a point where you have to start considering something. I'm, I'm not at the point where I consider buying. I, I own Caterpillar, but I wouldn't be considering buying more here. It just, like, it just recently broke out its two-year high. Like that 2021 top at 250 just got taken out. As a matter of fact, I remember I, I actually trimmed some on this stock beneath that number, which kind of sucks. But we could be headed back down to at least the 50 period uh, on a slowdown. I mean, you missed for the first time in a couple of years. I could see there being a bit of a dip. And Ultimately, I mean, the market looks like it's been strong to start the year. But if we get like a secondary push or another push up there in some of the tech names and the longer term belief is that you are still headed for some doldrums in the overall economy, then I think that rotation into some of the uh, out of some of the quality names and some of the sectors that have been safe the last year, that could continue down in. And I would be very patient on the way back with something like a Caterpillar. Uh, McDonald's has been uh, McDonald's was already kind of top heavy trending to the downside well i mean kind of it's also more it's more range bound but it was making lower highs all the way through i think you could see 250 on the stock i don't think either one of these are day trades to be honest with you um speaking of day trades i just want to go back over to cvna because it did just get up to 11 there so a little bit of a push off this 1060 area i got 73s in I probably want to give this to about that 1050, which means one to one is going to be in front of 11. I don't have any offers above here, but 1150. I want to avoid buying breakouts of the high of the day on this stock because you know that's where I would want to be adding to position and already be in position. So same thing as yesterday, where it's one thing you're in position, and if it takes out the top, you're adding to the position as opposed to just sort of taking a new entry. I'd rather be doing that uh, for that trend. I think at some point it could absolutely flush, but as long as it wants to hold that 1050, you know, we got it in the pre-market here. Uh, still no fills to the offer on Intel, but getting pretty darn close. Uh, all right, so, I mean, to answer your question about are they buys, I mean, I just feel like, you know, the move that Caterpillar's had here from 160 back in October all the way to 260, has just been a monster. I mean, th this stock is not supposed to move like that, 
but at the same time, that's because everyone was switching over, right? They were, I mean, the switch had happened a long time ago, but going from growth into value stocks. So right now, I would say it's the opposite way around. You're starting to see some steam come back into Meta, hopefully Microsoft and Google and Amazon, and some of those names are off the bottom. So it's not a surprise that this name will be off the top. So Caterpillar coming back down, and you could basically say uh, the same rhetoric for all these names. McDonald's, I mean, basically if you paid a dividend, and you're in the Dow, you were close to all-time highs uh, over the last couple months. So the same thing, I mean, I changed my stock, supposed to change, there it is. Same thing goes true for McDonald's as well. Um, look at some of these bottoms that were made back in this fall, and then just a huge move up, uh, and then tipping out here at 280. So like I said, you know, if you are in these names, it's been a great place to hide. But for right now, I'm still in them all. I, I've already told you, I'm not, I don't, I'm not selling anything, like all my long-term stuff, I just buy dips and hold on to them. So McDonald's continues to be in there. Again, if we get to 280, probably that's another good area to sell. We were just there. Let's see what happens with a lot of these names. For me, the most interesting name today, again, 180,000 shares. It's not you know, a big time amount here uh, for any of these. This is 300,000. I like XOM and we will talk about it. We just got filled right there uh, a little bit at 19 or 18, whatever our price was. So we took a little bit of a dip there early. Then we just take 20 cents. So we lose 50, take 20. I'm still holding out for 114 here on this name. So uh, let's just continue to watch some of these big names. But as Neil said, for me, I'm going to go where my uh, bread is buttered and just go stick with the tech names, the big cap tech names. We've been absolutely on fire. We're having a great month, and um, we're, we're going to keep doing that. So that's what I'm looking at. But, hey, I'm in three positions right now, and none of them are – well, I mean, NVIDIA is the one I want to be in, but Carvana and XOM are just kind of like playbills here. So let's wait to see, put some real money in, some of these real names once 930 comes about. Yeah, we'll see how this uh, day transpires, but the market itself on track for a pretty good month as well. You got to go back to June and July of last year uh, to find monthly performances uh, in line with what we're seeing here in January. Uh, just seeing oil, guys, trying to get back to green as well, about half a percent still to the downside. Uh, I want to mention this, no volume here yet this morning, but uh, VSCO, Victoria's Secret, uh, upping their repurchase pro uh, program. Uh, with a positive forecast as well. There's, uh, you heard Sean talking about XOM there. 59 billion. Let's take a second to uh, <laughs> swallow that number in the quarter. Uh, but staying in line on their repurchase program was the point uh, for XOM, which might be mm. a little bit of a cautionary note here for them. Yeah, investors were looking for something more along the lines of Chevron introducing a new repurchasing program. They haven't exhausted the previous one. They're going to continue with it. But they've blamed a couple of things here for a dent in the revenues. The first is a charge by the EU for windfall profits that they're saying is denting into the revenues. In addition to the increased cost of U.S. drilling. So uh, those two headwinds, Brendo, playing, uh, playing a part in today's uh, reaction to the earnings. Yeah, we'll see what happens here with oil. But uh, some of these stocks, some of the energy stocks anyways, back to the downside on that. Uh, there's a couple of these little ones. I saw a few people mentioning BuzzFeed again today, back to the upside five and a quarter percent or so, five and a half percent. We'll get into those. But uh, oil on watch here, guys, trying to go green, but share repurchase programs, all the rage still. Mm -hmm. Well, when you've got the cash, uh, you might as well do it. it was, Warren Buffett had the line. It was like, uh, I'm going to butcher it. Uh, if, you can, if you can pay 80 cents for dollar bills, you should go ahead, something like that. And that's why if you, if you think your stock is undervalued and you've got a bunch of cash on hand, well, if you can buy dollar bills for 80 cents, you go ahead and do it. So I suppose that's the theory here. Now, XOM had already broken. It, like, it had broken out at this 115, which I thought was a monster level, and then it rejected it yesterday. Kind of annoying because I kind of felt like that was one of those momentum levels that would just be great to play off of for a couple of days for a bit of a trend, and then it decided to reverse right away. The 50 period sitting here at 110, that's what I like. So it's, it's kind of boring to think about those $5 levels, but I mean 110, 115, 120 on X01 makes sense to me. You're going to have to watch crude oil futures, though. And that's just the reality. Like you cannot, you do not want to be trading these blind. I find like if you have a big time move, I, w I know I always have it up on my quote board so I can just slide over. I usually have a chart open as well, which I do. But you know, you just make sure that as you're getting to like key price areas, 
uh, on, you know, let's say we get down to that 110 area. What I wouldn't want to happen, and I'm sitting on the bid right now, is I wouldn't want us to be breaking fresh lows on oil futures at that particular moment. You know, also, I'm going to be zooming out and having an idea. Let's go to the daily, actually. I'm zooming out and having an idea. I'm missing data on this chart, too. Uh, where we're at, the big level is going to be down at about 70 to, 70 to 73. Those are your big support channels. I think if we get to 110, it's more like a 75 that's going to be holding up there uh, for XOM. So you keep these things in mind if you're going to be trading an oil name. It's not that you have to be sitting there uh, worried about what's happening in oil futures, but you know, right now they're kind of trending back into the upside. If they go green, it makes it uh, bodes well for that dip buy. I was looking to get something out here on Carvana. What are, we're on XOM right now? Is that what we're doing? Um, yeah, so look, I mean, a huge, huge, huge record. I mean, I don't know. Everything they talked about was great. Great, 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 great. Uh, all moving forward. So, you know, again, not, not too much volume, which has concerned me a little bit. Yesterday, we did have a downside move. Uh, this is the last two days, actually, going back to the 27th. So you can see we still kept making higher lows here. Uh, so boom, 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 as you kept uh, higher. No, no, sorry. Uh, lower highs right there right there right there. I'm like what am I doing as I'm going down 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 again down so I don't know I thought that today you know we dance around here we had made that bottom at 1150 here 11150 so again uh, I don't know like I went long 113 thinking that we would hold this 11350 that of course is when we were up here above yesterday's close so I just feel like why are we even red today on this on this report should be a good report kind of surprised how red we are here uh, down 0.72 but again, just because a lot of it's expected, right? We've had a huge run up in XOM uh, and in all the oil names. I mean, I don't have to. I mean, I don't have to show this to you guys. Uh, we all know where this has been. I uh, just hit 118, which took out its June highs uh, all the way back here, which took it out. Took it out a while ago. 106 was that June 3rd, I believe, high uh, right into there when oil topped out. Oil, I still think, has a long way to go to the upside, a long way to go back up to the upside. Oil's nowhere near, uh, and I know Neil just talked about it, nowhere near uh, any, any kind of tops, man. $77? XOM was at 106 when this thing was at 125. So, I mean, now that we get the numbers and we see exactly what's going on, what are the margins going to look like when oil rips back up into the hundreds, if it does? I'm not saying it does. It's just if you are a bull, which I am for the oil space, I think oil's not going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, I think it's, it's foolish not to be bullish on XOM. Now, whatever it does today is a completely different story. I mean, I hate trading names, to be honest with you, off earnings. I mean, I've I, I told you that as much as I can. Um, so, you know, we have to be careful with it. But as you can see right here, the volume's pretty weak, 300,000 shares. It's better than the other names. Uh, Carvana's going to be the best that I'm in here, uh, as you can see. But I don't even see XOM on the board. Like, XOM's here pretty much every day. And now it's not here on earnings day. So I don't, you know, uh, if, if I don't want to be the only one looking at this stock is what I'm getting at. So let's wait to see if it does pull back down a little bit. I'm going to try to respect this 12 area. And, you know, if it breaks that, then let's throw our hands up and just move on to something else. So XOM, I'm here for the dance. I only have 20% left of this position. We got out of 50% there when it broke. We talked about that. That's a 50 cent hit. Then it was bouncing around 13.20. So I was like, you know what? Let's take a piece out right there. So we did. That was another uh, 20%. So now we only have 50, 20, 30% left uh, of this XOM trade. It's a little bit less than that. It's about 25% left of this XOM trade. So we'll wait to see if it can hold that 112. But for me... Uh, it's going to be one of those uh, funny trades here. So let, let's wait to see what OXXOM wants to do. No volume, no trade for me. So let's see if it finds a bottom, and then we'll get back to it. All right, some uh, movement back to the upside here. Session highs, essentially, for the future. Some movement back to the upside for this one as well. Paramount, uh, with a couple of catalysts we'll talk about here in a sec. But uh, it was gapping to the downside. Just uh, notice we're trying to get back above 2230, which was that low from a couple days back. Uh, down 1%, but there it is uh, with the downgrade this morning. Some of the uh, streaming names, Warner Brothers as well, I saw yesterday was pretty weak. Uh, Bank of America on here to the downside. Nothing else terribly exciting. Uh, some energy names here for upgrades, but uh, you had a note or details anyways on this note for Para. Uh, Para. Yeah, basically Paramount is going to be fully integrating. Showtime is going to be fully integrating into Paramount Plus. Uh, across both their streaming platforms. Essentially looking 
to basically make some cost-cutting measures here. They're saying they're, they're going to divest investment away from areas in the Showtime brands that are underperforming that account for less than 10% of the views. So it looks like uh, some of the same people will be in the same spots leading uh, both Paramount and Showtime. Not much changes at the management. Yeah, so we'll have a look at uh, some of the streaming names. I was just reading through a note here for Pfizer as well. I mean, there was more. We were talking about this a little bit yesterday, but the company itself comes out here with uh, COVID forecast to the downside today. So uh, Pfizer under pressure. We can watch Moderna as well. But uh, some of the streaming names as well, guys, have been under pressure the past couple of days. Yeah, to be sure. Um, look, Netflix actually was very weak in yesterday's trade. Um, but there was, there was a name on there, and, and Pfizer... I kind of felt it would be a bit of a dip opportunity in Pfizer. I don't know if it's come down enough just yet. But BAC was on uh, on the, the, the bad side of the board there. I'm just going to, because the daily's missing some data, so I'm just going to bear with, I'm going to use my trade ideas uh, levels here and maybe pull this out and then see if we can't make this a little bit bigger for you guys. Just because Bank of America, you can see the 50 and the 200 on my other chart there, but this is getting very very close on the daily for a potential like break it's like 35 35 and a half it's been trying to go and it's been you know a few days in a row to the upside obviously a strong a strong bounce here you catch the downgrade it's almost like are you doing that downgrade just so we can take out the top on something like a BAC now when you get to an inflection point like this you know it's it's not it's not like that cut and dry where, okay, it has to roll from here. You get the convergence of the 50 and the 200 period. If you get above 36, there's plenty of room to run to the upside. But, you, you know, if you fail levels like that too, like, you know, one day, two days, on the 15 minute, this would be a third day where essentially you're at these two major moving averages and unable to push through it. Like that's, that would get pretty bearish and then suddenly you're looking for a big pullback. So this is on my watch if there's a test up to 36 or at least 35, 75 or something like that up to those, up to those highs for the potential that it could set up a trade above. And you know, if it ends up failing again, then I don't know that I, I, I love necessarily shorting it. I guess if the market looked weak or maybe I'd go over to that. But that's, what I, I, that's the kind of situation I like to set up an alert for because you know, you know you like it if it starts breaking out that level. If it fails it again for the third time, I think I'd come in tomorrow just almost looking for a short in BAC uh, regardless. But it's like twice in a row. I mean, three times if you count. If you count the pre-market already, it hasn't really pulled back. But twice in a row, you've kind of been looking at that breakout on the higher time frame and just not able to push through, which can be a bit of a bearish sign in the short term. I'd just rather it punches through and we can start engaging it along. Yeah, I was looking at some other banks. We talked yesterday about the strength with Goldman Sachs was up at one point something yesterday um, and then back into today. I was just looking at NVIDIA again here. <clears throat> I don't know. I, we, we did have a dollar in the money at one point or more than that, and now it's coming back up to the upside as the, yeah, the NASDAQ. You know what? I mean, maybe we should put a poll. Yeah, Pratt, do you want to put a poll up? Let's put a poll up that maybe expires at like nine. I can do it or someone else can That's do by it. By the open? Uh, yeah, by the open. Let's, let's say, should we turn our... I mean, what is this thing? Is it a mascot? I mean, I don't know. What, what should we? Yeah. I know it's a puppet, but I'm trying to figure out, like, what should we call it? Uh, should we turn our friend, I guess, from into a bull or a bear? Let's see if we can close this, like, at 925, and, uh, and then we'll turn it to it, and then we will have the voice of the people uh, on that, and then we'll be able to see what exactly is happening with said bull versus bear. I don't know. I'm kind of in the middle here. We're I, talking I, the NASDAQ, right? Yeah, we can put it on the NASDAQ. It doesn't matter to me. Oh, ES and the NASDAQ are pretty much exact same right now. So we'll go, we'll go either way there, and that way we can get a little fun thing happening uh, for us on the show. So there it is right there. Oh, it's up. Uh, it's up already. There it is. We'll ring the register right now. We'll go money, 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 money for money, a little bit money, money, uh, of a drop down here on Carvana. We'll stop that, uh, and then we'll do it. We just got 1107s right now, so that's really doing nicely here. XOM must be saying something not nice because there's the drop down. I thought I had an offer to get out at 12 but here it is just breaking now so there goes xom back down to the downside see how we haven't averaged in or done anything on this it is breaking lower right now xom so there's through 112 i don't know my order says rejected here so i'm gonna have to figure out why uh that did get rejected because it was actually supposed to go out a little bit earlier than this but uh maybe it's because the spread is so large anyways i'm gonna figure this out but there goes xom breaking through 112 so let's get out now if we can and uh just Forget about this trade for now. We tried to buy the 113s, as you guys saw. Good thing we got a piece out right there, but here it is dropping back down. And look, even if it rips up at the open, 
you know, it's violating some of the spots. Let's not get too wound up in all this. We have a good winner in Carvana and in NVIDIA, so let's not let XOM be the Debbie Downer here. Of European markets here this morning as we head towards uh, 9 o'clock. We'll get into U.S. futures and then get into the watch list uh, to come. That's, that's how things are shaping up right now. Half a percent for England, Germany about 0.3, 0.2 there for France. Pretty red right across the board to kick things off uh, over in Europe right now. Let's bring in Arun, as promised, get some uh, numbers or levels here uh, for the S&P 500 as we head towards what's coming tomorrow. Uh, it's, I mean, we were talking a little bit yesterday, Arun, about a wait and see kind of approach. It ends up being a bit of a negative day yesterday. What are you looking at today? Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't on yesterday uh, morning, but I did relay the the numbers see, over, uh, and hopefully that you guys got those numbers. But it was a buy zone, pretty much, is what I had said yesterday. Uh, forty fifty going on down to forty fifty, and clearly overnight they kind of snapped down, kind of shifted that zone a little bit. But it, it's still a buy zone; it's still in place, and I, I do think there's some decent support down here to catch a bid. So we're going to move that zone down from 15 down to 4,000 even, which is a big round number, obviously. Uh, so pretty much where we are right now, 4044, 4045, going all the way down to 4,000. I'm going to look for some buying, see if we can catch a dip. And uh, with the way we've moved up in the last little bit, clearly we're moving fairly sharp to the upside. Let's see if that slows down and comes back down. If it does, we can catch a dip on that and take it against 4,000 to the upside. Clear downtrend since Friday, uh, Friday afternoon. I think it was like the final five minutes or so when it finally turned uh, from um, north of 4,100. And we just continued that trend all of yesterday. And now it seems like we've broken that. So that helps the situation as well. So above, as we were coming down, we developed a couple levels yesterday, one being 4065. I'll keep an eye on that. Somewhere north of 16 to 65 seems to be a problem. Let's see if we can get above that as well. But I think initially, given that we're catching a bid in the buy zone that's been in play, Let's just see if we can't catch a dip and then go, go for some longs off of that. And then tomorrow, it's going to be, you know, like you said, it's going to be a wait and see approach going into tomorrow because tomorrow's a big day. Actually, tomorrow would be the beginning of an interesting set of days where we have news coming out pretty much for the rest of the week. So I, I would definitely uh, keep an eye on how this market trades off today towards the end of the day because we are ending the month. We're also going right into the Fed tomorrow. So I think we might see some unusual action as well later on towards the close today. Great stuff. Thanks, Arun. We'll check back in again tomorrow. Yeah, news and monster earnings to come the remainder of the week as well, obviously. Let's uh, jump into that. Uh, if you haven't yet, hit that link, enter your email address, uh, get the absolutely free watch list every single day delivered right to your inbox from us. We do all your homework for you. Here's the uh, note this morning on Tesla. Uh, I mean, not a not a huge deal, possibly, but uh, saying they're going to raise their spending plan uh, going forward into the next couple of years, 24 and 25. They're going to spend between seven and nine billion. That was versus a prior estimate, six to eight billion. So not a huge uptick here for Tesla, but noteworthy as we head towards their earnings coming up as well. Yeah, I watched Jim Chanos yesterday on Fast Money. He's still holding his uh, short position on Tesla and as adamant as ever. Uh, you know, there's still some headwinds, Brendo. Let's see how the stock does. It's still a lot off its highs. Yeah, down a little bit here this morning so far, guys, for Tesla coming off, as we said yesterday, 33% rally uh, last week. Yeah, and look, uh, channels aside, the market just made a bit of a bounce there. Tesla did absolutely nothing. So it's just sitting here, just chilling at 165. There was no bump up. My first thought was, okay, well, I like the shorts off this 170 area. And then probably even that 174, because I just feel like it can be a little bit of a fade on a pop today. Uh, and it doesn't even want to go into the upside. Now, when it, when it started dropping, I made the note that, okay, as bad as it was, you weren't even back to where you were uh, starting things off on Friday, which is down around that 162, which found support. So that was like Thursday's high, 162. Ignore These wick, dark pool wicks are annoying, but that bottom at the open... We open at 162. I kind of remember that day. Uh, so 162 does stand out for me. If that level gets taken out, I think you can head down into the 160. But I want to be fading it first. And if there's, if the market can continue to push through, we're above 12,000 now. I'd be looking first at that 70 level um, back on Tesla here. And then, you know, if we see that and it breaks and I'm out and I've lost on the short, then I'm probably looking at 175 as well. Only because I don't see Lucid on there. I'm just going to throw this into the conversation because hey, they're an EV name too. And why not? GM's in there. I guess I could have waited till then. But uh, Lucid, 
Look, if the Saudi, you can have that news that the, that the Saudis still support them, even if there isn't a buyout. But quite frankly, everybody assumed that, and that's why it did nothing. I think in late afternoon to help the stock after that big push up, twelve dollars is kind of still the big level here. Only it's now setting up as resistance. Um, I, if we get down to ten, I still like this thing at ten bucks. I think if it flushes into that level, that's kind of a good psychological place for it to catch a bit. I just went the wrong direction. On the daily, you can see it would still be right at that 50 period moving average on the daily. So if this continues to fall, maybe it gets to 10 at some point. I don't know if that happens today, but that's where I'd be looking to pick up a bid on Lucid. And then of course, 12 is that resistance. We probably have to play for, uh, pay for locates to go short, which I don't think I've done yet. Yeah, you do have to. I've already done those. Um, <clears throat> thanks, Roberta or oh, Roberto. Uh, I missed your name there. Uh, Roberto, what's up, Roberto? Um, look, so you wanted my thoughts on Lucid. I mean, we absolutely, Lucid's been my most profitable stock over the last couple of days, and uh, for good reason. Uh, this was a huge move to the upside here, obviously up to 18 bucks uh, on that news, and then it faded right out. We were long down here at 9.50. We were long again at 12 when this all happened. Then we got, got long again right here at 12 and got it out at 13. As you guys watch the trade of the day go nuts there. Carvana right back up to the upside right now. Um, so yesterday we were testing in front of this 12. It was really good. We got a bunch of we got a bunch of 12s, took it out. Bunch of 1190s, took them out on the high side again before eventually we dipped down, breaking that 1190 where we got out. And now you kind of using like Neil said, 12 as a top. But honestly, I'm buying any dip. So I want to buy until we break 11. Then I want to buy again until we break 10. So I just want to use these even dollars as outs. So right now, my bid, you asked me for it, is down at 11.20. If we can get, that bid is 11.20 right there. So maybe if I zoom back in a little bit, you'll be able to see. So that's 11.20 right there. It happened at 7.45. I just want to go long on that number. And then we'll get out if it breaks 11. And if it breaks 11, and again, maybe it's too conservative for you. You know, I'll trade what I see and, you know, with my buying power and things like that. So, um, you know, 11.20, out at 11. And then we'll regroup it after that. So I want to start to buy as we come back in for Lucid. I always want to be long this name and never short. So that's, that's sort of the plan for me on Lucid. If we get back up to $17, $18 and we're going parabolic again, then we'll, we'll flip over to short for sure. But for right now, um, you know, we did pay for short. So if something does happen, we're in it. But for right now, I only want to go long on Lucid. And it's going to start somewhere down here. Uh, in the 11 at 11:20, then 11 teens, and we'll hold that till an 11 break. So that's my plan of action there for Lucid. Uh, Carvana just bottomed out again uh, down there at 10. This first time it was 10.60, where we 10.70, where we got long roughly 10.65, and then right there we bottomed at 10.80. As this was coming down, I put another bid right here, but it stopped and popped. So we'll wait to see here coming into the open. Remember, Carvana does have the big buy in balance right now, so I could actually see this printing off the open and then coming back down. So would still wouldn't surprise me to see a 10.60, 10.50 fill. Pretty early here on Carvana. Leave that up for a second. Yeah, sure. So the uh, that 1.2 million Carvana buy in balance, there was an order that I could see in the book when I sat down for, and they were already bidding at $11.11, 900,000 shares. So assuming that order is still in there, there's a decent chance that that imbalance might be like 80% of it, just rough math there, 80% of it could be topped out at 11.11. So if we're above that price, I'm not necessarily sure um, that that about that that one million share imbalance would be as large. That's just based on something I saw in the book. Because you can see the New York book uh, when you watch these stocks. You know, let me just quickly show you what that looks like. So you go C V and A. Uh, you'll see it flash because it's locking the market. But when we're we're at that price, I was seeing it. So you'll see like the book back and forth. But the end, the New York book, which is the key one, which is not valid until you get the open. It was eleven eleven. I saw the nine hundred thousand shares that were on CVNA. So if it's above that price, maybe there's no buy and balance. I'm kind of hoping if it's below it, it gets a spike to at least that level. All right. Rundown brought to you by Trade Ideas, comprehensive stock scanner used by active traders to quickly and efficiently identify trading opportunities daily, featuring powerful tools like the innovative stock races to quickly identify and act on potential trades. Check out the link in the description, guys. 20% off from us to you for Trade Ideas. Shout out to them once again. Uh, let's talk about, uh, yeah, Spotify uh, up on a decent report here. Numbers right across the board beating expectations for Spot, including uh, monthly active users. I noticed the 
uh, premium number specifically was uh, 14% uh, yeah. year over year. Looking to add, they have 207 now uh, premium monthly active users, but they're, uh, sorry, 205. They're looking to go up to 207. But their uh, gross margins, Brendo, grew by 80 basis points, basically saying that they took uh, some investment spending off the table as well as, well as broad-based music favorability, whatever that means. Yeah, so uh, the majority of the revenue, which is a positive, obviously, coming from the premium paying uh, subscribers now. So nice look here, guys, the forecast as well. Yeah, I mean, despite the fact, I mean, they still don't make money, but... You know, the growth is certainly going to be there in the user side of it, uh, probably still a little bit expensive. But for these stocks, it's not, you're not really caring about the valuation when it's, got, when it's been dumped like this. You just want to look for the short-term momentum as a day trader, which, as you can see, you held, a, you held exactly 100 yesterday. We closed at 100, zero, zero, uh, to the penny, which is kind of fun. And then the 200 period, we're above that, breaking out. I don't know if we, see, if we get a shot at this 104. Again, it's kind of frustrating, but... You know, that was a nice breakout at 104. I kind of wanted that dip by tighter to 105. If it does pull back, which I'm a little skeptical we even get that, I'd try to pick this one up around that 105 area. You got like 103, that's Friday's high, as your support, and then off to the races. On the daily, you get to like 115, 116 before you find anything significant there. So there's definitely room for this to continue to go. It's just a matter of do I want to chase it up here, which I'm not sure uh, that I want to go that far in terms of chasing the move up at like 110. So if we get a dip at the open, I'll be looking to try to buy this one uh, on spot. I'm just going to pull it back. It's a, it's a thinly traded and not a ton of volume pre-market, so I wouldn't want to get filled too early. Uh, but at the open or closer to it, we'll get a better sense if we can get a fill down around 105. I know three is where I want that stop, though. Yeah, I remember it's funny because I remember just trading this long and we did really well when it was down there near 100 bucks uh, and we traded that long. I think that was on... That was an upgrade or a downgrade. I don't know what it was, like, because now earnings are here now. So um, I don't know what it was. But we, there was some good volume here not too long ago here on Spotify. Um, and we traded it off that 100 level. So, yeah, I think just uh, let's just play the lines that we play, man. And this is the 200 period right here down at 105. So, yeah, any kind of a dip down for Spotify, I don't think it'll be up 10% by the time the day comes through. But we'll see if it does hold. It does hold. And, um, you know, it price doesn't lie. It's, it's going to trade where it wants to trade. So let's wait to see here. I, I stopped the chart at 4.30 um, and then started up again at 7.30 or so, or sorry, 6, I believe, 7, sorry, uh, right there today. 7? Yeah, 7. So um, I don't have any data past 7 or, or after uh, before 7.30, before 7, or after 4.30. So uh, I'm not using any key levels down here. I'm just going to use these lines. So 104, 105, right into here is where we want to go long as well. So I'm waiting for a dip buy on on Spotify, but my attention won't really be on this name, to be honest with you, because it's a New York name. Let's just check. It doesn't even have interest here today either on the open and balance. So I don't know. We'll look at it. There's Pfizer continues. Yeah, 42 bucks. We can watch out for Pfizer uh, today at some key levels as well uh, as the charts will load up on this one. And we can see that Pfizer has been sort of downside here, 54, trying to bounce right now uh, off of $41. Uh, thanks, Rob, yeah. Uh, 40 $41 there would be a good level there for Pfizer as well. So that could come in here. We're missing some daily data here on our chart, so I don't know what, exactly what's up with that, but I would look I at that 4150 bottom for Pfizer looking really got... good. So I'm going to go long if we come back into 41 for Pfizer uh, there today. Just another idea randomly off of the imbalance locator. The, where was Pfizer? There it is right there, the third name on there. Ford with relative strength as well uh, in this space. Now that they're above 13, I really do like Ford above 13 here. But I, I saw some of you talk on the chat, and I actually think it's pretty cool uh, that, that sort of logic about what Elon Musk did because they're the only electric company. Well, we'll see. Ford's going to make a margin, obviously, on their cars. So will GM. But um, by lowering the price of their cars, Tesla has essentially forced every other EV name to rethink pricing as well. And if they're the only car company, like can Lucid drop the price of, of, of their air? Can um, Rivian drop the price of their truck? They're already not making money or their margins are so small. So by Tesla bringing down the price, it actually forces more decisions on the end consumer to say, hey, if I can buy a Model 3 for 50 grand, why am I buying that Lucid Air for 90, 
for example, right? So I just think that that's added a lot of pressure to some of these other EV names, and I'm glad that someone talked about that uh, in the chat earlier. I, I, I just, that's part of the reason why Tesla's up right now, 68% or whatever from the bottom, uh, you know, based off that announcement. So I, I actually thought that that announcement was pretty weak, showing that there was weaker demand, but it actually forces the hand of many of these other EV names to come in line with that price, and they're not going to be able to match it. Uh, so I, I think that was something that was pretty interesting. We'll see where that goes from here. Obviously, Tesla's all the way up right now, and these other names are all the way down, unless you're in Lucid. Speaking and, of. Uh, the Saudis are around. Oh, GM next. Oh, a little GM. Yeah. GM, Brendan, with a nice beat. <laughs> oh, right on cue. Let's uh, dig into this a little bit because there's a couple of interesting facts coming out of this report uh, for GM today. Uh, it's surprising, really, right across the board. Higher uh, quarterly profit. The forecast looks great for 2023 as well. Uh, there's this deal with, uh, we were just talking, Sharif and I, about this uh, deal with LAC. Uh, Lithium America on expansion of their, what is it, Arizona mine? That's, Nevada. Uh, or, yeah, Nevada, that's going to pull out enough lithium, apparently, to produce a million EVs per year. So they say, Brendo, and this has been the challenge for a lot of these EV makers. They just don't have access to the proper supply chain. There is a barrier to entry into the lithium and the cobalt world, as we know. And so uh, streamlining this process obviously helps, but Brendo, they're looking to make 400,000 EVs through 2022 through the first half of next year. So that's quite ambitious. Uh, day highs here, guys, as we speak for GM. Yes, sir. And uh, the big, I was just sort of saying to Sean there, it's the number, it's the biggest uh, investment in a lithium uh, mining operation by a U.S. Uh, a car company, so GM, it's up 7%. I, I don't know how far I want to chase this, but if you go back to the daily 50 period, 200 period, breaking out on both levels, above both levels, and room to you know 40 to 42 here on the daily chart. Ooh, so I, I do feel like I, I like want it. to be long in Thank front you. of 38. That's what I was sort of saying this morning. I tweeted that one out and probably should have just sat in it when it was at 38. Now I'm having to try the dip buy. If we can get anything in front of 38 on the dip, we just rejected 39 or it just rejected 39. So I'm looking to see if I can't get a bit of a pullback uh, on General Motors to go for that long. If it can't hold 38 at the open, I think it's kind of easy peasy uh, to get out of it. I like when a stock is trading into a new range today. So the fact that their guidance is good, if that's going to be the catalyst, let's go for it. I don't know that any of the other earnings, I mean, Spotify and GM are the two for earnings that I think bode well for a day trade. So let's go for those two. I mean, I like, I'm with you on Ford in the 13. Uh, I just kind of feel like GM might have a little more juice to it today, for lack of a better term. Ford on its own, like this is not terribly different. If you look at if you look at the potential breakout, just it feels like GM's a little bit stronger, but it's not the it's really it's almost the same kind of trade, like double top here on the week, and you're trying to take it out. Not through the 200 period just yet. You're through the 50, so there's some room for Ford to go, but GM is just breaking those levels, whereas Ford has been riding the 200 period. You know what? The more I look at this, alert for when Ford breaks 200 period moving average. That's going to be wild because it has been rejecting it since August and on a dime is probably short before it gets there. Uh, but yeah, I like GM to the long because Ford hasn't broken through yet. I think That's Ford breaking uh, right here on the daily. Uh, you have 1350. I know we're talking GM. I don't, I own GM and I don't know. Uh, I'll have to see. I probably own the same amount of shares in GM as I do in Ford, the same dollar value. Uh, what about a break here of 1350? I mean, we bounced off there a couple times. Uh, not a couple. Again, we're missing. Oh well, no, we're actually not missing data. This is the e signal chart. Uh, right into here, 1350. That's why I'm using it. So I feel like that. I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be a resistance spot here because you're already up three and a half percent right now uh, for Ford. But, you know, I really like these 50 levels. That top is actually 53 or 54. So, you know, breaking back above that, I would much rather prefer. I've been buying some Ford down here. So Ford's been a great, great trade. You guys know that I've liked that. Shout out to Randy. Him and I were buying this thing at six or seven bucks. So it's been a good trade and it went up to 25. Uh, so, you know, we know that Ford can go and I think it does go here. So I'm going to watch out for this 1350 area. Let me look at it when it gets back over here. Let's see the momentum because the thing is, I feel like you could rip off the open 
and then start to come back because simply put, it's a little bit too high right now. So, you know, I like Ford, I like the dividend and I would rather trade Ford than GM, but GM has the news. It's 1.3 million shares today. Uh, it's rallying to the top and it's daily looks pretty similar as well uh, to that of Ford trying to, here, I'll use this chart again, trying to break. So there's that Ford high of 1350. It's the GM high of right where we're at right now, 3870. So there's 3870, this is 3870. What's up, Randy? You Just like talking. Ford or GM, Randy? GM. GM. Randy goes GM instead of Ford, oh, uh, as we ask him right now. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll watch there, it. Here's 39. Yo, watch out. Watch out, Randy. There he is. We were, we were talking about Ford or GM. You said GM. GM. Why is that? Okay. Ford has some issues. Ford has issues. Is but GM doesn't, of course. Uh, I like, Says the man with the drink box. I like the new, um, yeah, was that, is that Mango? Peach mango, yeah, yeah, good. Uh, I, I, I like that new Corvette. They've redesigned that Corvette. It's gorgeous. I don't know if you saw that. That yeah. looks great. I was looking, I was like, is that a Lambo? And then you look closer, obviously it's not. But uh, I really like the new look there on that Corvette and the Cadillac is getting electrified. Um, so yeah, we'll see. But uh, Carvana right now, $11. That one's moving around as well as is Tesla. It should be a good one there. Carvana. You did up. it again. Yeah, yeah, I was just looking because it just broke back down <laughs> through 11. Carvana is a position that I have. So let's go over to Brendan, get the news on Carvana, then we'll talk about the trade. Yeah. Uh, let's talk Carvana here. A pretty impressive couple of days right across the board, 9.5% right now for oh. CBNA, trying to get back to uh, day highs. But one, two, three here in a row uh, for CBNA, including a 30%, you know, mild 30% rally That's on Monday. That's not that much. Yeah, guys, I mean, it's been one hell of a move since we started this uh, rally back January 11th. And, uh, you know, we took a bit of a, a pause here between the 19th and the 27th, but we're back in full force to the high side. I'm looking at $10, obviously. Uh, it seems to be a, a base. That's basically where we closed yesterday. Yeah, I've got no trade on this except the meme stock to the high side, Brendo. Yeah, 55% short, guys, for CBNA. According to some sources, 58. <laughs> Finviz, it does, not that it matters. 55%, 58 that I see on Finviz. Let's be honest, that's all, it's the same nonsense. Uh, and that's going to be huge, and therefore you're playing momentum. It just dipped off of 1050, and now look at this interesting double top. So I'm, there was that order, like I was saying, at 900,000 shares at 1111 was early on the book of the New York book, which is only eligible for the opening print. The last couple times it's gotten to that price, it's reversed exactly off of 1111. So I want to be in this one long, and at the open, I think that's going to be that key break. If it breaks that at the open, fills that order and runs to the high of the day, I think that's going to be a positive. If, that, if we're below that, you could see, like, and I'm hoping it gives one last dip. I don't know if it's going to happen now. Uh, so we can dip in and get some 60s, and then maybe that goes back up to the 11 on the open. We're running out of time for that to happen. I will sit on the bid here. I am favoring buying the dip as opposed to the breakout trade. So when it broke the high earlier, I bought the dip off of it. And then when it faded, bought the dip at support, 1050 sits as one, and then $10. We closed it exactly $10, so that, that makes some sense for a secondary dip buy. But that's two separate trades. I wouldn't hold this. I wouldn't hold 1073 all the way to 11. That I hold to 50s and then look for all the way to 10 and then look for a different long at that 10 even on CVNA. It's the squeeze one I'm looking for today, although I do have my eyes on Bed Bath & Beyond. That's more to monitor in case there's a pop. Yeah, I mean, Carvana, again, you know, it's been a good trade for us. We've been trading this one. It was a trade of the day yesterday. We're long in this name again. We took the 11 break, and then we averaged in back down here to 1070, and then we've taken some profit up here at 1108. That seems to be the, the, the spot. I'm actually waiting at 1118. What does, that, that part is irrelevant. Just here, here at 1120 to take a piece out, and then I still think that we take out the high spot here. So, you know, poison pill, they're trying to invoke that. You're up 108% over the week. Uh, it's just been a monster move up for Carvana here, um, you know, bankrupt, I guess not. Uh, that This is when Morgan Stanley came down and brought that to a dollar price target. I remember this day, it went from seven down to four, and we traded this. This is one of our my better days there in December. Um, and then now it's just bouncing right now. You do have that top. I always want everyone to see this uh, right here. So, you know, uh, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see it a little bit better here maybe. Yeah, there it is right there, November 11th or so. Middle of November, we got up to this $12 mark and stopped. So, you know, that could be an area that you look to get short. We've paid for shorts on this name. Like I said, I'm not going to short it till we get to that $12 mark. And even then, if we're still long, then we're gonna be cheering this thing going forward. So let's see if Carvana can take out $12 today. But if you're long, 
I mean, I'm taking a piece out of 11.20 here, then 11.50, and then just like Sharif said, I'm long right on the sticky note. It talks about it right here, get long 11, and I'm gonna try to hold this back down to 10. You know, no scalping to the downside for me. It's gonna come back in. We'll see what it does at 10. And I know that spot right down there is 985. I don't care. If it breaks 10, I'm gonna get out. Uh, I'll probably have too many shares. We'll, I'll judge the position at that time, but that's my aggressive out right there. It's gonna be 10 bucks. So right now I have more bids all the way down and my best bid is at $10.15. So do I think it can drop? Yes, I do. But do I wanna buy it? Yes, I do. So we're gonna wait for that one as uh, just check back here on, on XOM, back above 13. So we're out of this position. Long at 13, out at 50, out at 1320, then out at 50 again uh, when it came back up. So we'll, we'll, we'll slip up on XOM here today. And then NVIDIA, we're waiting for a high side. We have some high side takes here as well. But now that this market's ripping, I'm wondering if NVIDIA is not a short, not ripping, but now that the market's up. Oh, we got to check in on that super chat in a minute as well. Not super chat, we just got a super chat, sorry, on the uh, poll to see what's happening yes. with the poll. Because right now, yeah, NVIDIA is going back up to the upside. So we may have to get regrouped on this one, guys. Upstart just popping up here, guys, 7% to the upside. Uh, they've implemented their cost-cutting and reorganization plan, uh, which is going to include a 20% reduction in workforce. Uh, looks like they'll save about $57 million in operating expenses per year. So uh, big move up, notable here for uh, UPST, worth a watch today. Yeah, let's talk about some of these uh, chip makers heading towards AMD after the close tonight. We got NXP, little one, or smaller, uh, I noticed this morning NXP is 48 billion market cap. I didn't I think was it was surprised. that big. Uh, Samsung overnight with a disappointing report. It was, however, actually ended the day up in Korea in the uh, Asian session. So, uh, a wide range of catalysts to look at with uh, chips today. What are you What are you going to pay attention to? Yeah, I'm definitely looking at AMD here, and I'm looking at it from obviously an earnings perspective, but as well as a price action perspective. Look at my chart here. I mean, we've obviously have a top at eighty dollars. If we can break through that eighty level, we'll obviously have a new high, and that's kind of what I'm looking for. We already have a, a higher low. So from a macro picture, obviously we have a lot to come back to, 165 to the high side, but I think we're on that right track if we can get good earnings. Yeah, we'll see what happens uh, again after the close tonight, gonna be the uh, headliner as far as earnings are concerned. Still watching, uh, UPST just got back below that uh, high from yesterday as well. So uh, notable, decent volume coming into Upstart. Yeah, big move in Upstart. But I, I want to talk quickly at TSM, for, in the chip space at least, and I'll get to Intel in a second. But uh, TSM broke 92s just the other day, tried to get to 95s in the daily, kind of running into some resistance here. And overnight, they just gapped down, had a pretty big gap to the downside on that Samsung news. I like the 91 and 92 channel here, but I wanted it breaking into the 91, kind of failing 92. I'm not sure we get there. That does lead me to Intel, which just peeled back. We just got below, I'm going to cancel my 2850 because I don't need that yet. Uh, we just got back below 12,000 and 28 just held on Intel. So I'm looking for the short in front of 28 uh, on Intel. I like that level. I like 28.50 better, but we're right here right now um, on that on, on Intel. So I do favor it. AMD, I was looking at it. It's like, okay, well, they're reporting. It's been pulling back. I think supports at 67. It's right in the middle of the range. I think there's a short to be had. It's just I'm not sure it was till 74. So Intel's right here, the level I like. So I'm going to short that one. And I wanted to quickly get to the Super Chat with three minutes to go. Thank you, T-Money, for the Super Chat. Great show, guys. Been watching from the UK. Shout out across the pond. You love it. Uh, we love you, too. Uh, have you checked the AMC news this morning related to Saudi Arabia? It's like 30 million uh, divestment or they're making a sale there. I don't think that's what's remotely interesting about AMC, to be honest with you, because 30 million isn't gonna, it's a drop in the bucket. What's more interesting is next month, I think it's next month, double check that, oh, March. I mean, technically we're still in January. I think it's March they have the vote coming up where the expectation is that AMC, that there's gonna be a conversion, Ape shares to AMC. Channels just talked about this, how he has that um, arbitrage trade on, which is like short, sorry, short AMC, long Ape. And right now, like that's, you're actually breaking out an Ape as it's gravitating toward the AMC price. That's much more interesting from a trading perspective uh, because if the vote's supposed to go through, then that's just a heck of an arbitrage, 250 to five bucks, and they're gonna to gravitate towards each uh, uh, to the same price as it's gonna be one, uh, one issue. So look, at the end of the day, I think that's the more interesting. I don't know if there's a day trade off that, except for look for longs on Ape and look for shorts on AMC. Hedging it is more of a long-term, not more of a swing play is hedging it. 
Let's get ready to rock and roll here, guys. There's only two minutes to open. Let's check out the imbalances quickly here as we go. Carvana's still the buy. Ford's still a buy. Everything gold is a buy right now as well. Uh, sorry, that's a sell. My bad. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't really see any big NASDAQ names here, so I'm going to just continue uh, to trade as per usual. I was looking at Meta. I don't know what the heck just happened to Meta. Went down to 147 and then right back to 148 in the same minute. I was looking to break Meta that's long real. through 148.50. Uh, yesterday's level there, 148.50 to the high side uh, right there. But I don't know uh, what's going to happen with Meta. Uh, the name that I like right here to get short early is going to be NVIDIA. I don't know about this anymore. The market just made a nice move above 12,000. Now we're below it. So all, all is fine right now on the short. But a 192.50, if we break that, um, I don't like, we'll, I'll take a 192 short. It was the top just now. I'm actually surprised it never got filled. I was sitting there at 192. So that, that sucks to not get that filled because we'd be 50 cents in the money. But we'll still take it one more time. But if it breaks 192.50, we're out of this name. We don't want to get like smacked around early uh, because the, the market's figuring itself out. So we'll wait for everything right now as we're really excited for this market to get open here. It's only 30 seconds. Katrine Ooh, she's there bell. today. It's Katrine on the bell. So uh, looking really good with that sweater there. Thank you, Katrine, for coming through. With only 20 seconds to go, we're getting ready to rock and roll now. Um, I think it's going to be a good day. We have Fed up here tomorrow. Let's make some trades early and get them going. So right now, 2,500 poll votes, 1.1K likes. What was the poll ended it's at? It's bull. They want 59% for okay. the bull. But in two and one, ring it. Oh, it was already on the bull. I, yeah, I turned it to a bull earlier. Thank you, okay, Katrine, good, good. Uh, on the bell one more time. Thank you. Uh, there it is. So there's a big win right there. Money, Spin the money, money, money early. We'll get that off the screen. But there's Carvana. We just got that 11, 18 fill. Wow. As Carvana right now rejecting. Yeah, back down to the downside. We still like the long, though. We'll still sit here at 1060 and try to grab that. NVIDIA right now just dancing around and not doing much. We'll see if we can find ourselves involved here. Yeah, just a bit of a pop there in some of the chip names. Uh, I tried to get some 2790s on Intel, but Alphabet, Netflix, they both flushed at the right before the open. I'm on the offer to get the to, to short the pop there on Google. A lot of people oh, were shit, yelling at Netflix, breaking 350. I was like, that's too big of a move initially. I don't want to sell the bottom. Look at like 354, 355, uh -oh. if there is a bit of a pop. What and uh, wow, Tesla... Oh, Tesla, you don't want to short the, you don't want to pop even to think about a short. So Tesla actually trading down to 164 right away. This one's already flushing. Maybe understand. we'll look at this 165 area. I would have preferred to short 170s. I am thinking shorts in Tesla today. I just picked up Intel uh, at 88, so just in front of that 90 level. And CVNA, good bounce. Uh, good bounce on CVNA. I want it to carry through 11. Every time it gets there, it seems to fade. But here comes Tesla. Let's look at this 65 level. Bit of a stacked offer here. Could be an opportunity if it fails this level. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Uh, I, Where? What? No, I don't know. My stop again. I have to check, double check these stops because right now we're still in. We don't have a big position uh, here for NVIDIA, but it just blasted to the top side. Like, I was trying to get out at 192 and 192 broke, so I don't know uh, right there. But we're short right now, 192.50. It just went up to the upside, so I would have just gotten more short uh, up here if that was the case. But unfortunately, like I just said, we just got blown out there. Um, not what well, we're still fine, but I don't know. that we, we meant to get out, so we'll have to find out what's going on. I'm going to put my stop order in right now at 194. Hopefully that doesn't go, I but script. yeah, I don't know what happened there uh, on that order. So my bad on the NVIDIA trade. But we did take Meta long. I went over there and punched that thing uh, long, and now Meta's trying to go upside. That was that level that we said we'd want to take. So let's do that. Now we're at 149 and ripping on Meta. So yeah, sorry about that NVIDIA. My, my order didn't trigger properly there, but we now have a 70 cent win on Meta. We gave you that 148.50. I hope the guys behind us have that as well. Huge move upside there for Meta. Unfortunately, like I said, we should be out of NVIDIA. We didn't want this past 192.50. So we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out what's going on right there. There's an order right there to get out, but I don't know, I don't know what, what happened. Uh, we did get filled a little bit of it. We'll take a little bit more out because now Meta is absolutely skyballing right now. Is that a word? Uh, up to the upside here. Skyballing? I don't know. Skyballing, balling. I don't know. We're balling with it, that's for sure. Uh, Meta right now up a dollar. Uh, let's get another piece out. Good trade there. Yeah, a couple of things just coming right back. Comes so we, video. we just got right back above 12000 on the NASDAQ and then just wick hide it. Uh, I was able to buy the dip here very quickly in GM right off of this consolidation around the quarters. But it, like the market rejecting 12000 I might scalp some of this out if I can get 3850s. Alphabet, I said I'd wait on the offer.
buffer, looking for Alpha to get to, Alpha Bet to get back to that pre-market high. We're able to grab some short just in front of 97.50s. There was able to pick up 44s. For some reason, it's like a, every I always put like double numbers. Like I short 33s and 22s and 44s here, just picking that number in front of 50. And once I get some in front of 97, sure. even I want to see if we make some lower highs to be able to rinse and repeat. CVNA, I just got a bit of a dip. I'm gonna go to Brennan in a quick second. Enter, enter, enter. Just got a dip by again in front of 1060s. This keeps on failing that 1111 break. So every time it gets there, it rejects it. Means I want to pay myself out in front of that 11. I can hold a core position, but I want to make sure I'm taking some profits in front of that 1111. At some point, if it doesn't get through that, only one way to go. Brendo. Yesterday, it was BBAI leading as far as the AI stocks were concerned. Back to C3 AI on this note this morning. New product launch looks like coming through for uh, AI in New York, up big time, guys. Just took out the highs there, not the NASDAQ in New York for AI. All right. Um, just, just quickly there, like, I don't know. Like I said, man, it's been a wild ride here for NVIDIA today. Like, it came down there, and we got, like, we got out for some profit. We did hold 60%, and then it took 194. So we are out and flushing ourselves down the toilet there for NVIDIA there today. Um, look at XOM, it's a good thing we got out there at 112.50. This thing now dipping down to 110 uh, for Exxon Mobil. So this is continuing to slide here uh, pretty good. I, I mean, as far as some levels are concerned there, Treefan, you got to stop bringing like meals uh, in, in here it as now it's smelling good. like, again, like this guy's downing some chicken right in front of us here. It's eggs? How okay, do you well, afford that? Get ready for that. <laughs> How do you afford that? It's eggs. eggs. It's eggs. Like eggs are like crack prices. Well, what? Well, Egg, you know what I mean. Egg, eggs are four dollars and forty cents a dozen here. So uh, if you, if it's that's crazy, I'm just saying. I didn't, if that's crack prices, I, no, might, I, I know, might turn out to be a crack addict. Obviously, soon. I didn't really mean it that uh, way. By the way, Carvana just broke that 10, uh, 10 50 area. So I'm out of Carvana. Meta got to one fifty in a hurry. Like I, give me a break, really. So Meta 150, my biggest regret, 150 was a long I had. I didn't reverse it yesterday. I just shorted that 150 level on Meta, not even thinking we're gonna get, we would get there that fast. Super strong name. I'm not going to give it past 150. I'm going to have a hard stop at that price. Forget about it. I'm not going to fight it too far there. Uh, we grabbed some GM. I'll get to that in a second. But Alphabet was the other short that we picked up. Make sure I get it right there because I just typo the name. Uh, we're short we picked up. We just got some out of 97s, looking for the low of the day. But this market screams and takes out the highs. Got to be able to get out of Dodge and get out of the way of some of these moves. The chip names, however, Intel to the short side, that's starting to work. Got the lower high. I wasn't able to get, actually get 28s there, so I'm short 27.88 in front of 27.90 as that one works into the downside. Relative weakness in the chips, and the only long I got is General Motors, so come on GM. I was able to quickly scalp 20 pennies on it, but that's only the way it came in. At the open, rejecting a 39 break and flushing, I never want to get too aggressive thinking that I've got the perfect price there. If it dips again, that 38, I want a little bit tighter to that 38. That's why I just scalped some out. Hmm. I'm wondering here about um, Roblox because, uh, you know, it's pretty strong today, up 1.3%, much more than the market, and you're right at $36, which is a pretty key level right here. That drop down 3570, uh, you know, could, could be resisted a little bit. Why don't we take a 36 break if it does go back up there uh, here on Roblox? So I think that could be something that we look at, a 36 long break back up to the upside here on RBLX. Uh, that's something, but hey, it's fading out right now. As long as we're above 12,000, we do want to look for some longs. So for right now, we're back. I mean, we're not back. We're still in Carvana. We just bought some 45s. Uh, let's see if Carvana can hold. So that's the name right now uh, that I'm looking at. We still have Meta Long. We'll see if that wants to come back in. We've already taken a dollar on that. That was a good short there at 150. Um, NVIDIA, we've lost on that. Uh, let's just see what happens here on NVIDIA as the chip name just started bouncing around. I don't really see anything yet uh, to step in into if nvidia does come back down to 192 i think that's a good long but that's a that's a that's a ways away now amd 73 we, whoops whoops I just closed my time in sales we'll be able to find some more trades here i'm just going to get that time in sales back yeah just quickly someone just asked in the chat what's causing abish abishek asking uh, what's causing micron to drop so much the chips were all down because samsung didn't have a good quarter like it was actually very bad tsm's down uh micron's down four percent 
I, yes. Specifically, them down four, they're much more cyclical name I got to go with. And it's a major rejection of the 60 level. So from a technical standpoint, if it's more than this, maybe I'm missing something specifically with Micron. But it's a huge rejection of the 200 period just the other day. And... Well, yesterday, technically, and, and that 60 level as well. So maybe I should be looking at that instead of Intel. Intel's the one I'm in. I can't, I can't rewind time and short, the, and short a different name. Um, so I'm going to hang on to Intel, short the pops if I could even get them. Uh, going back to Meta, Meta just went a buck in the money here. But if you look at, like, rejecting 150, here's yesterday afternoon's top, 48.75. Usually this is where I anticipate resistance turns into support when it's breaking out. And if that's the case... I want to look to get out of this short around here. It just bounced off that level once. So in, out, very quickly. In 150, out in front of 149 half, out at 149 or just, just in front of it. I don't mind taking this one out. I kind of feel like Meta's pretty strong. I didn't expect to get a 150 fill until the afternoon. So we'll be happy we got in and out of that one quickly. Brendo. Early halter so far, CNTX just halting again to the upside on this note this morning. One of their partners uh, securing an FDA nod for breast cancer treatment. So uh, here it is, uh, CNTX halted up, now downside, 102% for that one. Uh, shout out to whoever was yelling about that one in the chat. Which one, MTX? CNTX. And I, what's pissing me, okay, well, what really grinds my gears is I was just in this too early. Like, yeah, I was like, Shree sat down, we we're looking at the stock, and I'm like, okay, I like the $1 level, but I was in it at like 7.40 in the morning, and I didn't want to hold it when it turned penny stock again, and I never went back to that same 105 breakout. Now it's halted, but to the downside. So I don't want to, it's probably done until it retests like 110 or $1 even. I'll wait around for that to happen. Uh, but going back into some names that we are in right now, uh, Alphabet still bouncing around that pre-market high, but it cannot get past 97s to the downside, can't get past 97.50, so it might just be a rinse and repeat trade for now, shorting off of the high, and then sort of getting some out at the, at the 97 level, trying to hold for lower, still liking the short the pop, because Here we go. when I look at it, like we're, we've broken a couple of times that 12,000 and rejecting it, so I see wick highs across the board, and then a rejection of that breakout, which does set up the shorts for the most part, uh, but all I have is Intel and Alphabet. GM's working. I just think they're a super strong name uh, today, at least for now, if it can hold that 38. I just got some out there. Let's go. GM was able to get some in front of 39. So we bought the dip right at that, that consolidation, double top, 38.40. Bought that dip. If it takes a fresh high, I'm now holding the $40. Okay, um, just quickly here, a couple things happening, obviously. Uh, NVIDIA came back in. We're going to watch out for that 192 level here on NVIDIA. Oh, man, yesterday was such a good stock. Uh, today, it's still fine. Like I said, we, we missed out on a stop order there. 192, though, uh, is coming in. So this is a level here that we want to look at. Um, we just went long right now, but I want to get long a little lower than this uh, if we can here on NVIDIA and give it to that, like, just a little bit below 191, you know, like a 191.80 break or something like that. Let me just set it up right here uh, in case that does come through a little bit quicker uh, than we thought. But there it is. We just loaded it back. Uh, not loaded it, but we just got it back in there um let's take it out if it gets we just we, it was just up a dollar oh uh, wow this name is crazy uh nvidia we just went long we are long right now nvidia 192.69 uh, right there as the market's trying to go back to the upside look at roblox hell yeah there's a nice little long for us on roblox we are long right now this is a new position 38.50 uh, sorry uh 35.84 uh right there so nice little win here for us on roblox let's start to take a piece out wow into the 30s man and did we call this one for you? Money, that one money, is a money spinner money, right money, there. Money, That's a big money, trade, man. Money, we money. back, baby, uh, right now as the market's starting to bounce up. Look at Carvana. Good long down there as well at 20. Let's take a piece out as we're trying to bounce around a little bit here on CVNA. So we're back into the money on this trade. We'll take a 43. Uh, While well, we're flat on it anyways. Back up to 48. There it is. Now we're in the money. 48, 49s, and 50s. We came one penny away from getting our 15s. Uh, is that unbelievable or what? Carvana, we got one penny away from getting our 15s, and I had to punch longer at 21 right there. So thanks, Carvana, for that one. Uh, we should have been uh, longer more shares now, but that's okay. We're out of, let's get one more piece out here on Roblox, and then we are now officially out of half of that Roblox trade as our net is back, baby. Uh, NVIDIA gave us a little bit of a run for our money. And by the way, we just took another dollar uh, right there on NVIDIA. So buy that bottom, take it out right there. Let's see if it continues to climb. 
climb up, but wow, that was a day saver there on Roblox and that Nvidia dip buy. You know what? I mean, the market's just open 12 minutes here and I already have 44 fills. What am I doing? That's intense. Well, it's not that crazy. I think I have 32. Uh, but we just got Google to the long side. It just reversed. I said we got to look at reversals here when you take key levels. So the short to 70, 97, it just broke the top. So I am reversed into this one of the long side. I don't want to chase too many things. So we're still in that opening range. We're back above 12,000. And that 150 on Meta is looming. I'm going to go to Tesla after we come back from Brennan. I mentioned that note on AI guys still screaming. Uh, day highs right now. This one just popping up as well. A couple of days back we had AI mentions on SOUN. So volume spike now for that one. So S-O-U-N there, that's another AI name. We didn't get 170s on Tesla, went to 169.40, but it's already rejecting that. The other way to play this is going to be one, or trade this, I should say. I always hate that term play. Uh, 165, where we broke out this morning. A bit of a dip there, and you can find some strength in Tesla. I'm already long one EV name. I don't mind being in two because I feel like GM's a little bit of a different, it's just a different beast. Um, we can be secure in that one, I hope, to the upside. Intel is the one short that... I'm probably going to reload this one every chance it gets up, but with the market breaking out, I feel like 2790 isn't good enough. I should be trying to get a little bit closer to that 28 level and just being conservative with it a little bit. Uh, Lucid, I'm still waiting. Where, where is it? Lucid's a NASDAQ stock. Neil, come on. Lucid, yeah, forget it. We're not going to get 10s on Lucid. We're nowhere close to that 12. I like 10 if it flushes down there. I've been sitting around there for a while, and I, I completely forgot to mention this on Alibaba. Alibaba has a monster level at 108. It's, try it's already bouncing away from that now. If we test 108, I do like some longs in Alibaba. It's been getting smoked the last couple of days. But the second I get into Google, it's almost like it's a jinx. I go for the long breakout on Alphabet. It can still hold 97, but there's room to 100 on this. I want to give it some room to work. Brendo. Uh, we're going to get this uh, Chicago PMI number out. D definitely not a huge uh, market mover, but could be. So just be aware here, guys. In three, two, one, 45.1 expected. 44.3 I'm hearing in my ear here, so it's not popping up here, but 44.3 versus 45.1. Oh. Okay, well, that just got us out of some longs it did move there some, on it NVIDIA. It did move some things. I feel like we might have got taken out there. Uh, we never... So, ah, damn it, like you never really want to be in too much on a number there. Uh, but there goes NVIDIA. It just did, uh, that sucks, man, because we had brought it all the way back uh, on NVIDIA now as well. So uh, that's starting to dip down a little bit here. So we'll have to be a little bit cautious uh, with what's going to happen here on that name. We just bought some more back in right here on NVIDIA. That dipped down. Again, you know, let's just use some of this. 191.30, it's now below. So we got to be careful with some of these longs. That number there, again, uh, 44 versus 45. So I don't know exactly what's up uh, but that's that's what's up so now it's a nice move uh, right there hopefully back up to the upside right now as Roblox going and there goes Nvidia F yeah nice long there on Nvidia man it's too bad we don't have the whole thing though uh, we did get stopped out on on some of that as it broke back down below 192 but let's go baby holy man man do I love this stock uh, right now Nvidia really working it out um, and then there goes Roblox as well let's take another piece here in the 40s if we can we'll wait at the 60s but yes sir money, I'm spinning the money money money, 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 money. Be damned, money, man. That's money, why we're money, here, money, is money. to make winning trades and to put some money in our pockets. And that's what we're doing right now on some of these positions. Good reload down there on NVIDIA. It's too bad uh, that it did break on that number. And the professor, as soon as Brendan goes, oh, there's here comes a the number, I was like... Um, the S word sort of out of the corner of my mouth because I was like, uh-oh, NVIDIA's coming down in here. Uh, but there it is. It, it did come in, and we just took a piece out. And now it's coming back one more time. So watch out for these tipsy-turvy markets here. Yeah, I'm killing myself. I'm kicking myself because the only short I have on was on Intel. So that rejection on the number is the only thing that went in the money. But it did give the opportunity after seeing the flip and higher lows on Alphabet to go 97s in front of that long. So we did have a piece in the break. It held 97. Thankfully, it held 97. And I was able to add down there. And now we're just going to look for the top to get taken out. Uh, GM, like this one, I want to be in it all day long. It's now above 39. This never really threatened us to the downside. And I could think we could see 10% on the stock today if it wants to continue. I'll look for a dip, maybe to 38.60 uh, to 38.75. If it fails 39 here, I want to be going more long on any kind of a dip. I didn't get CVNA. I mean, yet, you know what, I shouldn't, I probably, I'm, now I'm going to get, probably going to get this filled pretty quickly. I was about to say, I didn't get CV at 8 in front of 10. It's about to fill me. I'm sitting down here at like 12s or so and a couple of orders in front of 10 even. It's a matter of time before that test to 10 level. I do think that's incoming pretty quickly. And then I said we'd look for some Tesla at 165. 
165 60 and I'm sitting, I missed it by 25 pennies and it goes $2. That's how it goes sometimes in these markets. If I show you Spotify, it's actually, this is, is it Spotify. The Spotify is not the one that's worth, but I was sitting in front of 105. That dipped to 06 is it's backed up to 109. But I got to get some more shares out of Alphabet here just in case if we don't reclaim that top, I want to be able to buy inside of this dip over and over again because it feels like 97 and the dip buys are always better than the actual breakout trade. So if we get the high, which we just got there, I'm going to go back to buying the dip in Alphabet and I don't want to ignore you, uh, Amazon and Netflix. I know a lot of people were watching Netflix early. I didn't want to chase that short at 350. However, it's got a double top here at 356. Now it's off the highs. And if the market wants to go and this doesn't break out, well, your risk to reward shorting in front of 36, if it's less than a buck, I like it because the bottom's down at like 348. So I'm going to look for the Netflix short here. I said be patient with it. Let it come back to the upside. You know, price matters when you're, day, when you're trading. I mean, when you're day trading, it matters especially. Risk to reward. I'm not risking $5 on Netflix if I don't have to. All right, guys. Yeah, no, Netflix. Uh, Netflix is up or down. I missed that. It's now up. Flat. Okay. It, yeah. it actually flushed before the open. All right. So yeah, tricky trade uh, there. I, I agree with Neil. Sometimes when you get like a bias one way, you gotta be careful with it and uh, just be careful with your levels. I mean, it doesn't matter. You could go short or long on any name at any time as long as you have an out. I mean, that's that's we can't say any more uh, about that. I mean, look at what Carvana did. We just got out again at 33. So we're buying some of these dips. But watch out now. Now it's coming. Coming into 10. So oh, we already have that breaker breaker one nine. Uh, do you read? Because it's coming down into 10 bucks right now uh, for Carvana. So we're going to watch out for that as my eyes are watching it. We have we have a position in it, right? So I mean, this is the level that we wanted. It's right down here. We got a, we got a big position on not a big one, but a, a one one that uh, can work out if it goes. Look at my average price is now 30. So uh, we'll take another piece out if it gets back up to the upside reliefs. There we go. Take a 25. Here we go. Now, now I just was saying that. We had a little bit too many shares there. Uh, so we'll take some out at 25. Now we'll see if it can go back up to the upside here for Carvana. That was a great reload for us. And by the way, look at NVIDIA. Bang, right now. NVIDIA, $1.50 now in the money. So let's take another piece out right now if we can. We'll offer... You see what just happened there? We put offer, enter, the thing goes down 20 pennies. So I ain't doing that again. Uh, look at Carvana. Let's go Carvana. That name is really ripping up. Man, this is a fantastic day. We're smoking one more time here today. So thank you for watching um, as we are having a lot of fun here trading CVNA uh, one more time. Look at these dip buys, man. That's a 10.17. We get that 10.15 like we talked about. And now it's Rip City to the upside. And you want to talk about Rip City? We just mentioned NVIDIA ripping right now. We got, look. We got 70 cents on Roblox. If you don't like that, what, I mean, that's fine. Uh, we got $1.70 now on NVIDIA. Pretty happy with that trade. We got 80 cents right now in MetaLong. And we got a dime piece, and you know how much we like those around here, on Carvana as well. So there goes there goes uh, NVIDIA. There's $1.80 on that trade. So let's hit the sirens. Now we'll just sit back. 10K likes, and I do a shoey. Um, yeah, I mean, I can you do that. You said you don't mind that, shoeies, though. No, I don't mind that as well. Of and, of course, because I signed up for the chip because Neil did the chip, you would do a shoey as well. Yeah, but it's... At 10K. But it's not maple syrup like that person said the other... I'm not doing a shoey maple syrup. It's got a, It's beer. Beer. Yeah, beer. It, yeah, it, but the person... The last time somebody nah. said maple syrup, and I'm not doing a shoey maple no, syrup. No, no, Well, you, got, you guys get us 10K. Way. We'll do that right for you live here on the show because we are... People of the people. And we're men, we're men of the people. That's right. Well, we like to say that. Uh, so ring the register. If I you're like it. If you caught the Tesla that I missed at 165, you're at 170 right now. And you're kind of, look, it's actually failing this break uh, as we speak. So I'm not, I don't like the break. I said I prefer dips. If anything, a rejection here could give you a bit of a short opportunity. Um, I just got some Google out. GM is just absolutely churning. I was in Carvana, but CVNA, that just pulled back as well. So I'm going to go back to this because... Man, it's gonna, you're going to get that 10. So we got the dip by there. I stopped out of the original long a couple of times. Actually, only one time we got stopped out. But it could not get past 1040s. I think it's going to break that 10 even. It looks like that's going to be in play. General Motors is more of a, it might just be a trail here. We're now over a buck in the money. I'm now thinking about, like, where am I, I going to buy the dip again? Because if there isn't a dip to be bought, then I'm going to miss this entire move on the way to 40 and only have what we, what we got in originally, which I hate doing. I wanted to add to this position, and I'm going to make sure I find a place to do so. Uh, Intel, sometimes it's easy. This one is only flushing. 
So I feel like if I can get shorts here, it might just be that 2790 and forget about that 28 even that I've get been patiently waiting it. for. That could just be it. Lucid, I don't think there's much to be seen there. Google's in the money and looking okay. Uh, but it is Tesla and that 170 level. It's rejected it for now. Maybe a higher low can get put in here on Tesla. I know some other EV names are moving as well, but Tesla going from red to green, this is how you rip faces off with the short. You wick the bottom and then hold the breakout and then suddenly you're on the train to 180 if this market decides it wants to have a 2% type day. On the dip, I think that'll be 165 to 166. Somewhere in there it has to be able to withstand. And I hate you, Netflix. That's harsh, that's harsh. No, it is what it is, man. Like I, whatever. If somebody actually got the Netflix short I was just talking about, I should have just punched short and then talked about it because uh, it's now down at 352. I'm not chasing it. You know, I, this, we wanted it up here off uh, 56. I didn't get it. Now it's probably going to put in a higher low and then go bullish itself. So that was that two or three dollar pullback that you shoot for. Risk to reward two and a half to one. The longs are fine. It's just that I, there weren't many shorts that were setting up there, and that was one of them. But that's kind of gone now. Yeah, that's the worst. There, there's no worse than that. Like, you punch in or you get stopped, and then it's like yeah. it stops on a dime at your price, and then you get out, and then it just rips up, kind of like what happened on NVIDIA today uh, for me, literally right there. Mm -hmm. uh, we got stopped up, but we just punched right back in and just took that for a ride, boy. We don't have much left here on NVIDIA, so we're really happy. Uh, we literally have nothing left on it. So uh, good trade so far here for NVDA. So let's just continue uh, to watch out for it. We do want to buy some more Back. So just in case you guys are wondering, I'm not done this. 191.50 is my out. So uh, I will buy some if it comes back in. But as you know, if you've watched the show long enough, I'm going to sit here and wait for that price to come in. So that's that's the one thing right now. We've really changed up our sort of our strategy here, uh, at least how, how I like to look at these names, and uh, really trade off of levels rather than just trying to play the momentum. But there's Carvana again. Like, this is another thing. I know Neil and I are both basically looking at the same thing here, that 10 level. The thing is, I've been buying a little bit earlier there uh, in the teens, so now we're able to get out when it comes back to the upside. So again, just another little play here uh, for this name. Let's just see if it can continues to work out here that's going to be Carvana I'm buying dips over and over again now you know should be good to go even if it takes 10 I'd still sort of be happy with it but now you know I'm done taking profit I think on Carvana let's just see if it can get back up here the 50 periods there like like I said we draw these lines for some kind of a reason sometimes I wonder why but uh, 1060 1070 1080 is where all of our uh, moving averages are so I'm gonna wait to see if we can get back up there let's see if the buyers really want to buy this thing uh, and if they do then we'll have a hell of a day uh, on this name Roblox coming back up as well and before I give it back over to Neil uh, I was waiting at 65 why I don't know, actually. Uh, 37 might be the top there. So I did want to get another piece out a little bit higher. We've, we've got them all out in the 30s and 40s. So that's a little, you know, little bit of a miss. I, I'm, I'm happy taking 40 cents on Roblox. We had double the shares, so it was fine. But again, I, I like this name, especially if we break higher. We know how aggressive Roblox can get. So, so far, so good. XOM back to 113. I know I'd say I'd throw it back to Neil, so let me give me one more second here. That 110 bottom, I think, Ugh. wasn't that something that you and I were talking Remember about Remember I said there was one that was worse on the dip right. buy that I missed? Oh, that was that I one? Missed XO, I missed uh, XOM in front of 110 by about five or 10. There you go again. But that's, you guys will see that all the time. Yeah. Like Sometimes you get that dip buy, like yesterday, we got like a great dip buy on Carvana. There's nothing you can do. It's a, you just you have your order out there. You get filled. You don't get filled. I just I can't. You can't make it up. Like it's a real order. You don't get filled. That's how it works in the markets. Um, LAC here. By the way, G GM, which is great and running to the upside, made a major investment in Lithium Americas. This is now trying to get back above the 50 period. I forget about trying. It's back above the 50 period. It's making a second push to the upside. I was looking for it to reclaim that. That's 24 an even number, but really the 50 period is just a little bit beneath that. So on any kind of a pullback, if it holds this level here, about 2390, where it was just barcoding for some reason pre-market, then I think there can be a nice dip and then a rip to 25. So I have LAC now on my radar. I'm just going to dedicate a stock window to it over here so I don't miss out on that one. Uh, where's my reload on Intel? Intel does not want to go up. This is ridiculous. Uh, I want the, sh the market's going up, and I'm like, I'm going to get more shares of Intel. No, it doesn't want me to. So we're short Google. We had to stop out there when it took out the high. We're now buying the dips off 97. It is yet to make a breakout of said high of the day. 
So as much as I would like the reversals long above 12,000, where's our high of the day? It hasn't happened yet. Got to be able to respect that it hasn't happened. So we're going to continue to rinse and repeat, buy the 74s, get some out 30s, 40s, and 50s, and anticipate that high of the day break on Google. We are right back to the bottom on Carvana. So I'm going to buy the dip in front of 10 again, and I'm going to try and scalp it in front of 30s and 40s, and then try and hold it to VWAP here. But this is very different from yesterday's trade in Carvana, where it was a holding, hot, holding dips and then going higher until about noon when it finally reversed. So this one, can, this one breaks 10. It's a hard stop at 10 even, as far as I'm concerned. The market's starting to pull back here. Give me a break. I gotta go back over to Netflix. Like I, yeah. I need something else short that isn't Intel. I feel like I say that every single day. Ah, I was gonna say, will Nvidia hold right there? So we're still fine. You know, that, that was that last reload there at 80, and then there's the out at, well, we tried to get a break of 50. We wind up getting, it looks like 35. So yeah, the market has fallen down and uh, that's that, man. There it goes, NVIDIA, see you later. Uh, it's a good thing we made some money back and it's also a good thing we talked about well, getting out up there when it ripped up. And it's also a good thing that I told you we were really light on that name, but we still drop it down. Let's flush it down the toilet. We'll also flush down Carvana as well as that just took 10. Um, all right, let's 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 slow down on this one. Although it's at, doing a lot of volume right now at 10 bucks that was the drop spot i just wonder if that's a drop for a lot of traders i'm gonna go right back in now um and then just give it back down to like you know nine not a big hit here like 980s something like that just to see if that was the ob not just to see i know that was the obvious flush spot for a lot of traders right there so let's see if it goes back upside we'll take a little bit out here um around 10 or so let's go to brendan we do have a number coming out right now at 10 o'clock but we just bought back in to Carvana, waiting for 10-10, Mr. Wickens. Hey guys, yeah, we'll get the conference board, consumer confidence uh, index coming out here. You can see indicated in red. So this one can move the market, has in fact moved the market over the past uh, couple of readings. So just uh, prepare yourself, 109 expected here uh, for the consumer confidence number as we get to two and one. Uh, comes at 107.1, so below estimates there, 107.1 uh, versus 109 on that uh, consumer confidence number. Here's a look at the board overall as we uh, head to 10 o'clock this morning, back to green, a uh, quarter of a percent for the S&P, the Dow exactly flat, just going back into negative territory. Uh, the Russell's been strong, specifically the 2000 all morning, 0.7 to the upside, NASDAQ composite and the 100, 0.4-ish or thereabouts for both at this point, if you're with us Early on this morning, got you all set for GM, Tesla once again, and Spotify. Uh, Elon saying after the close yesterday that they're going to increase their costs going over the next couple of years. Uh, great report from Spotify still. Uh, moved down there with the overall market guys on that number, but still was hovering around day highs. So this is, this might not, we don't, I never know if this will age well. But, uh, Probably not. No, it might not. But I'm going to no get out of, of GM here. And I know, look, it's, I said I was going to look for a place to dip by. Let me try to run through this. I thought 40 was going to be the first resistance. 42 would be the next big level. The market is rejecting 12,000 right now. So another wick high above yeah, 12,000 is bearish. It got to 39.75 or 73 here. Close enough to 40. Lower high. If I was flat and I thought the market could put a reversal and I thought 40 was resistance, I would sh get to pop wick. I'd probably short that. So if I'm in it, and I liked, you know, I, I was looking for a take profit around 40. I figure I'll just get out of it here. If there's another long to be had, maybe it's back down around 38, 80. I hope that made some quick sense there. And you know, this might go to like 10% again. It's just, I feel like getting out of Dodge here because if we reject 12,000 on the NASDAQ again and go red and the ES, I'm looking over here. I mean, it doesn't really matter the level on the ES. If both go red, we could see some pretty interesting lows and anything that's super strong might reverse it. And as I say that, I look at the other long that I'm in here, uh, Alphabet cannot get through the high. I might give it one more chance to dip off that 97 and see if I can rinse and repeat it. But you know, this is looking relatively weak. I'm looking to short some pops here. Um, I, I don't know if Lucid's at $12. Uh, Rivian and Lucid were two I was looking for. I don't see it uh, on Rivian, just looking qu uh, over at some names that I want to go short on. Lucid's nowhere near $12. So, you know, I need something to set up for me. I don't want to be just sitting around shorting random prices here, and that's what it's all about. Like, if Tesla's not at 170 so it's really not at a key level I can sink my teeth into. I wish I could get a pop in Intel. I can't. 
um, but there might be an opportunity with Micron at least. That's back to 5% to the downside. It rejected 60 on that last bounce. Let me just go to the 15 minutes so you guys can see the bigger picture here. Big time breakdown, gap down of Micron, and anything beneath this 60 level to me just screams short, but also breaking this little consolidation here, like that's 59 into 58. I almost like the 59 short just as well, and then if it gets to 60, that's a secondary trade. So, you know, if we end up rejecting this 12,000 right here, right now, then shorting the 59 level does make some sense. It has to set up, or I'm not taking it. Uh, so I'm going to grab some in Micron here. At least if I'm shorting the bottom on Micron, I know if it gives up like 59 quarter or something like that, I can have a tight stop short into that next level down. And if it does a huge pop, I'm out at like 59 quarter, and I'm looking to re-engage at 60 even. All right, yeah, good talk there. I have the same basic strategy here for AMD, and that's us. Uh, we, just, we just did really well on it, man. It came back into 72.50. We bought some 70s. We bought some 60s, uh, and then we just got them out. It went right back to VWAP, went right to 73. Our best outs were north of 73. We actually got to 73.01 as I was hitting buttons kind of like crazy there uh, when it did go back up to the upside. So, uh, yeah, the only thing, we, you know, in that move down, we did get out of NVIDIA, so that would be one thing. And then look what happened to Carvana. Actually, you know, when you guys were gone, Carvana spiked back up. So you're going to be able to see me getting out uh, here. Sevens, eights, tens, uh, back up to the upside. And, of course, we did hold some before it broke back down below again. But here's Carvana. And, again, this is why... And this is why it's tough, right? Like, I, I understand that when you follow our trades and things like that, it can be tough to replicate. But, like, you know, Carvana came in, and we were buying here and getting out. And then eventually, we'll still be red on Carvana because it did obviously break our bottom. And we were waiting here at 10 to get long. But then we got back in and just made a little bit of money back. Like, we bought that 996 there or whatever. And then we started getting out at 10s, 9s, so on and so forth. Okay, here's a reload on uh, AMD. It just came in. 72.50 breaks. We're gone. So now we have a better position on this one we just averaged it in we'll take a dime if it gets up into the 70s again and then a little bit more into the 80s but right now we're on a reload right here for amd uh off of some of these pre-market tops so 7240 7250 here the market as as neil was mentioning we just broke down below 12,000 right there so although it's only 1005 i'm pretty like wow about this market already here today uh so back and forth some key levels there goes amd let's go baby a nice i'm gonna take take some more out here uh, if we can a nice reload for me there on amd let's see how far this one wants to go but in a weak market when we're breaking levels lower never a great sign not to take some profit out when and if it goes in your favor so there's a, there's a reload at 57 and there's an out at 71 so uh yeah hopefully this can get back up to the upside but right now we're long amd against that bottom 40 level yeah, and I'm just, this is going to be hard to see. I can't do anything. I just got a huge wick on the, my alphabet chart here. So um, it bounced off 97 again, and it's back at that 97.50 level. I'll clean that up in a second when I get a chance, but I want to get some shares out in front of that 97 uh, half level there on alphabet. Where is my fill? Give me, I'm just going to go to 49. Why am I sitting actually at 50? Just take 49s and get the fill there. Just taking some profit as we're getting a bit of a bounce here, just in case we break out. I mean, I want to, if we break out, I'm going to hold on to this long. It's the only one that we have left. I actually think Meta is giving you a dip by opportunity. I don't know if you're still in that one. Uh, here's Meta. We probably should have held on to that short at 150. I can't, go, can't rewind, rewind that clock. It broke out here at 148. It just dipped off 148. So a nice bounce, wick bottom at the previous breakout price. That is a setup for a scalp long. This is like the rubber band trade. Like it snaps to the downside, bounces off like a higher low. You're looking for support at the breakout price. Out is just beneath that wick here at 47.80. So risking about 30 to 40 pennies. Halfway is right here at 148.60, and then VWAP 149 gives you another out. So Scalp City, I think, uh, for a name like this on Meta, just want to make sure I get my stop order in there. Probably a good idea that we got out of GM. And the good thing about getting out of it is, well, if I still like it, I'm going to get a better price if I get a chance for a dip. So, you know, we got out at 39.70, or sorry, 39.45 there after it failed at 70. Now I'm looking for the dip buy. I think we have a chance here at that previous, it's not really the breakout high. You have the pre-market high there at 38.70. Another few shekels to the downside. I might go for that long uh, re-entry point on GM.
I like that shekel talk. But meanwhile, I money, yeah, I love money, the shekels. Money, we'll put some money, shekels in our money, pocket money, and buy money, some, money, I mean, money. a lot. Uh, there it goes to the upside right now. AMD, holy crap. This is moving a little bit more than we thought it would. So huge move upside, actually, for AMD. Right back over 73. I mean, it's not, you know, depending on, again, you know, what, what your tolerance is for risk here, uh, how big a move is. But for me, this is a pretty good one, especially whenever you're seeing me, like, reloading stuff and things like that, uh, you know that there's going to be some damage being done. Uh, so let's see if it goes back up again uh, to this upside right now. I like it, and we've talked about that, so let's see uh, if the market likes this position. So nice move up. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll sit here and try to keep getting it out on AMD to the upside. Good call out there on Meta. I did not reload it. We have a small position. So, you know, again, when we take breakouts, especially off the open, that's not going to be a big position for myself because, again, you know, it's I don't know where we're going to go, especially in the first three or four minutes. So we took advantage of this to the upside. I'm just more we're now focused on this AMD trade. Let's take another piece out here at 98. We're long at 57. I mean, we're now 40 cents in the money on serious shares here. So let's keep on bringing this to the upside now and see if we can't uh, just keep creating winners uh, on AMD. Roblox as well. That came back down and resisted the drop through 36. So I like it, especially if this market can hold 12,000 again. I really like Roblox for possibly taking out more highs uh, here today. So that's something that we'll look at. It's Roblox. It's going to be try to be a high here uh, on them and see if we can get going. Ford... Uh, what did that Ford do? Let's check out Ford because we were talking about it's that. Gotta be up. It's probably up. Yeah, we were talking about that 1350 level though, right? Um, so let's have a quick look to see uh, if that held today. Yeah, it did, man. 1356. We talked about Ooh. a little nervous action there, upside at 1350. Should have looked at that because we actually called that top uh, there as well. So yeah, another missed opportunity as we said. Would Ford take out that 1350 today? Comes right back into the daily chart. Looks like we were right about that level. Let's maybe pick up some bottoms right here at 1325. So the interesting thing about, like, this is, like, decision point eight or nine. It's probably, like, three or four. But how many times are we waking this top? This is ridiculous. Like, 12,000 over and over again. This is the fear because each time you fail this level, it just traps more and more longs. I know because I just got into meta and out of meta. And if you sit in, like, GM, I'm still in it because it actually held support. But as you keep wicking that top... Like, I get into meta on the dip, I think I think I got it, let's see if it can't get to 149, and really, it's just continuously rejecting. So if we're still testing the same resistance level on the market, and this is only going to the downside, well, maybe, Mel to, uh, maybe meta is not as strong as I think it is. I don't know if I'm going to dip back into this one. I just picked up Micron, that managed, managed to hold. I don't mind GM and Alphabet, because unlike meta, like, Alphabet's, I can't get, this wick just keeps coming back. Alphabet will not break this 97. So it's found support, at least this way, if the market takes out a high, this is something it never broke lower. And if it takes out the top, I can almost add to it knowing it's relatively strong. So this is the one I should be more aggressive trying to buy the dips on in Alphabet. In front of 97, it's going to oh, be hard to see. Long yeah, right. it's going to be hard to see on this, on this chart because of this wick here. But it's a nice little tight range, 97 to 97.50. Feels a little bit safer uh, to engage with. If you're looking at Netflix, that's one of the weaker names in the market today. Um, it's so, it never got back and held beneath 350, so there might be a short beneath 350 just yet. You know, if we actually end up holding beneath 12,000, I think we have a chance. Why am I long in Micron? I'm just gonna get, I, didn't, I don't want to go long. I wanted to get out if it broke 59.25, not reverse into the long side, probably because I got some profit beneath 58 there. Uh, but Netflix, if it gets beneath 350, I think we have a chance this could flush all day long. I want to take multiple shots at Micron. I shorted it in front of VWAP there. Why well, I did get some out. That's why I reversed into a long because I hadn't adjusted my stop. So I'm now out of Micron. I don't mind taking a few shots at this because it's relatively weak. I don't think it'll be as good as Intel because I, am, I wasn't able to get 60 even. If it, if it pops to 60, I know I want to load up on Micron at that price. But I'm not holding 59s to 60 or averaging all the way up. I'll take a second shot. Brendo? A PBLA keeps popping up here, guys. Uh, there's a note from Roth uh, analysts. Uh, launching with a buy, so initiating with a buy with a $10 price target on PBLA. I uh, just want to mention this one as well quickly. Big Bear, big move yesterday on the AI uh, front. Starting to hold some levels here, that uh, high that ended up being broken yesterday late in the day. Uh, trying to be support right now, 350, 360 for BBAI. Uh, there was a secondary this morning for that one.
Yeah, I was just saying, what's up, Playboy? Uh, right there. But look what's happening. I mean, what a ripper right now uh, for AMD. Wow. We just bought more down below. So as I was saying before, I, I know it's tough to follow us. And, um, you know, it's just like... There it is, man. We just broke from Brendan. I, I bought more. We talked about buying these dips in this name. And, like, we just so... All right. Bear with me here. Like, you know, this is... Again, you know, like, that's 67 up to 16. Like, that's 55, 60 cents there. Now it's more uh, in just two, three minutes, right? And so, like, if you're trading, there, there's no more important of a lesson than to trade the right names. There's, there, there, there's nothing more important, honestly, in day trading than to get over to active names. Just trade the right names. And I mean, look at that. Look at this move. Right back up to the high of the day. So this name is really rally central right now. Trade the right names. And Neil gave this one. I should have got long meta down here. I did. I called it up and was like, yeah, yeah, meta, meta. I was too, too like, enthralled with AMD. That came right down to the 200 period as well. Should have bought some meta. That's a little silly for me there. What's up, Brent? Uh, HYPR just popped up and halted a twenty stock here. Not a lot of volume yet, but this is being circulated. Uh, patent for deep learning techniques generating something to the effect of AI. So HYPR, 40%. Deep learning techniques, yada, 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 AI stock pops. That's it. That's, that's the key, man. Get used to it because it's probably, it's going to last a while. I don't think it's, it's not going to be over in a week. <laughs> Definitely not over in a week. Uh, Google Alphabet is through the high of the day. I want to see it not just clear this level, but it needs to clear here, like 97.75. Just going back in yesterday's trade, I finally got rid of that, rid of that stupid wick. Hopefully it doesn't come back. But 97.75 is the current high. Above there, I think it's off to the races, needless to say. Uh, we were just getting back into GM, General Motors, reported this morning if you were not paying attention. Um, but it just, so I tried to add to it because it reclaimed, like wick bottomed. We claim 39. I'm like, oh, we'll get more at 39. No, we didn't. So I'll have to get some out halfway up to that high of the day. Remember I said, like, there's always ring the register. Because when the market was rejecting that top, it's like, well, you're going to get another shot to get back into this if it trends higher. I'm not going to draw a trend line for you, but you can kind of see one forming here on General Motors. If we get 40 at this point, well, then at least we were successfully able to get back uh, into the trend. Whether or not we even get this dip again at VWAP here. I'm going to be sitting ready for it. I want to continuously join that trend, buying to the upside. Intel is the only thing that's safe to the short side. But let's not forget about Netflix. If the market wants to pump again, then we might get another chance at Netflix, or maybe not. Really, Netflix is nowhere close to 356. And why is this chart not loading? Oh, I, you know what? I'm just going to do this. We're just going to go right over here. Uh, to my trade ideas chart, because if that doesn't want to give it to me. Uh, 351, so if the market does pump, I am looking for that 56 short again. It's never as good the third time through, at least in my opinion. One, two is three times the charm. Maybe not, but there might be a scalp trade off of that level that we missed earlier. So we need a lot of strength in the market because Netflix is looking relatively weak. But that's part of the reason why I want to short any pop I can on Netflix. Not sure what's going on with that particular chart there. So good one on GM. Alphabet still can't seem to get through that 97.75. So we'll look for the dip buy maybe a little more aggressively. Instead of 97 even, I might go 97 like 25 or so, right in front of those quarters. This one never really threatened that lower high at, 90, at 97. Is that what just came back? I just got rid of this thing, and now it's back. Yeah, nothing you can do. I these, can't do anything. Are unbelievable. <laughs> um, okay, so we're 65 cents of the money on AMD. We talked about that. I'm going to buy some more Meta. So this is another name. I know Neil's talking about Google a little bit here. I'll talk a little bit about Meta. I want to buy this name, so that's why I'm talking about it. Uh, down here, like... Look, I have right now I have a bid at 75. Like if it comes down, fills that, that's great. And then I also don't mind another bid down here into the 50s as well. But uh, let's wait to see if we do get that fill. A little bit of a flush. We might get meta right now uh, on a buy. And then I just want to watch out for that bottom wick right there. In case this mark, here we go. Come on, meta. Just give it, give it, give it, give it, give it. Like so right now, see if I miss this fill right now, I'm going to be mad, right? So it's just one of those things where for some random reason, not random, I'm at 75 for a reason, but it just went down to what 78 79 there i'm actually at 76 uh so hopefully this will come back in and fill us up there but that's a that's a long that i 
one. So now, see, that should be 20 cents in the money. And if I had it right now, I probably would be taking some out, but we don't. So hopefully it comes back in. The same thing here happening on AMD. Uh, it's, it's upside. I don't even want to get out. Like, my out's going to be up here at the high of the day, hopefully, uh, if it can get up there. That's where I'm going to put an order right now that I see that. Uh, I'm going to put one at 45. Hopefully, we can grab that. That would be right here at that high of the day. We'll take a piece out, and we'll hope to get some meta. An update on Roblox. We just took another piece out on Roblox here at 30. So uh, it just it wasn't going. It dipped down to 36 again. We took another piece out on Roblox. Now we'll hold the last. We only have 10% left for that high of the day. Come on, Meta. Meta's close to filling right now again. I might just buy these 85s and 86s uh, just to get long on Meta because I don't know how long I want to wait for this. But right now, Meta coming back in again. Maybe we'll buy a little piece here uh, in case it bounces off one more time. But we're there at 76. Hopefully, a little bit of a flush gives us that fill. Exactly. And uh, speaking of flushes, continuing to flush, like Intel's actually down 1% oh, into an up market. However, I'm just going to show you since their uh, fantastic earnings, no, they were bad, 2750, one day, two days, now three days in a row, you've got to bounce off 2750. So much like GM, I'm going to get out. If we revisit that low of the day, I'm getting out in front of it. If it breaks the bottom, there's always a chance to get uh, more share short on that flat bottom break or we can just short a pop. So I want to be th sitting trend on Intel beneath 28, and that does mean you got to have some targets out, just like we did with General Motors. i got to respect it. And guess what's coming up here? Uh, remember we said get out of Micron and then wait for 60. So Micron, get out, try shorting in the bottom end of the range. Now it's pushing back into the 60 level. This was a huge gap down. I know all the chips were weak after Samsung's earnings, uh, disappointment overseas, but... Overnight, I should say, but, well, and overseas. But 60 is a big level, both on the gap down, but also psychologically. So looking for that pushback into 60 to be able to short it. The longs we have, I think, have been holding up pretty well. I don't have a trade yet in Tesla because I've been trying not to force it. It's so easy to get to chase a lot of these moves and get sort of whipped around here. Well, I like 165. It never really quite came down to there. 170 was not respected at all. However, on the way back down... 170 did put in a lower high. So I want to see how it responds to this level. If we're breaking out, this could be an opportunity to get into the long before it hits the high of the day if it holds some strength up there. As we're going to Brennan for the small cap recap. And as always, guys, make sure to take a second, smash the like, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Busy morning in small cap land. Let's jump right into things. Uh, MSGM, 650,000 share float. Uh, anytime I see that, it's only a long. So uh, there was a really nice level that was formed early on this morning uh, at the, I guess it was 720, but down to 7 and then 675 uh, ends up being the bottom. So was only looking long on this all morning long. Uh, end up giving you, it gives you an opportunity to improve your price a little bit there. I took some off just to uh, improve my average overall. Put that right back on though as uh, bids were starting to step up a little bit and then it just exploded all the way up to 950. So great opportunity there from seven up to 950 now on MSGM at day highs. Uh, Carvana, I, I just took the breakdown there of that, uh, or the retest, I guess, of the breakdown at the open. So big right candle. Uh, below 11, gives you the retest at 11, tight risk. Uh, now at uh, nine and a half at the bottom there for CVNA. And then I was watching this one as well. HILS just tested the high and failed. Uh, $2, if you go out to the daily chart, $2 is a better level, uh, but we'll see what happened here. It's kind of running uh, out of volume as well for Hills, but another opportunity maybe for that one, guys. All right, we have a new, uh, I'll talk, I got a nice little Raptors poster here. We'll talk about this in a minute. As Rob was cleaning up uh, the room and where I used to sit before the show started when I was dealing with traders from all over the world, teaching them basically everything uh, that I'm trying to teach you guys right now as well, that was at my desk. Uh, so thanks, Rob, for that. Uh, as it goes back to 2019 when the Raptors one with Sir Kawhi Leonard. Um, okay, so Apple, um, it's too bad because again, we just missed the dime on that uh, as we're long Apple against this bottom of 75. Let's just see what happens uh, right now. AMD is an absolute monster to the upside. So I wish Apple would sort of follow suit here uh, like AMD, but here it goes right back up. Let's go. Let's see if it gets going. We're at 98 right there. We'll take a piece out. Yes, sir. Let's go Apple. Nice little move backside here for AAPL and we'll take a little bit out. 
out. So that was a good take for us there at 90. Let's see if it can hold back to the upside. Um, AMD, there it is, man. Money, I'm spinning the money, money, money on this money, one because money, honestly, money, money, this money, is exactly money. what's coming through right now. Uh, AMD right back to that upside. We've been buying these 7260 dips. That's a good trade in there for App AMD, sorry. Let's see if Apple can follow suit now uh, back to the upside. But there's a good trade for me. Uh, AMD, a great one long, man. And let's go Apple. Not Eli Apple, Neil. This is the Apple as it's starting to go back up to the upside right now. 143.15. Let's go Apple uh, and get some out if it gets back up there. But a good trade right here for us on AAPL. I just, as that pop came into the market, well, into the chip names Holy in crap. particular, I just started getting into micro on that 60 level. I'm here for all the smoke that Eli Apple gets. At the end of the day, if you're willing to tr talk all the trash that he does, you know what's going to happen when, uh, when you lose. You're going to get that smack top right back at you. But someone just said, Momo in the chat was asking about Pfizer. Pfizer just turned green. So down on earnings. But look at this. On the 15th, it's all green to the upside. There isn't a red candle in sight outside of the dump on earnings. So this has been only bought back up. It is right back above resistance uh, at 43. I mean, this is already under pressure. This could have just found itself a bottom on the daily chart. I would not fight this. Normally you'd say, okay, weak stock, like a Netflix, similar setup, I'm looking to short at 56. Nah, not here. I think working, looking for a long, maybe even off that 53 level makes some sense. Uh, but the new thing I just got into, a reload, not a reload, uh, because it's not the same price. It was waiting for the tops. Don't just average in, just wait for it to get up here, that 59, uh, 80 area. 60 even is going to be my like, line in the sand for Micron. If it cannot get through that level, then fantastic on the shorts. And I've been patiently waiting for Intel to come back to the upside. Looks like it's going to give me that short opportunity once again. So I'm going to reload some of these up at those tops. And yes, I see you, Adam. I missed XOM 110. I get it. That's me. I can cancel that bid. Forget about it. We're, we missed it by like 10 cents or so. But it's right back at that key 115 area on the daily chart, which was an absolute wall previously. But you know what? That wall broke. And I don't look at that old level anymore at 115. I really think actually 116 and 117 might be a little bit more significant. Let it punch through 15s before thinking about that short. But I just got the short that I'm looking for here, and it's Micron. All right, yeah, we just um, we got taken out of Apple there. It's funny because literally down nothing. Like it's I'm ex pretty much exactly flat other than fees because we took the profit and then we got dumped out there. So it's a good thing that we got that fill and it ripped back up and we did put on our scalper hat like we always do, of course, um, and able to take something out there. We took out exactly half and then it dropped down and we got out pretty much perfectly there uh, for the out. But you know what? If if the market, so I just went short Apple. Again, the market's up today, and I know we went to bulls, so congratulations to anybody that took that, uh, that, that voted for that, because it looks like you're going to win for now uh, in the market, but let's not be too foolish here. This market can go up and down, and we want to make sure that we focus on the right name. So, like I was saying, if Apple's going to be weak here, we've already tested the long. Let's just give it back to 143 again. Like, you know, it, I couldn't get it going too much past. If I zoom in here, uh, I can actually find out what my best out was. Actually, we got 143.12s, so there is some upside to this play, um, so let's not count it out. Uh, we don't, you know, I, I'm going to average back in around this 143, so if it comes back out, because I wanted to watch out for that 143.15, something like that as a high spot there for Apple, so uh, we're short it now, and it's a good thing we got out of AMD, not a good thing, but we got out there at 48s or so, 45s, uh, now that's pulled back about a dime. Uh, our Roblox is... Still cruising to the high side. And yeah, man, we got meta right there uh, on a dip. So we got a 90 fill. Let's see if it can come back to 45 or something like that, 40s uh, there on meta. And then we'll, uh, we'll watch to see where we go. But right now, 148, 43 here on meta. I like that trade. Meta, meta, meta. And uh, oh, you know out. what? Speaking of meta, we get a certain Snapchat, I think, after market for earnings. So that should be, yes, that'll be interesting yes. for meta. Like I said, I, the short I just got into is going to be Micron. But I still, like, why can't Google seem to punch through, Alphabet seem to punch through that high? Um, it's, it's, a, that resistance at 27.75 is as relentless as the wick on my chart here. <laughs> I'm not getting 97s anymore. So the good thing is I can't get the dip buys off that 97 level, so meaning it's holding in the money, but it's still not breaking the top. And that's a symptom of the market that we're sitting in here. So I'm trying to be more aggressive on the rinse and repeat and grab that long off that level. Uh, still not really seeing anything... Yeah, Netflix is nowhere close to 356, unfortunately. And, oh, I forgot, we forgot all about Lucid. At least I forgot all about Lucid. 
that's still a NASDAQ stock. I always type New York for, uh, for Lucid, and I have no idea why I do that. It's just for some reason, uh, it's in my head. $12 is the level I'm looking to short on Lucid, and pretty much the only level I like to the south side, unless it goes to 14 so 12 and 14 stand there. I'm waiting for it to break out the high and then go over to it. CVNA, I've been looking for a spot to jump back into the trade or jump into the trade. Like every single long we had buy the dip, stop, buy the dip, work, stop out there. So tight stops all the way, but it's really only been trending to the downside. If there's a long left, it's probably $9. You can see there yesterday, nine was kind of where we, we liked it in yesterday's trade. And if there's a shorting opportunity, I don't want to go 10 short. I'd probably think about that 1050, uh, those pre-market lows there. But I don't want to rush into that. Kind of feel like you might be in the middle here. Let's look for a dip into 10, a 9 even or pop to 1050 to be able to short it. But I kind of feel like I'm going to be battling Micron here a little bit. So I want to be patient. We're at 1030. This is that time of day where if we set up for a big rejection, you know, I could see all the way down into VWAP here, even the lows of the day. So I want to make sure, A, that I have a good price going into 60, but that I'm paying myself out. Well, I think we might just go sideways for a bit here. We'll see about that after a while. But it feels like we're going to go sideways uh, for a little bit before potentially breaking either all the way to the lows or monster breakout, where I know I want Google breaking that top. Yeah, we just took 30 cents there on a meta. I, I didn't wait. I got out at 20 there. It just kept bouncing. Oh, I got to make sure I don't have another offer. No, okay, I have another bid. Uh, I don't have another offer. So we'll, we'll, we'll let this one go to the high side. And then just as an update, man, so Apple was going. We were waiting at 65. Again, you know, try and take that 10 cents. Uh, it went to 66, but it doesn't matter. We would have only got out at 10% anyways. Let's wait to see what Apple does as it's back up here. We do want to average into this around right here. 95s is what I'm sitting at right now. Let's go over to Brendan. Uh, it's Kathy Wood kind of day so far, guys. Uh, UiPath just popping up uh, heavy call volume apparently coming through. So huge uh, spike there through day highs for Path. Mm, I'd, UiPath, I'd be careful huh? with those names because like, like Upstart was super, super strong early and that just, I mean, that gave up the ghost pretty quickly. That could be, this could be something to look for a short in the 19 if the market decides it really wants to rip. Like double top, try to break 22 days in a row, reject each time, then you, you close it around 19, you reject 19, yeah, you short that pop if it gets there. I don't know if we have free locates on this now that I look at it. Brennan brought this one to us and we have to pay for locates, that kind of sucks. Um, I wanna go back oh, no. over XOM because it's now broken through that 15. I said, if I look for a short on XOM, it's not gonna be at 15, it's gonna have to be a little bit higher. That 16 level from a couple of days ago, missing some data from yesterday. But I like the 16 Ooh, the better on XOM. I did not like that blasting. 15 level at all. And now the market's blasting, here comes uh. Micron. Got to zoom back over. Micron testing that 60. It did break 60 earlier and get to 60.20. So the actual high is 60.20. I should have clarified that one earlier. But the market now absolutely blasting. Where's NVIDIA at? Yeah, they're all blasting upside now. Meta's okay. 50 cents in the money. So unfortunately, oh man, we had to get something out there on Apple. I don't know, like I was shorting Apple and we were very, very close uh, for it to break lower there and it just, it did it and now it's ripped up. Look at the market starting to go upside as well. So the only short we have on board is Apple, but uh, it is uh, continuing to go. I was gonna give it to this high right there of 40 uh, where we've already been at today. Obviously we busted out here off the open up to 143.75, but Apple's gone right now. I don't wanna hold it that far up uh, against me. So we will get some out or not all of it out, maybe even at a 40 break. So Apple right now, yeah, Rip City here uh, to the upside against me. It's too bad because we were initially long and now we'll throw some money away short, which sucks. Uh, but right now, Apple, yeah, is trying to break higher here. Uh, we'll put on a little bit more, but again, that 143.40 is my out for Apple. So I'm just gonna put that in now. Hopefully it doesn't break to the upside, but it's definitely getting going here. So um, yeah, watch out for this Apple short if you're in it with me, guys. Yeah, it's getting wild to the upside, so getting tested on that short. Still no breakout on Alphabet just yet. Tesla, not above 170. That kind of sucks. I wanted to see Tesla above 170. That would be a heck of a lot more interesting. Oh, we just got a bit of a pullback on Micron there. So it just, it, it wicked 60s. I was able to get some at 90, not nearly enough. And then if it does pull back, I still like VWAP for the retracement. Got to pay yourself out because the market is showing signs of finally breaking out. Like, this is what the NASDAQ looks like. When I say pay yourself out, pay yourself out on the shorts, I mean. 
because you're finally breaking that morning high, and now we're into somewhat in uncharted territories. We had resistance up here in the NASDAQ before, but we look like we're finally picking a bit of a direction here. And if the direction is to the upside, do not get too stubborn about your shorts if that's going to be the case. Uh, you just can't do it, which means get some on the bid, Neil. That's what I want to do. You're going to see me be very careful with uh, the name I'm about to pull up here because a couple of days ago I said to you, uh, C3 AI, I'm going to wait till it gets to 20. Well, you know, it kind of got here like 1975 and dips a dollar. So that might have been the short off 20. I know it's testing it again and technically that's kind of like, okay, it fails 20 here. It's a short but I might have missed it the first time. And if I've missed a trade, it's a very different prospect kind of shorting it right now above that 20 level. But I have my eyeballs on it. I'm gonna go pay for my locates because this is one I said like, like last week, C3AI, 20 bucks. That's the level I want to look for. It's here right now. I just want to see how expensive it might be. I actually didn't realize it was going to get here this fast. Yeah, we took off some pressure there for um, C3. Uh, yeah, we don't have shorts for that? No, I guess we don't probably. Not usually. Uh, well, I don't I know. We might want to test it. We haven't traded in a while. So oh, we do. Yeah, I was going to say, I wouldn't be see? surprised if we had it. you just saved me a couple of shekels. Yep, there you go. Uh, well, it's always better to test first, my guy over I, there. Uh, but um, yeah, exactly. So all right, we, we, we took away some pressure there on Apple. We just shorted the top. Uh, so we got out some success. 16s. Now you can see where we're short at 10s. I do have another bid right here at 11 to take a little bit more out. Uh, again, you know, I like Apple for the short side, but if we're wrong, we're wrong. And, you know, we always want to live to see another day right now. So a little bit of a flush down for Apple here would be nice. I am bidding some more around O's to take a dime again, which it didn't give me the first time. Uh, so let's see if that can come through right now. I'm bidding, see, like I just said I was bidding 11s and it stopped at 12. At least you know uh, that I'm there. Uh, let's see if it can continue to go down that's that 50 period at 143 so yeah we're trying to hold this name because we know it's weak but how weak is it we're about to find out uh here right now if as this market tests looks like it wants to test the high side one more time okay uh i think it's happening now and it's over there at the big screen with Crypto. brendan yeah, we'll talk about uh, crypto a little bit here this morning, guys. It's been pretty flat ahead of the Fed tomorrow. We might get some action going into uh, that decision coming up again tomorrow at 2 p.m. Make sure you're with us. Uh, interesting note here from uh, Elon back in the crypto headlines once again this morning, uh, talking about maybe accepting crypto as payment for Twitter and also still applying for more licenses when it comes to the payment side of things as he continues to push towards the quote unquote everything app for Twitter. So we'll see how that plays out. Uh, both of my charts crashed this morning for some reason. So here is uh, the daily chart once again for Bitcoin, 1.8% back to the upside. So again, a daily chart uh, back to the upside. We're still holding this 22 and a half, which is the uh, support level. Nice little flag setting up here on a technical aspect for BTC. Here's Ethereum looking very similar after that last uh, run up, trying to hold 15 and a half back to the upside for uh, Ethereum as well as I move this up a little bit. Back to flat right now for Bitcoin, Ethereum 0.37 to the upside as well. I was going to uh, scroll down here and show you this one. Speaking of Elon, 1.7 for uh, Shiba Inu today. Uh, Polkadot, Solana also positive on the day, but nothing out of the ordinary as far as huge moves. However, MSGM guys, wow, huge move. 372% right now back to equities. Uh, just halted to the upside. I saw a pop up there. Yeah, that's up a little bit. It's a bit. So it's not, okay, here's the thing. It's not normally this simple as to, sim as to say 685,000 share float, stock is gapping up, just buy the dip and, you, and then it'll rip and you'll just double your money. It's not that easy. But what? <laughs> it's, it really isn't. Oh, okay. But that's been the, look, that's just been the case for these low float names. As a, mo as a pure momentum play, double bottom, break the high at 850, and then dips. Like right here, dips right back into that previous price. That is a safer way to play it. I'm not in this sucker, and as I just went to look for locates, and they're actually, you know, they're like half a dollar uh, to be able to pay for it. I just always say pay yourself out when you get an opportunity with these because it's not going to go up in, to infinity. There is going to be a pullback. It is going to be crazy. But, man, these under 1 million low floaters from a momentum standpoint, they're just gold. I don't know what to say about it. Just... I wish I had it. I don't. I'm indicating, oh, it's, it's indicating a 1293 open, so it's going to open higher if it were to open in, like, right now, but that's two minutes. It's a volatility halt. It's got room since, it, since that reverse. Uh, the reverse split, $15, I think, is kind of that level where if it gets there, 
I would look to short it. I did grab C3AI because, you know, this is a level I said I would, although I want to be very cautious here uh, up at these highs. It's a yada, 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 you know, it, well, that's not really yada, yada, yada. This is an AI company, but I shorted that first failure or rejection of 20 even. It got to about 2040, so I'm short the consolidation. Out is at the high of the day. If I make top wick, so be it. I'm not getting out till it breaks 20 to the downside. I'm looking for a view off retracement here. Whew, I cannot Oof. believe. Then Brennan came in and he said that he was like 685,000 share flow. And I kind of, I think we were joking around, like just go long. It's not much of a joke now, is it? Like, no, it's not. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not really my style to trade those names, but yeah, uh, for me, uh, that, that's a good indicator right there. It's I mean, ridiculous. anything sub a million is crazy because we know day traders are out there. So if it's even, especially if it's a low value stock like dollar, my, dollar wise, uh, you can really get that thing moving. So, uh, all right, now we're at, I was gonna say, now we're at 11. Now we're at 11, Apple. You guys know that we're sitting here. Let's see if we can get a fill and we cannot. There it is, yes, sir. Thank you, Apple, uh, to the downside right now. So that's a good one. Uh, Roblox went right to where we thought that there was a possibility for this thing to go. So now we are 80 cents in the money on RBLX. So, wow, there, like Apple just, we just got filled at 11 and then it went to eight. And I was like, all right, here we go. Uh, Cause we have some O's there as well. And then it just ripped right back up. So I don't know what the, what's going on here uh, with Apple, but uh, it's, I still think it's weak, man. Uh, and it wants to go. So let's see uh, one stock that we identified early that was strong. This, you know, could be, it's too bad Roblox doesn't report. Cause this could be the trade of the day down here at 3580. Um, we got the bottom and straight to the upside right now. We'll see if it continues to go. I do want to hold on to this long, uh, right now for Roblox as it continues to be really strong, man. Um, AMD, by the way, as well, I'm spinning money, this one money, all the way money, through. Money, Look money, what AMD money, is doing. Money, money. I mean, multiple buys here, man, for AMD, and it is working and working quite well. So this one, upside right now, $1.10 in the money for AMD. Uh, we'll... You know what, now that we're up this high, what about just getting out if we take 73.50 again? Um, you know, we are short Apple. We are hoping the market does come down. The market's trying to top out right now. But I mean, AMD really hasn't cared that much about the market. Obviously, as the market goes up, so does AMD. But you can see it, it is strong compared to the rest of them. All right, Apple, you know what, man? Now that you're back down here, we're short at 14s. I don't want to do this, but let's put another bid here at like 0607 in case it does do that random flush again there. Uh, the last time, actually, I guess the last time we didn't even get eights, we pretty much got the bottom there. So let's see if it, uh, let's go. I know this name is weak, man. I think you guys know it too. So we just need this to fall down uh, and then we'll be really happy with our trading here on Apple. A couple more pennies down. Let's break that 143 and stop this madness. You know you want to go down Apple today. You're barely flat my guy I'm long you in the long-term portfolio but here right now all right you know what I can't convince it let me ask the magic eight ball magic eight ball will will Apple break 143 in the next five minutes it's gonna be ambiguous my reply is no damn it no, okay. oh, rejected uh, it. I said 143 though. So well, at least I, hopefully Micron goes down. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully they all go down here. Uh, I'm waiting at 06. It just went to 08 there. Hopefully this, this can tick down and we'll get a little bit out here. And of course we make decisions based solely on what the eight ball says. So I, I have to uh, respect that. And that's a joke, of course. And there it is right there. 06 is we just got it out. We're actually making money now on Apple. Let's see if it wants to fall even further right now. I feel like we got this one, guys. Let's see if Apple can come back down. My next out is 143 flat because eight ball. And then after that, uh, we'll wait back down here in between VWAP and the 50 period here at 90. Let's see if we get a 90 fill here on Eli Apple. And let's go over there now to the big desk with Brendan. All right, 1040 guys, we'll give you an update on the S&P 500. As always, make sure you take a second, smash the like guys and subscribe if you haven't done so as well. Nice green board to have a look at today. Back to the upside, once again, half a percent now up here for the S&P, a little hard to see, but typical for an earnings season, you can see a lot of individual movers that are offsetting each other more or less, but uh, enough to keep us in positive territory. That's GM down there, really nice day, 8%. Uh, it's been a long time since GM's been up 8%, 3% for Ford as well, being dragged along with that. Uh, Tesla just 1% to the upside, but automakers and uh, some of the durable names uh, helping to uh, lift the consumer discretionary uh, group, offsetting that McDonald's move to the downside. If you missed it this morning, they were pointing to FX concerns going forward. 
uh, and some inflationary pressures still into the new year. So McDonald's downside. Caterpillar downside, same story. Margins shrinking for CAT, four and a quarter percent to the downside as a result. UPS with a nice report, though, three and a half percent higher on the day. Industrials are all higher as well as a group. Nice uh, day for the materials group as well. Uh, I was going to point out the energy. There it is. PSX, 5% was an earnings name in the energy group. But the rest of this group, higher on the day, helping to offset that one that's uh, downside. So energy stocks still higher on the day, even with some uh, pressure coming in on crude oil. Yeah, somebody pointed this out early on. Micron, guys, still 3% downside when the rest of the semiconductor is positive on the session so far, as is the overall market, up half a percent. Maybe. I love this one. My, my daughter's into a whole Mario da, da, da. thing. And they're making a new movie. There's a I Mario told you about that. Out. We're jacked up for that. Yeah, I'm excited about, well, we're all excited in my household because I have a five-year-old. Um, but here, look, MG, MSGM, just a quick second. Higher time frame, 15, pre-reverse, 16. You can say whatever you want about these things. But everyone looks at these bloody things, and it's like, okay, so it goes through 15, rejects exactly where a random line on the chart was on the daily, even though it's a, even though it's a reverse split, and then pulls back to 14. But it's still going. So it goes that $2 back in and holds 14 even. I'm not paying. I haven't paid for locates because I don't think it's gone crazy enough, to be honest with you. Probably needs to go a little bit crazy than that. But finally, we get a bit of a retracement on Micron. So instead of holding that original short, we took the L on the first short. We were able to scalp some out, but then took the L on the first short. Started shorting it off to 60 level. It's back to 59.60 in VWAP. I want half out when it gets to VWAP. And if it breaks that, I want to hold the other half of the absolute lows. The market just does not want to break out. And I'm going to tempt fate by going to my Google chart. Yeah, I got rid of the wick and it's back again. Now you're just barcoding on Alphabet. It doesn't want to give you 97s. It's basically holding 40 to 50 pennies of money. I can't get the dip by. It won't break 97.75. If the market breaks the top, I'm going. As, the longer it consolidates, the 15 is going to be easier to stare at here because that's just pissing me off. Uh, the longer it consolidates here, the better I like that top break in 97.75. I will for sure scalp some out to 98 and then 98 and a half just based on yesterday's resistance. But the longer it sits up here, the better I think that breakout's going to look for me. Uh, General Motors has really slowed down. The trade might already be, we'll see, maybe it's done. It did get close enough to 40 that maybe that's it, right? And I did buy the dip at 39, but now it's giving you like quarters and 30s and no longer those 50 to dollar moves there on GM. Strong stock up 8%, but it might be running out of a little bit of steam here. With any luck, and maybe you don't want to count on luck, Tesla's now retaking 170. That could possibly push general motors uh to some highs this isn't really giving you some this is not giving you obvious places to get in at least in my stretch of imagination when it's this when it's this linear buying the dip gets really tricky because which dip do you like we're not seeing 165 at this point it almost has to test the top and then show me the dip by itself um the 171 break probably is more of a scalp trade than anything else like an in and out quickly type trade all right um so you know, frustrations abound uh, for me here. <laughs> and it's just because, app, I mean, look, we're doing well on it, so I shouldn't be that frustrated. I mean, Apple oh, um, God, is in the money. And I'm sorry about talking about the same name here, but honestly, like, it's it, it dips down. We got a nether. We got a bunch of, like, O2s and O3s here. It just doesn't seem like it wants to take out this 50 period. Like, it comes down. It bounces off 143. It's a key level. You guys know that I normally trade around these levels. Um, but I'm, like, more into thinking that this has a move down coming here um, as opposed to a move up. So, you know, if that's what I'm thinking, then yeah, we do have to sit here um, and try to respect that there's a potential here for a flush again. And I, I mean, the market is still, like, as we go, look, we have AMD, which is now at highs. So let's hit the sirens for that to not forget about what's happening uh, right now with AMD as we're $1.25 in the money on AMD. We're 90 cents in the money now on Roblox. We're 40 cents in the money on Meta. Um, so... Yeah, a problem? No. But um, we still are waiting for, okay, here it comes. Like, look at this drop again. And what am I doing? I got to buy all fours again because it's just not spitting down. So hopefully this will come back in right now. But look, there's the rejection again. 
And I'm like debating one more time, just sitting here and putting out another uh, bid here. But then when it falls, I won't have enough on board. Uh, so hopefully it comes back in. You guys know that I do have a bid at 87 uh, down here. Maybe that's, okay, here, let's take a 97. Yes, finally, let's just reward ourselves. We'll hit the awesome here. It needs to fall down. It's more awesome because we've been calling this move and it's trying to happen. So let's see if it does. And just in case you know, um, you were, you were wondering, wondering, like, look at that 97, like, that was, do we get 96s there? Uh, here we go. Now maybe it'll drop down, but we are out uh, uh, now. We have less than the majority, so we have about 40% left of Apple looking to get lower Listen. fills here. But for now, Apple, we're out of the majority of this trade. Let's see if it does continue to fall down. So I finally got the top break on the alphabet there. It just, you know what, I, I got to do it this way. Um, it just broke the high, so I added to the position. I still have that wick, so it looks ridiculous. Um, but I want to see if this can get to that 98 level on a little bit of a push to the upside. Lucid just made a move. Um, it's not at 12 yet, but now that it's getting close to it, I like 12s. I like 14s for a fade on Lucid. Uh, if anything, maybe 11.50 turns into a buy. I didn't pay for locates early. At least I don't think I did. And I might have just got wicked out. Oh, I did pay for locates, so I got them. C3 AI took out the top. And it might have just been a wick top. So I said I'd stop out there. That's the high. It broke. I'm out of it. But it's looking like it, it's still going to be valid. I don't, I don't automatically jump back, back in on a wick top more than one or two times. So I'm thinking I'll just get in back this one time here. And if you heard some activity in the background just now, it's because of that MSGM. So MSGM is also, is now at 17, yeah, Lucid's, Lucid's going, but MSGM is now at 17, up 560% and about to halt to the upside. Wow. Yeah, big time moves happening uh, right now on, on a lot of these names. Oh, here's a halt. Uh, uh, is halting right now? It's about to halt, about to halt. Is it gonna halt? Will it, at this point it's 15 seconds, so it's about a second or two away from going into a halt. It's 17.69. You come the to my screen, just I at 15 it. bucks, yeah. it's going crazy. Yeah, there it is. So there's the halt right there, 1769 upside. Nice, nice move there. Uh, that, so that's the second halt, I guess, uh, yeah. right there. So one halt, two halts, last one. Uh, halted at 1033, reopened at 1038. So this should be another five-minute halt right now uh, coming through on MSGM. Huge move to the upside. No idea what they do, but it's a great move uh, there. And probably sparking its friend Lucid here. Come on, Apple. Let's go. They're in like an e-gaming. Uh, yeah, there it is. Up to 12 right now. Lucid's going. Trying to break through 12, and there it is, man. Once one of them starts, they all, they don't, I don't, shouldn't say they all tend to follow, but they do. Uh, so there it goes right now. Check back in on the other name uh, that we were looking at for a possible rip uh, today, or at least movement here. It's Carvana. That's kind of done nothing here. We, you know, we're, we're down on Carvana, you know, we definitely told you guys that. Uh, okay, Apple, uh, right now we're bidding 87s. Like, remember? Yes, sir. Finally, holy shit. I, I'm just so happy that the way this, this name's moving, like we called this and it actually happened. So we were sitting there saying to you guys, let's short Apple, let's keep shorting Apple. We should have reshorted it. Let's keep on it. So now that it broke down, yes, sir, that's that right there. Ooh, man, that was a... Ooh, that's a good one, man. I really like when that stuff works out. You know, Roblox to the upside, Apple to the downside. Um, yeah, let's go. We'll, we'll, we'll take some more out, man. If we can get down into 74, 75, let's put another bid down there. Uh, let's put a bid at 80, uh, and then we'll go into the 70s. So, yeah, man, some good trades here happening on Apple. Give it to us, Brendan. Getting some love off of this uh, move in MSGM is this one. MGAM, they're both mobile eSport gaming companies. So... MGAM starting to go now. Yeah, I mean, look, the catalyst for that, like it does, it had a piece of news in there, and it's on our watch list for a reason. But it's, they entered a debt equity exchange agreement uh, with its major stockholder. That's MGAM, uh, by the way. But it's a super, super low flow. Like it's 585,000, so it's crazy. I got wicked out of C3AI. Just jumped right back in after that wick high. I probably only take it the second time. It just got to 20s. I'm looking for 1925 as an ultimate out there. And the new position for me said, don't look at that 15, I like the 16 on, on XOM there. However, this has been screaming to the upside. You do have oil futures looking strong. On the 15, wow. it's this lower high a couple of days ago. So 116 and a half is gonna be my out. I just got into that short, so new one for me uh, to the upside. Going XOM, but I'm now only now short, as some of these low float names are going absolutely nuts. Not a low float name, but also going nuts, uh, is going to be Lucid, which is challenging that 12 level. 
this is where I like it. 12, this is about 12.25 in the afternoon. So this is the pocket that I wanted the shorts in. 25 is an out. If it gets above that, you know, we'll get out of that trade, but I'm not in it until I get a little bit closer to the set high. I'm going to Brendan for Money Talks. Yes, sir. I I got Jet 1050 heading out to 11 o'clock. It's an uh, exciting day. Take a second, guys, if you haven't done so already. Make sure you smash the like and uh, subscribe as well. Here we go. It's uh, all quiet, really, on the currency front this morning ahead of what's to come tomorrow. Again, be with us at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern tomorrow. Fed announcement followed by, probably more importantly, the uh, press conference from Fed Chair Powell. Uh, this will be a big, a big mover then. It is not today. 0.1 downside, 102.1 for the dollar index. Euro's higher very slightly. Same story for the Canadian dollar, 74.8. Uh, downside for the pound today, back to 123 uh, on the nose, more or less. But uh, nothing significant as far as moving here ahead of what is to come tomorrow. Uh, nice move back higher, as we said earlier, for Bitcoin and Ethereum today after a couple of down days. Guys. A face, Apple, Mr. Eli, you wanted to go back up. So what did we do, man? We shorted that one again uh, right there. Look at that, 22s and 30s short. Let's go. Now we're really banking here on Apple. Uh, nice downside move here uh, as it's going. Give me those 90s. We got them. So that was a good move right there for Apple. We just reshorted. Wow, we're going to end the day here, um, you know, pretty close to our highest spot that we've been at. So let's keep going, man, for Apple downside. Let's go, Apple. Yeah, this, I think we're getting a little top heavy in the markets, but I mean, I'm saying that as I get a bunch of shorts on here. Yeah. Uh, so AI is working. I just got into XOM. I just reloaded Micron in front of 60, and Tesla is at that 171. So it just, like, it broke 171. Actually, sorry, it's at 172. Check that. Tesla broke through 171. That was probably a good scalp trade. It's a dollar, but it looks like it's starting to pull back in here. I'm at that point where I'm seeing a market at a key resistance level, and I'm looking into that short side of the trade. General Motors is actually the law that was working all morning. It just reloaded at VWAP. So this might be the last time we're in General Motors if it can't hold 3880 here. That's going to be a big key. C3AI, I feel like I have to give it that tight stop. I still think it can get into VWAP, but I want to make sure I get my orders out here on the way down. And that's if it even flushes from here. 24% to the upside. And yes, I don't mind. MSGM. Only about five minutes to go, guys, before you go to the midday. Where I'm pretty darn sure uh, Luke and Sharif are going to be all over this. $20 now, it, cro if it like, just cracked 20 I'm going to now pay for locates, for shorts, because this has now gotten to that point where 700%, I'm looking for a place for the absolute flush, oh, shit, which I think is coming. The good thing is we actually haven't tried shorting it here, so we're not in trouble just yet. But it's about to halt up 22, sorry, at 22.57. This could go 1,000%. And that wouldn't surprise me at this point. Nothing is shocking me anymore with MSGM. This thing is just gone. All right, so we just got a new position long meta, but we are really banking out right now uh, on everything, guys. I mean, we are $1.60 now in the money. Look at AMD. AMD is, is, is a trade, man. Does AMD report? We're going to go over our, our... They report tonight. Okay, perfect. So good. So we can use this. Look, look at this bottom here. Bang. Right up to the upside. We're going to get out if it takes down like 74, back down to the downside and give up a little bit of this love. But wow, big move there. Uh, Meta also starting to go. I actually made a keystroke there and I actually thought I was getting out of, of um, I was looking at AMD and I pushed enter and I had an offer there for Meta. So we got in and it got out literally at the same price, which sucks. But right now we're long at 76 on Meta. So we'll put an offer here, take 20 cents. Give me that 96 right there. Yes, there it is right there. So that's good, man. There's the long. Like I said, that's a mistake. You guys know we wanted this long. Uh, so there it is. We get a piece out. Let's go. Look at Meta exploding now to the upside. Man, this has really turned down or turned around. Pretty darn good for us now uh, as Meta started to explode now. Uh, let's wait at 48.20 in case it really does get going there. Um, look, we just bought this at 76. Like... I don't know what to tell you guys. Uh, this is a great trade to the long. There's my long right there. We, we got out of a part of it, like not that many shares, but it was a mistake. So let's take a piece out now. Then if we get up to 20, we'll continue to go. Apple, I don't know what to tell you. We got more out here, 90s, 91s, when it fell back down now. Now we're much lighter on this trade, obviously, than we were. Um, so let's wait on Apple. Hopefully they can come through still. But we are Earning lighter earnings. on this trade. Let's go over now to Brendan and discuss those earnings that we were talking about. What's good over there, Brendo? Big day to come. Big couple of days, in fact, to come on the earnings front. Here's what's up tonight and tomorrow morning.
So the big one is obviously AMD, but do not sleep on Snapchat. Um, there's a certain other name that cares about how the ad spending is going or how the ad space is going for Snap, and yes. that's going to be Meta. So uh, it's going to be a good litmus test for some of these I mean, online and advertising Google, right? companies. I thought you were going to go uh, Google, Google as well. Yeah. But either one, I think Meta, Google, uh, those will be big ones. I don't really, in the in the morning. You got the bottom right there. Oh, a Pelt. Oh my goodness. And then oh, is that Peloton. Fisker? Holy no, crap. that's Old Dominion. Okay, so I was gonna say. Oh yeah, Peloton. Um, what else? Yeah, Peloton will be there. Waste management. Yeah, there's a couple of good names, but yeah, looking at what's happening later on tonight, Juniper is gonna be a big one as well. AMD uh, is big, and then of course EA. If you are in the game. I love. Look, uh, that's a great line. Uh, Peloton. Peloton's actually having a strong like one, having a strong day. I remember this. It's got a head and shoulders right now. 13. There's a 13 break yesterday. You have 13 resistance. It just put a wick high at 13. Sometimes we put that up there and it's like, oh yeah, that stock. So 13 even right here. It's going to be very similar to like what I'm doing with C3 AI. Oh, yeah. like this is the more significant level. C3 oh, yeah. AI, we tried it twice. We got greedy. It did give me a chance to take a 25 cent winner on C3 AI, but I wasn't looking for a 25 cent winner on C3 AI. Now, if I'm, no, that's, uh, you're looking for a bit of a deeper pullback than that, and now it's through the top. I, MSGM is just ridiculous, but um, open just, yet? just to update you guys, no. it's going to open pretty much right before 11 o'clock, like 10.59 this is going to open up, and it's indicating flat, which I don't think it actually opens flat, but as it gets closer, that, that tap is going to adjust. Currently says 22.58, which is pretty much exactly uh, where it did close. The locates actually have jumped, so it went from 49 cents a share to like 57 cents a share to get locates on this. It's getting pricey, but the higher it gets, the more reasonable that price might be. Be careful. If you're long this one, pay yourself out. Make sure you take profit somewhere. When it does flush, it tends, it'll probably do so very, very quickly. I would not be chasing this. And how, someone said, how do you determine what price halt it opens at? Uh, so there's something called the theoretical auction price. So they take all the orders coming into the imbalance, before this opens up, all the buys and sells, and then it's actually in our system. It's actually part of the market data feed that you get from NASDAQ or New York. And they say, if it were to open now, the general imbalance indicates this would be the price. That's constantly changing until it opens. If you don't see it, contact your broker, day trade the world, it's in our platform. Yes, sir. Um, all right, so just, just quickly there, as we go, man, only a minute and a half, thank you for watching. Make sure though that you, we, we talk about this all the time, of course, make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button to make sure that you're back. When we, Neil and I are back at 2 p.m., we are gonna throw you two, if it's your first time, we have another show right now with two new traders, um, the Handsome Crew coming on board right now uh, with Sharif and Luca, so that should be a lot a of bit. fun uh, coming through right now. Just Let's just review some of the positions that we have before we go. So Meta, we just put this one on. It's 55 cents in the money. That's a good trade. Roblox, I want to see it take down 37 right now. Obviously, if you're seeing where we're long, we're long from 35.80 in the morning there, identified relative strength. And yeah, it's working. Uh, nice move to the upside here. Watch out for 37. Debating what? getting out if we take 36.80. Um, this is a big move. Uh, MGM is still going up, right? 30, uh, MSGM right now. So here it is right now. Uh, it's only $27. So uh, only up 9 hundred percent right now but you know like all of you i'm long from yesterday so this is a good trade yeah, uh yeah, yeah. right now but wow what a move to the upside right now for this that name. was it Maybe. that might have been the top uh right there Maybe blowing not. it out at 27 all they had to hear was that i was long and then it made a move down uh i am not long this name here it comes back down 21 wow so this just flushed 300 percent right there so a nice move back down i'm really glad the market's not halting this like just move down 300 percent uh and not halting so it's halting now you guys trade this if you want to but uh this ain't my cup of tea there it is right there back up 300 percent with no halt so uh we're we're moving around it got to the band yeah on msgm right there so oh man wild rides needless to say thanks for watching guys it's been a big show here watch your msgm here the market's starting to blow up again right now so market days high as we get ready to throw it over anything you want to talk about here because uh this market's going nuts yeah that's it basically that bounced right off the halt band it got to the halt band and then the buyers just came into it i'm about to get a reload in xom here and then i'm going to scalp it i didn't take 40 cents when i could now i'm going to reload it and take 40 cents if i get a chance because that's just being greedy but it's time to send you to the midday guys Let's go. Good, good luck and have fun with msgm boys yes, i know sir. you're going to be watching it uh trader sharif and the scalp demon.
What a oh, the morning the it professor, has been. Professor. I'm Sharif, that's Luca. This is the midday show. Let's get it started, baby. Oh, Luca. I thought I was like king whatever, How? you know, over here on MSGM getting these scalps. Now it looks like I absolutely paper handed this trade. What a morning it has been. Uh, I've been trading Tesla, sorry, uh, I've been trading Meta, I've been trading Microsoft, MSGM, and this M, MGAM? MGAM. What have you been up to? Uh, yeah, man, lo lots of trades, lots of trades for myself, but uh, MSGM obviously uh, is the, uh, the interesting one right now. I am probably going to hate myself for this, um, but I had a long. It was just holding up for whatever reason, you know, had the long here and, uh, you know, trying to basically get long and, you know, obviously, uh, you know, kind of scared of uh, potential flush. This is where, you know, for myself, mm. I was long down over here below 10. Let it go. Your and then we break 10 to the upside, and I'm just like, wow, okay, I need to find another. Oh, Mike, 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 yes, yes, yes. Um, okay, here we go. I'll just explain that one more time. So anyways, as you guys can see, trying the long initially. Try no, I'm good. It should be good. Yeah, it should be good. All right, guys, what's going on, everyone? Hopefully, everybody having a great day, enjoying the show. Uh, please hit that like button. And, uh, yeah, MSGM, definitely interesting. You know, where's the top on this thing? I have no idea. No idea. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, man, it. trying, uh, you know, uh, always Mike, Luca, yeah, man, trying to make sure everything's good now. But anyways, you know, tried the long, kind of scaled out after the halt. I'm like, I'm not going to get too greedy. I mean, this thing could reverse and be at 10. Anytime I take a position in something like this, 650,000 float, I do expect, uh, you know, to lose everything. So your size is always your risk on something like this. I, I say that every time. And uh, not really getting greedy with, greedy with it. Basically got out, got out. And uh, here we are, kind of, uh, you know, do we go higher, do we go lower? I have no idea what happens next. This is a name, Sharif, that I think can go oh, yeah. to 50, oh, 70, yeah. Oh, yeah. 100. I mean, anything's possible with this thing. But again, the guys, I, is ridiculous. It's, it's crazy. When you get a flow like this, this thing could, could gap down and it could be at 9. Uh, absolutely. So, so I don't how know what How many shares have we done? We've done 20. So how many times float rotation is that? What was, uh, what was the uh, float on this again? Here, let's have a look. Um, 650k. 650k. So I'm yeah. seeing. I'm seeing. Where am I seeing? I'm seeing 460 here. Okay, 650. Whatever. Uh, so we'll have to do the math there. But that's obviously more than 22 times float rotation. That's big. All right. We'll review my trade here. So here's what I did on this one. I'm like, okay, it's it's moving up. It's moving up aggressively. Um, we're about to get into the halt status. Do I want to be part of this upward halt? Meaning, do I think that this has got continuation? Uh, and you got to make that in a split decision. I, I, I thought it did. I thought it was good, and we've been seeing a lot more of these lately. So I punched in here at 12.25, all right? We moved up to 12.46. I took a baby piece out, and I'm like, I'm going to take out a little tiny piece here before the, the hold. This is when we had basically uh, started uh, running up on the tape and, uh, and stacking. So I'm going to all take a little piece out there. We open up. A little, where do we open up? 12.77, I take out a piece at 13, then incrementally up 13.25, then it's flying even more. 13.75, 14, then I start leaving it up. 15, 16.25, so I'm like, okay, this is great, right? This is, this is the top, I've, you know, this is the best trade of the day, and we're, we're gonna do a new segment here called, uh, you know, trade of the week. I'm like, ah, I'm gonna use this, this is gonna be fantastic. And <laughs> what, what ends up happening, it makes a bull flag, and the continuation comes, we halt up at 17 and a half, and look, at, basically we've reached up to 22 and a half. Where did we reach up to? What's a real, 2760, that's a real high on this one. Flushing back down now, I initially thought that this would be an area to enter short. Obviously here we are SSR being that we're, we are up over, like we were 900% on the day now, 725, but uh, we are SSR, so you won't be able to get filled that easily. You're gonna have to wait for an uptick. Obviously, with that rule engaged now, we are you know, retracing a little bit. I want no part of this, okay? I don't want a part of it to the upside, to the downside. I'm done with this trade. I'm not going to give back any of the money. Uh, it's been an absolute monster for me, this one, MSGM. So uh, that's the end of that trade. I will not be involving myself. I know the chat's going to love this, and we'll continue to cover it, obviously, and we'll continue to awe and gawk as it continues to make newer highs. Maybe you're breaking 30, but, you know, it's just like take your money and go home here. Uh, the other one that's moving, uh, let's talk a little bit about um, my other trade on Microsoft. This is, was a really good one. I looked at Microsoft, I'm like, look, the chart looks relatively strong compared to some of these other ones. Uh, the two that are standouts to me today are Microsoft and Amazon. Those ones were more, uh, and Tesla obviously goes without saying, but I, I didn't involve myself in Tesla. 
um, they were more relatively strong than say Google, Apple, and Meta. I'll show you my, my bad trade on Meta ends up being a flat trade, but uh, you'll be able to juxtapose it. Uh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> we have another segment, guys. It's called Word of the Day, and we just found it right now. We're juxtaposing uh, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft and, um, and uh, Meta. So basically, the idea here was to take the relative strength up. I got long at uh, 244.63. I started scalping through that 245 break at 15s, then again at 25s, and then held all the way up to 50s. But this retraced, and I had my, my out essentially at my, um, my entry point. So as soon as uh, we broke there, and we didn't close below there, it looked like it only wicked below there. So kind of bad on my part, bad luck on my part but ends up being a really good trade. The one that wasn't a really good trade is this meta trade. I ended up getting lucky and breaking even because I averaged in on the dip. I initially got in here at 148.25 and then averaged in uh, as it made its way down, 148.12. This one just showed its relative weakness all day. It has been kind of consolidating sideways while these other big cappers have been moving up. This is not one that I want to take long unless some real volume comes in and it shows you that somebody's clearly adding to their position in, uh, in you know, anticipation of earnings. And we see that sometimes. We saw that. We saw people selling before Netflix, et cetera. This typically happens. So uh, this one's relatively weak and doesn't look like it has any buyers for me today. So I'm staying away from it. I ended up basically adding here on the dip at 147.87 and then getting break even here through the one the break of 148 uh, and just coming down to my uh, my break even point. All right, so what have we got here? Uh, yeah, so we're, that covers my trades basically and so I'll send it over to Luca. Yeah guys, uh, somebody's asking me, Luca, have a look here at Snap. I uh, kind of see this level over under high of day. My play here is basically short this and then see if this wants to instantly fade back into the 30s for a quick scalp. If it doesn't work, I'll just be out of this trade very quickly so that's just a heads up on that. I did have a little bit of an Amazon short. It is kind of creating a little bit of a channel over that 103 level. I did have quite a few fills on, uh, on Amazon today. This was a long going into the 103 level, just very quick scalp. I initially covered here first, and I was trying to get 103, but then as it kind of failed, you know, market looked for a moment like it was going to roll over, so I did cover down, 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 and essentially won the trade, but I was really hoping for it to fill, fill, fill on the way up. Wasn't like that. Looked a little bit weak, and I do like this kind of move into the 103 level, high of day kind of coinciding with the overall market, not looking as strong as it could. And this was uh, something that I'm proud of, kind of waiting for that 103 break to the upside, scaling into the short. So starting it here very light and then adding to it and then watching that it was weak and then slamming it and basically covering all the way down and then re-adding to the short and then getting those VWAP covers. That was pretty nice. Then I actually flipped long. Not proud of this one, man. Not proud of it flipped long and I was going for basically the VWAP long and I had just kind of bid stacked. I ended up getting all of these bids filled at the same time. Holy. It basically flushed down and I was like, uh oh. And I'm like, you know what, man, if I can break even on this, I'll just be a happy camper. So I sent out a break even order. It filled me and then it just ripped back to the upside. Oh. And I was like, maybe I had the right idea and I, sh I should have stuck to the plan. So it was maybe a product of the fact that it's atop my board and I didn't want to ruin my day. And at the time, you know, I, it's kind of, uh, I like what Sharif was doing there saying like, this is what I saw. And I like doing this because hindsight is 2020. But, you know, this is what I saw it. I really didn't think I was going to get those bottom fills. And then when they all happened so quickly, you know, it was, it was basically everybody has a plan until you get punched in the face. Mm -hmm. So this was me getting punched in the face. This was me not getting knocked out. And then this was me saying, oh, man, I could have won the fight. But uh, it is what it is. We move on. Had a couple other shorts on it. Same kind of area over here short. Short here as well. And I kind of like this level, but I do want it to push just a little bit higher. And I want to try to recycle some shares over here. So, yeah, I will be looking for shorts above 103.20. Um, for the fade back down. That was the, uh, yeah, top of my board. Had a couple long scalps on Pfizer and, and GM. I'll just share these very quickly. You know, rule of thumb, Pfizer, we had that kind of up move. And what I was looking for is, you know, are we going to get a VWAP bounce? And then I was thinking of scaling into this, going into the 50 period, and essentially risking off the low of day. Anytime you get a sort of pop and a drop, I was thinking maybe we get that continuation. And the plan was, you know, just kind of long below VWAP into the 50 period and then scale out going into potentially high a day, uh, but also based on time as well. I, I wasn't sure, you know, how long this was going to take. If it went straight up, then I would have had fills over here. But the fact that we hung around here for a little bit, as you guys can see, I was just basically scaling out over 143. And then my best out was like 43, 
uh, 43.30 over there. Same plan with GM as well, basically long into the 50 period below VWAP and then pop into the high day, covering that best out towards high day. Definitely can't complain on that one, man. Those, those are atop my board, pretty happy with it. Meta was so strong this morning with just the explosive move to the upside. I was late to the party, but late is better than never, I think, sometimes. Um, so yeah, you know, that was just basically long scalp. And I did try to hold on to a piece. I basically long got out and I was waiting and then it wasn't going. I got out, I was waiting. It wasn't breaking that 150. I think it was Neil who called the, uh, the 150 short. Not sure if he had it up there, but that was a banger. And I was just like, yeah, you know, 150 is a level. Let me just, you know, take my money and run. I'll take the win on that one. So pretty happy. Uh, XOM, you know, this is something that surprised me. I look over at Ian and he's like, yeah, 115, blah, blah, blah. And I go, 115? What do you mean? I was shorting this and it was almost at 110. And, uh, you know, I had the short kind of loaded this into VWAP and then covered into the low a day. Pretty textbook for myself. Goes into the 100, or sorry, the 110 level. And I'm like, you know what? I should do a bounce play over here. But it didn't get, I wanted like 111 or something. Or sorry, 110.11. And we obviously didn't get low enough, so I didn't get that fill. And here we are back at towards what all-time high. I mean, well, no, sorry. All-time high is like uh, 118. But yeah, here we are now back above that 115 mark. So I have no idea what to think. I mean, this is, this is, what a move, man. What a reversal on that one. Sharif, I don't know if you have any, if you had any uh, XOM trades there, no. but this one is, I, I want to find a way into this, but I'm not really too sure what to think. I, I kind of feel like we will fade back to the downside, but it is kind of floating, holding trend. I don't want to get too aggressive with it too early. You know, maybe this kind of move and then exhaustion back to the upside, you know, maybe volume kind of subsides and, and you know, maybe create a little bit of a channel yeah, and then and then go lower. So at this point now, I'm just kind of waiting. Um, we'll see what happens with that one. But yeah, nice little win earlier on it. Definitely can't complain on that one. And uh, yeah, a few other scalps along the way. Google, my biggest loser for the day. I don't know what I was thinking. I was like going, I was like shorting this thing over and over again. It just wasn't working. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm just done with this. So it is what it is. But yeah, let's look if we can find uh, a couple more sh trades to go. Yeah, I got, um, I got a couple here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so AI, I can't believe I didn't notice this. I mean, you, you got what, viewers of the show will know that I, I traded this nicely last week, and it's been kind of one of these movers based on that AI headline. It's kind of C3, which is really well known. Look at this move, guys. We're off that 1670 in the pre-market. We topped out here at 2118. That's a great move. Uh, this is the three-minute candle, three-minute chart. Um, giving you ample opportunities on, you know, not even really aggressive retracements here. Uh, you could have gone in on dips, so we're gonna continue to look for that. It looks like it's held VWAP quite nicely here the majority of the morning, breaking it a few times, but kind of extended off it at the moment, making me a little bit hesitant to punch in here. It's up, uh, it was up over like 28% now, retracing a little bit off the highs. Uh, I'm thinking maybe this $20 area looks good. There is an area of consolidation around there. There was a lot of price action that took place between 20 and 2025. 20, you know, I'm thinking about it, but we'll have to, it'll have to make its way back down. But what a mover this has been, man. This AI catalyst, as you, you hear Neil calling it all the time, yada, yada, yada. It's been working, baby, though. Uh, it's been working. A lot of, uh, you know... A lot of stocks that you probably would never have heard of uh, making nice moves on there. All right, I want to review this MGAM trade because it is worth noting as well. So this one is moving in sympathy with MSGM. And uh, so as soon as it started moving, I looked. I'm like, okay, there's a good amount of volume. Let's see where the levels are. There was a bit of uh, room between now and the next uh, resistance level. So I said, okay, I'll punch in. I punched in 155s. It started slowing down in its ascent. So I'm like, uh, you know, that's not really good. And we had volume, the volume was increasing, but we weren't seeing as much upward price action. So I was like, okay, it's time to scalp, took out some in the low 60s and then some in the high. And then I'm like, nope, this is not gonna go against me. This has to be a break even trade uh, on all parts of it, even uh, the little remaining that I had here. So I took some out right at break even and then look what happened, it flushed all the way down. So trust your instincts on this and the more screen time you have, obviously the better those will get. Um, MSGM still hanging around, uh, kind of making another bull flag looking shape here, if I could call it that. You're getting uh, upward, you're getting higher lows, and but you're getting lower highs at the same time. So kind of making that uh, equilateral triangle. Let's see which way this one explodes up to the upside or the downside. Hovering around 23 bucks at the moment. Uh, my, my book is a little oh. bit messed up on this one. So sometimes uh, the top line won't be right, but 
Yeah, I'm looking through uh, probably a break of 25 here, and then we're looking at 30 in the face, Luca. I don't know uh, how you feel about uh, what's happening, the accumulation here on MSGM. What do you say? It's, uh, you know what, it is, it is tough, man. It is tough. A lot of the times when I look at these things, you, you know, you're either in the up move or you're in the down move. These consolidations are dangerous. When it's a yeah. 650,000 float, anything can happen. Anything can happen. This can go up. This can go down. But when it's not doing anything, this is not where I really, really love to get involved. I mean, it's, it's uh, again, you know, your size is your risk. This guy is when I'm taking trades on this thing, like I am prepared for this to open at zero, even if it opens into an up halt. I know that's not necessarily the case. I know that doesn't really happen. But again, uh, uh, you know, keep that in mind. Your size is your risk when it comes to these micro floats. Uh, they can clear up both sides. This thing can go to 100 and it could stop out every single long. And so who will be involved in that move to 100? Uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe one out of every, every thousand people. Mm. That's kind of the way I look at it. So, you know, as I'm getting long, especially with this one, this was just pure luck for myself. It's like, I'm long and I'm like, okay, if this goes below 14, I'm out. So it just so happened that it didn't, but how about this one? I'm long and then I'm just stopped out and then the move happens. So it is a complete gamble, but I'm okay with it, man, because my casino hat is on and I <laughs> took the win there. So life is good. Uh, yeah, what's going on everyone in the chat saying hi to me just now. Uh, hopefully you guys are doing well and uh, having a great day, having a great week. Somebody's asking, what are predictions for Snapchat earnings? That is a great question, yeah, man. I have no idea. That is a good question, man. I was reading a little bit about that, Luca, looking at some of the shift in uh, the market players in that space, the digital ad space. Basically, so basically talking about, um, thanks, Brad, uh, talking about how Amazon has taken a lot of market share and TikTok has taken a lot of market share away from the, 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 you know, the older players like the Facebook uh, or the Meta, sorry, uh, Snap, uh, Google. These guys have all suffered market share loss to, the, to new entrants, especially as, you know, and Netflix now actually adding uh, another uh, advertising platform there, $6.99 a month, I think is the U.S. price with digital ads. So... It's been super interesting to see, and if my instinct is any, you know, like, I don't see Snap really doing anything special to attract people back to the platform like some of these other uh, players are doing. So I think they kind of bottomed out a little bit. This is just my instinct, but, yeah, you know, it's, you it, know has, it's, it doesn't look like there's much upside. I, to be honest, I have no idea what to think, but I'm kind of feeling like, I mean, last time, every single time they've reported earnings for the past three times, it's mm -hmm. been a down move. And you know what? Maybe this was a, a down and an up move. And maybe share my screen very quickly, and I'll show this Brad. daily chart. It's, uh, it's kind of interesting because Brad. When, when was the... Uh, yeah, take your time. No problem, because I'm actually looking at this, uh, uh, trying to figure it out for myself here. But uh, this is the down move. And I'm going to say that this was an earnings, this was an earnings, this was an earnings, and we're going to get the next one. And something notable is the blow-off tops that happen. So it actually shows that it wants to give an up move and then, it, and then it reverses to the downside. Same thing over here. It shows that it wants to give an up move, and then it reverses to the downside. So I'm sort of wondering, do we show again that this wants to give an up move and then give a down move? You know, the range for myself is very simple. I almost want to draw a line right over here, so 13, and then bottom of the range being, you know, call it 740. Something that, and, then, and this is me just kind of grasping at straws. I'm not going to take a bet based on this, but, you know, my no. opinion of what potentially could happen in this market, same common theme. It did it the first time. It did it the, thir uh, the second time. Third time's a charm. Uh, up to 13, reversal point, down to 7 or 8. Maybe that would be the play that it sets up again. But one thing's for certain, in my opinion, or I shouldn't say, that, I should say it that way, but if we actually break the 13 and then get to 14, that would be, you know, an interesting move because this had the 50 period lined up. It broke 50 period and then reversed to the downside. This one had a level, a basically like a daily level, where it sort of reversed to the top end of the range, just over 12, then reversed to the downside. At this point, we have the 50 period below, so that's off the table, and then we have the daily period of 13 above. And so if this thing wants to move up and then reverse, where should it be reversing? I'm sort of telling myself, well, look, this is where the support was, right around 13, and then it offered resistance once, twice, and almost three, four times. So, I, I mean, if we do clear 13, 14 to the upside, where does, this, where does this go? Where's the next level up? You know, maybe 17. You guys, for sure, if you're trading earnings, you want to make sure that you look at the implied volatility of the move. So you can Google that and just be like, you know, implied volatility, what does the market, uh, based on options, what does the market think that the move is going to be? With Snapchat, I almost want to say that the expected move is usually 5%, give or take. Yeah, we can find that so, out. So, yeah, you can, you can find that out. You can Google it if you want. But I'll do it right now. It's, uh, you know, it's usually, uh, call it like 5%. 
So, so what does that mean? That would be that would be like a fifty cent, uh, or maybe uh, I would even say, you know, this is the range, right? So the expected move is is either up or down. Um, but Snap then today they're expecting nineteen point seven percent move. Oh, previous, okay, I'm way off. Previous Luca was downside twenty eight point one. Wow. So it's uh it's yeah. Quite so twenty percent. I was even saying I'm like five percent. No, that doesn't sound right as I'm saying it out loud here. But yeah, no. So twenty twenty percent give or take. So you know you take a ten dollar stock. Um, that's basically two dollars. So it's at eleven dollars right now. What would a two dollar move be? It would be to thirteen fifty. So I almost believe that if this thing rockets to like thirteen fifty for a sort of over under and then flushes to the downside, that's a possibility. But look, anything anything could happen. I mean, yeah. your guess is as good as mine. Uh, you know, people in the chat, let us know what you I think build, as well. I want to build the case here. I built yep. uh, the headwind case. Now here's a tailwind case, guys. Come to my screen. TikTok chief to testify before Congress in March. Um, okay, so basically what's happening here is this is kind of uh, the only bull case I can see for Snap unless they really come down with like a huge uh, subscriber or like, you know, number or whatever, like something surprising that we didn't expect. This is the case here that I see uh, is that TikTok has, uh, you know, a political henwood coming its way and who stands to benefit from that? Well, it's going to be its adversaries like, uh, you know, Google, Amazon, Meta and Snap. So. Uh, this is kind of the only thing I can see. Now, I'm assuming that this guy is going to get absolutely grilled about uh, privacy and, uh, you know, they're going to make a political case out of this uh, so they can make it a spectacle of, with China and this and that. You guys know the drill. But this uh, stands to benefit the competitors of TikTok. There's no question about that. So... Yeah, that's the only bull case I can see at the moment. Anyway, here's what I was referring to earlier. We look, usually I use Market Chameleon, and then you come down here to Snap, and then basically the previous move, it'll show you right there what it was, 28.1, uh, and this time expect 19.5. It'll also show, you, also show you the options volume, which is interesting because it shows you the level of interest that the market has with respect to this uh, stock's earnings. You see AMD there also with 178,000, and this will change throughout the day. In fact, usually by like 3, 4, 3, 3.30, uh, this is almost double the number it is now. That's just kind of my, my previous uh, observations there. Okay, back to MSGM, because I know it's all the hype. It's kind of consolidating, but this one is looking like it's coiling up like a spring and ready to go. It's just, I don't know which way it's going. If I, you know, like if I had to guess, it looks like it's bottoming out a little bit here, which is kind of bullish. Uh, it hasn't been making... Yeah, the lows really haven't been lower lows, to be honest. I'm trying to see if these wicks are accurate. I'm not going to participate, but if you guys are going to participate in this one, size in accordingly. All right, Microsoft is absolutely going here. 245.80 is the high. This has been the relatively strong one all day. Uh, this one in Tesla, of course, and uh, Amazon, but Amazon slowing back now, Microsoft making a nice move. I really wish I didn't get shaken out through that 244.65 break. This one ends up going a dollar above that continuation play. It's been, it's blasting. I mean, I wish I added back into this one. Microsoft moving, Meta doing nothing. And what's this AmGam doing? Nothing. So I've got no trades on at the moment, guys. I'll continue to watch these trades, but I will bring you the, the latest movers as they develop. Yeah, guys, a little bit of, a, I'm actually covering this XOM. Nice call out by Neil saying 16. So I like the short on XOM, but again, I just want to scalp around because it is sort of in float mode. I am not going for a move down to 114. I like the over 116 shorts and the cover back into the 50 period. Anytime XOM, this is the pattern that I kind of recognize with XOM. So it has a move in a direction or another, then it sort of fades. It tests the 50 period, makes the short look good, comes back up. This, this to me, I mean, Two things here, two things. The first, it's sold off. So first of all, I think it was a gap down, if I'm not mistaken, off earnings, and it's sold off, then reversed the whole move. So shorts are smoke, they're not involved anymore. And you know, longs are either kind of selling it here, I would imagine, or just now it goes into sort of free float mode. So that being said, no problem, I'm here to uh, kind of take those over-unders. So yeah, I do like the over 116 shorts and then kind of cover below. So that was a nice little win on that one. Snap, I am fully out of that trade now. That was a nice little short into the uh, 50 period. So cover, cover, nice little win on that as well. And uh, yeah, we'll see if we get a couple more shorts, our uh, uh, trades going. I'm looking at Apple and I'm saying shorts because I'm like, should I be shorting this? I kind of want to short this and sorry for this wick over here, but essentially what I'm looking at is the super, super choppy action, which does make sense. Don't mind this short over here. I basically took this short and I was like, 
maybe it could go to low a day, and then I got into something Ooh. else, and then I got into something else and got stressed. But MSGM, yeah, MSGM flush to the downside. And making a move. Now, is this a bear trap here, Luca? Will we shoot back up? Uh, I think it's I a trap, I don't want to touch it, man. I think it's I'm a trap. I'm not touching it. I'll tell you, here we go. We're moving back down aggressively. Where are we at? It looks like we're going to halt at 20. Uh, no, we break down below that. Okay, so this one's moving all over the place. Let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I think this is. You this know what? I get, I get a bad feeling about this. I'm for not the short touching side. it. This does not look like. Yeah. Uh, well, we're there you going go. Down. Look, it's wicking up, and no, here no, we go. This looks like we're going. Bit. This looks like we're going to go up. We're gonna, the, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a hammer. It's a hammer candle. At least it is right now, uh, which is usually bullish when you have, uh, you know, a lower. A lower wick there, I guess. We called the okay. bolt. We can't call and the bear then, trap. I'm not touching this stock. Yeah, guys, I'm I'm definitely staying away from this stock um, because now that it's in this kind of chop oh range, kill God. kill everybody type thing, it will literally <laughs> clear up both sides. And I think you do yourself justice when you take the chart and you kind of turn it sideways oh and you realize that it's like it can just go this way and then clear out, go that way and then clear out. There is no up and downs here. There is just left and rights. That's, uh, I've that's, never actually thought about doing it like that. You know, really? because when yeah. I say clearing out both sides, it's yeah, like, yeah, well, yeah. how long, short? It's like, you know, these uh, with a float like this, a lot of tape teleportation, you got to understand that your risk wow. is your size, and, and this thing is not going to give you opportunities uh, to get out. Like, when I was in this trade over here, and this is before it really got, went crazy, you know, I was in the long scalp. It kind of popped to the upside. I took a little bit of a win. Look where I punched out. Like, I didn't want to punch out at 880. I wanted to punch out at 920. Yeah. So I got out 40 cents difference. So again, guys, 40 cents difference. I would like to think that I'm not too slow, like considering I scalped like a maniac, but that was a 40 cent slip and I didn't have a stop word. I was just manually um, doing that. Shout out. So yeah, man, just be careful here. Shout out, Goliath Geo says, oh my God, another scalp from 2050 to 24, LOL. Another 2K shares, boy, man. Keep going and uh, what, that's a, a big go. win. I could just do the math on that one, and I'm pretty bad at math. So shout out to you. Good job. Uh, and, you know, hold the money now. Remember, it's like make the money, keep the money, drink the beers. Or yep. if you don't drink beers, drink whatever make else the you want to drink. Shout out to Greg right. for that one. Yeah, shout out to Gregory, uh, floor manager here. All right, Microsoft blowing through that 246 top like it is nobody's business. 246.04 is now the high of day on Microsoft. This has been the good one, guys. It's been moving up. You know, it's been wiki a little bit, so you're going to really have to give it room. I mean, this is kind of something I struggled with when I uh, when I first started trading, is I, I'd expect the, the price action to be a certain way. I wanted the price action to be within a certain range. This, this stock does not present yeah, you that opportunity. It's very that. wiki. Uh, these are one-minute candles, and look at the variance in these one-minute candles. It's a lot more than, say, something like Meta or Amazon. So this one is 244.65 to the high side, and 243.59, it's a dollar, and there's many of these along the way. So this one, you're gonna have to be super patient and you know, scale in accordingly, uh, depending on your risk perimeters. But give this one room because it does seem to have a, a bigger range per minute than these other ones. Uh, 246.06, again, the high. And I, I don't think there's any specific news here for Microsoft. Let me just have a look quick. No, nothing here that has been in the chat. So continue to watch that. That makes a nice move. Uh, let's go back and have a look at MSGM. Uh, for the moment, it's given you opportunities to the high side and the downside, but it's mean reverting uh, right back into that 23 and a half, 23-ish area. Uh, you know, that's basically where it was hovering around before. It really hasn't decided which way it's going to go. It didn't make a new high on that latest wick. The new high was made earlier at 27.60. So still within a range technically, but that 20 break, that tw uh, yeah, that, tw that descent to 20, where did it get low to? It got low to 1945. Ba barely holding above that 50 period. So if you had a dip around, you know, 20, 1945 may stop some people out if they get put a, a 50 penny spread between yeah. the entry and uh, their stop. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I honestly don't know what to think. But again, guys, I'm just going to stay away from that. But yeah, yeah if it goes uh, absolutely crazy, for sure, we will be looking at it, man. That's definitely exciting. Anytime something goes nuts like that, I get excited. I am building oh, into a phase damn. long for a dollar break to the upside. Uh, this is something that I'm not Luca, super... have a look at this one, man. Yeah. MGAM. It is moving yeah, to the it's... high side, guys. Oh, it yeah. comes at $2 area. This is the one that I was involved in earlier, and then it shot back down. I wanted no part of it at that moment. Then it reclaims VWAP here, so now it's longable. Is that a word, longable? Uh, again, right? So we break that VWAP around 144. The half dollar is no problem. It goes through like a hot knife on butter, and now we just test 190 there. Are we up to 190? Yes, the high is 190. Let's have a look at the daily chart on this, 
because we do want to get some levels and try to anticipate where we're going to encounter resistance. We know right away just by looking at this, this is a former runner. We have day wicks. Look at this. This just tells you, hey, hey, I'm a former runner. Look at me. And uh, this, is, uh, this is the case in point right here on January 6th. You have a huge wick up all the way to 246, and then we end up the day all the way, all the way back at 117. So where are we expecting resistance? We just passed it. We had that 179 area. That's done. 190 is now the high. So the other one that is glaring at me in the face is that 246 high that we made back on January uh, the 6th. We, you know, we're like 50 pennies away from that, 60 pennies away from that. So what is the float on this? We need to know MGAM. Quickly here, I'll tell you... Where are we? So 13 and a half million share float. I don't know what the short float is. I'll have a look on that in a second. But what is this stock again? I know Neil and Sean mentioned that one of them mentioned it. Mobile Global, mobile global Esports is a mobile esports company. Okay, company offers gaming and social. Okay, so we get it. We get the, the whole idea there. And uh, it's obviously a sympathy play because I'm not seeing any news. Yeah, guys, I'm a short Apple here going for a couple of uh, quick scalps. And uh, I was just mentioning, yeah, phase long. We'll see if this thing wants to actually break a dollar. Yeah, phase long, Pratt, just because, you know, it's running into a dollar. It's at 95 cents. I just figure, let me just kind of scale into this. So, like, long, long, long. Oh, now I'm basically uh, a flat. You know, this is essentially the goal, kind of scale into a dip. You know, if it, if it runs through one, I get some size, but then, yeah, obviously averaging into it. But let's see where this one goes. I mean, if it goes nowhere, no problem. I'm um, sized accordingly for it, so I'm not really too worried, but I just feel like if things are moving and then something else starts to move, I just want to be involved, even if it's uh, a little bit less size. So again, not super convicted with this. I don't really care where it goes, but if we do break a dollar, I just feel like, you know, we break a dollar, where does this thing go? Uh, maybe it goes to a dollar five, dollar twenty. Uh, and I'm looking at the daily, I mean, yeah, like the last time, like super resistance would be at like 140 to 150, just uh, looking at kind of where it bottomed out, right? So let me draw just a quick line over here uh, for the visualization. You know, that's call it a dollar fifty. If we break a dollar, where can we go? My guess would be a dollar twenty. So I don't remember what the stock was last time, but I was in a stock when it broke a dollar. And then I sold it at a dollar four, and then it went to a dollar forty. So let's see where this one wants to go. I think it's going to break a dollar. It's at 99 cents right now. Um, hope, I'm hoping that it breaks, and you know what? I, I might as well just like throw an offer out um, around a dollar twenty in case we uh, wick up to that. I uh, don't want to miss that one there. It definitely will take the win. Somebody's saying Tesla 173. Oh, and somebody else in the chat was like, "Oh, Tesla, like I'm gonna get my money back." And I started laughing, not at the person, but at myself, because I'm like, I didn't trade Tesla today, so I don't have to make any money back on it. Because uh, yeah, man, Tesla can be stressful, that's for sure. But not really too sure uh, what to think of it uh, for today. But I kind of want this a little bit higher. I think on the uh, on the daily, this is the 50 period, give or take. Or no, that's that's kind of messed up because of things. So I guess that's not correct there. But I just want to generally use this level, which is where it closed two days ago, two trading days ago, and where it opened. So that is around you know 177.50. So we're obviously not there. It's very far away. But 177.50 is super interesting level. So if we do get there, I'm gonna I'm gonna like really uh, potentially Can size because the short there. Yeah, go about ahead. your daily chart there. Did yep. you exclude after or pre-market data? so that you could see the official openings and the close, because like, there's no overlap between your wicks on that upswing there. On this? Yeah, the daily. Yeah, no, daily, I, I, don't, right? I didn't do anything. I just, I just, well, I kind of uh, like that, because look at mine. Yeah. See how mine, Oh, because you're using you the, IB. Well, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, so this one here, basically, you have like that connecting. So it, it doesn't show you where the opens and the close are, which are the more important. I would say the uh, pre-market and aftermarket are less important. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. I just yeah. key stroked into that there. Um, so yeah, covering the Apple short. I think uh, with our platform, it just uses the opening price okay, and it. the closing yeah, price. Okay. So whatever the opening price is on that day and closing you. price, uh, depending on how much data you use on it. For, for ours, I think, I literally think it just uses, um, hmm, that's a good question. I can get back to you on that one. I'll yeah, get back to you okay. on that one. But yeah, guys, so I did uh, cover the, uh, the Apple uh, uh, short there. Phase through a dollar, Prad, through a dollar. So let's see where this one goes. But for the time being, we are going to go to Big B at the big desk for European close. Hey guys, yeah, we'll uh, check out how things are wrapping up here for uh, the European session as we get some final prints coming through here for the most part. Pretty flat as we were talking about in the pre-market there to kick things off today. Down a little bit or up a little bit ahead of what is to come tomorrow with the Fed announcement. Uh, Italy faring the best 
out of all of these. I don't know why I'm surprised by that, but up 1% for uh, Italy, better part of 1% where everything else kind of flat or a little bit negative. As always, guys, make sure you take a second, hit the like and subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for that, Brendo. All right, FaZe was going here. So you know what, I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna just sit here on my hands and watch a stock uh, go without me. So I got into a little baby position here. We're gonna exploratory position just so we can keep everything uh, interesting. So I'm long FaZe, where am I long? 101s, it's back down in 97s. I'm looking for a continuation long FaZe in case you're wondering, give you an idea what to expect about this stock. FaZe Holdings, formerly B. Riley Principal, is an operator of the digital native lifestyle media platform rooted in gaming and youth culture. Okay, so it's like another kind of online gaming type play. Uh, what's the float on this baby? It's 17.7 from what I see. Uh, small, not micro, but small. Uh, so, you know, careful with parabolic movements on this. Um, all right, so I'll hang out here. Where's my out? I'm gonna let I'm gonna let this one go through the break of 96. So for breaks that 96 area into 95s, I'll let this go. Yeah, because really that's the area. I'm, I'm trying to think of where resistance is. I mean, support is at this level. I mean, you could give it to a bit more to 94. That's the original retracement area, but you don't want to give it to the midpoint there. It's got to be at the upper the upper area if if it's going to be a continuation. So I'll I'll leave this one. I'll give it to 96 if it does what it does. Uh, and then we'll participate. But Microsoft making another leg up here, 246.29. It's really going. I'm seeing Google as well starting to break through this flat top here. Have a look okay. at this Google chart. Look at this accumulation uh, at this 97.75-ish level. I want to say, yeah, 97.75, a lot of accumulation around there. A lot of stagnant highs with higher lows. So that's accumulating for a breakout. Here's the breakout, but we want to see it pass that 97.81. In fact, we would probably want to see a continuation into 98 on this one. But Google now, 0.87% of the high side, not the strongest of the bunch, but not the weakest either. Um, just let's make a note of that there. Let's flip back into this phase trade. Back at one here, so a little bit of an accumulation happening. Let's see if we can start taking the top off that 104. Maybe we'll rest here at uh, 105s uh, for an out. Luca. Yeah, guys, uh, I want to share a mistake of the day, which is the uh, CVNA trade that I had. So I was long in the pre-market because it was over the high from yesterday. And I was like, well, this thing could keep squeezing to the upside, I guess. So let's I'm go kidding. long here. And this was obviously pre-market action. So I'm in, you know, very light position, pops back to the upside, fixing my average, waited for the open. It looked really good. And then just kind of flushed. I was like, okay, no, no, no. Let me just get out of this one. Didn't flip short. Uh, still going for the long in front of 10, you know, long kind of scaling myself out, then actually breaking 10, no more trades. So now at the bottom, I go, you know what? Let me, I see people in the chat saying, yeah, CVNA, will it ever find support? I don't know, man. But anyways, I'm, I'm here at the bottom of the day or I'm close waiting. to it saying, okay, now let me short. And, uh, you know, it is, a it is a more challenging trade, just kind of sitting on the offer, uh, trying to get these fills, but essentially scaling into the short and then, you know, recycling a little bit of shares. Then goes to the 10, so I add to it, full size. Then it breaks 10, I go, okay, whatever. Maybe this thing wants to go back to the upside. So I punch out, and then where is this? It goes exactly where I thought it was gonna go, 920. So 920 would have been my best out on this thing. That was essentially what I was going for, the short, and then the fade into 920, and I was gonna cover low of day, and then 920. Uh, but in terms of where's the bottom on something like this, I mean, your guess is as, your guess is as good as mine, but you can look at the daily. It's obviously had multi-day run to the upside, squeeze to the upside. We were talking about the 850 level from before, from yesterday, uh, you know, that being a level that was so good for, for uh, a few days and then, uh, and then kind of failed, went to the downside. Then when it actually broke the 850 from yesterday, and, and sorry, I did paint uh, a little bit of painting yesterday on this, but uh, essentially, you know, 850 to the upside fails, finally breaks the 850 level like that squeeze. So again, where, does the, where can this thing go? I mean, I almost want to say, and I'm pulling up the daily just to show this, if this is first red day where it's like blow off top, open up here, and then fade back down, my target is like Holy in cow. the middle of the second candle. And so that's 880. So I do think that this could get to 880. Uh, but at the same time, if, if I was still in that short in a perfect world, I'd be covering 920. So I'm basically letting it go. <coughs> if it pops to the upside, I do want to short pops on it. But yeah, best target, uh, I, would, I would almost say 880. 
Uh, that's kind of my, my guess on it. But, you know, you would need some pop pops there to see that uh, interesting. Uh, Neil saying MGM, MGM has MGM a... MGM uh, just going, man. Yeah, where, where are we at on Look this Look at now? this. Now, we just broke the quarter dollar. I think we topped out at 228, Luca. It's been one big move to the upside. I mean, I, I really should be participating in this, but I don't want to punch at these levels. We're at extreme, so I, I'm kind of getting lucky if I get anything here. It's not part of my plan, nor do I know how to trade at these levels. It, you know, initially when volume comes in, you can punch, but volume's been going on a while. It's not my trade. I'm going to let this one go, but obviously uh, the levels are coming up. We talked about the levels to anticipate, but it bears repeating. Uh, the daily level that I'm looking at to the high side here is the January 6th level, which was 246. We're 10 pennies away from that now. So a possible area of resistance coming up. Uh, okay, so it looks like we just topped out at 44s, 49s. We already broke through it. Here comes the half dollar. Uh, could, uh, let's see. We didn't close below it yet, so I'm not really willing to make a statement on this one. Uh, yeah, we're finding a little bit of resistance here at the half dollar to be expected, but for how long? Let's see what this one does. Now up 145, 46%. Whew. Lots of FOMO not punching into this one. Yeah, man, FOMO is real. And somebody was like, FOMO, is that why you're long phase? Uh, no, this is me? a classic. No, no, for, for me. I'm uh, long phase. It's good. Yeah, we're, I'm we're printing both long. on we're it. Both yeah. long. Um, you know, for, uh, this is a classic over over one dollar, man. Over one dollar, we see where this one wants to go. Yeah. I am getting the first fill, so I'm going 04s, 10s, and then 20s. And if it goes to 50, you know, it it goes without Holy me, no problem. Uh, Jeff Ross saying exit on Pfizer. I'm assuming you're referring to your own uh, position. I am looking for a way into Pfizer and GE, but uh, you know, I was waiting for the dip through VWAP for uh, for again long below VWAP for the quick pop back. Didn't necessarily get it, which is unfortunate. No big deal, though. I'm, at, I'm kind of wondering, do I play off of short off of 44? This is a you know nice little pop and drop. If we get back there, I'm going to try shorts. Shut but I really do want it uh, closer to 44. That Ooh. would be awesome. And GE, same, same kind of situation here. Oh, sorry, GM, I should say, not GE. Uh, GM... It's um, what a surprise that was. Today. It's yeah, man. It's you know what? I, I think I like the long. I like the view up long. But let's see if I could bid. Uh, oh, and this lines up with 39 too. You know what? Let's see if I could bid just below uh, uh, 39 there. Hopefully some people have stops there and I will uh, I will take those, man. I'll take those longs. Uh, yeah, DL, absolutely. Scalp demon. Let's do this. Let's find some Ooh. trades. Things when they when they move like crazy in the morning and then they really slow down. I'm just kind of like, ah, like, I don't know. 250 what to... level Luca. Rejecting again on Amgam, man. Oh my goodness. Uh, that is the second time it has done that. For now, at, at least holding above $2, 250 is 250 exactly is where we uh, rejected off. So if you had a short waiting around there, sorry to cut you off, but I just want to, that was a nice little pivot move there on Amgam. Yeah, no, this one is, uh, it's, as you were talking, I was like, I was like, should I punch the highs? Like, is this a day to punch the highs? Like, maybe. Maybe, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, this is a little bit of a dip here. Maybe this thing's not done. I'm not really too sure. I want another test. If it gets another test of 250, we're talking some continuation here. We're yeah. getting initial rejection. That's a resistance line, a resistance level that goes back to earlier this month. Yeah, we're still in January. You know, some days are better I'm to look for fades, and then other days are better to, uh, you know, buy the high sometimes. Yeah, that's true. Um, that's yeah, true. guys, let us know what's, what you see, what's moving. Um, you know, uh, throw it in the chat. I'll look at it. I'll trade it. Sharif will trade it. Uh, definitely lots of fun here, man. Uh, somebody saying snap. Take a look again. Is it back towards the highs here? Let's have a look here. Snap is, oh, back towards that 1150. I love the 1160 short on snap. So if we, did I miss that? No, no, we didn't get there. So I'm actually going to throw an order out for uh, closer to 1160. Um, if I get the fill, I, I get the fill great. If not, no big deal. So I am getting a fill here on GM Long, just below VWAP, so that's pretty solid. Let's see if this one wants to do, uh, hold now and then bounce back. You know, target would be 39.10 and, and going into the uh, top of the range. It's very simple here. I mean, not to draw this obvious line, but it's kind of stalling out at that 39.30. This is the hour of, you know, for me, it's long below VWAP, cover above VWAP. So that's the general uh, ideology with those trades. We'll see if they want to uh, continue to uh, work there. And, GMBL uh, and go from there. Too. Uh, all right, guys. GMBL is moving, but it is 14 pennies. We don't typically trade these type of stocks. Luca and I, we usually look for like around $1. That's why we're in phase. 
uh, that one dollar is sort of that threshold. This one, it's tradable, it looks great. A lot of movement, that's a three minute chart. Let's get to the one minute. It's been one, two, three, four, five, six, looks like seven now, Red, green candles in a row. 14.49, 14.50, about to break there. It goes 14.80. This one's headed high. Uh, I got no news on this one. Let me have a look quick. GMBL, see what I can garner here. Nothing on my news blotter. What is this? Esports gaming, okay. So this is another sympathy play to M, um, M, MSGM. So again, you know, be careful with these ones. I'll tell you what the float on it is real quick. It's probably small. No, this one's bigger, 66 million float. It is sub $1 though, so you know, uh, got to trade a lot more if that, in order to make the same amount of money. But the liquidity doesn't look like to be a problem on it at the moment. So this one's going, and there's a lot that seems to be going at the moment. Now, with respect to MGAM, here's what I'm doing on MGAM. I'm going to hang out at that 250 level. I got to stop above 250. If this one wants to break it and test it again, I may want to be, I want to be part of this. Uh, and here's why. I feel like that's an obvious resistance level that people are gonna be looking to break. Now, sure, it could end up being a bull trap, but I feel like the more times we test 250, reject, test, reject, um, and then eventually break, I think that you know it gives it more, it gives a breakout more credence. At least that's the way I look at it. So uh, I'm gonna hang out at 250 on MGAM. You know, I wouldn't mind another couple of rejections off that 250-ish level. Again, because that kind of just builds up the momentum for that level. So that's where I'm sitting on MGAM. Uh, with respect to phase, it looks like phase just plummeted to the south side there, kind of came close to my profit taker. I was sitting at 110s, it went up to 109, 108s. 108s on phase? Uh, 109s like on phase. Uh, yeah, you have a better dollar cost average than I do, but I'm, I'm here at 101s. Where are you at? You're at yeah, 94s. Yeah, just uh, 94s there. Yeah. It's uh, not really too, too worried about it, but I am kind of sad that I didn't get the uh, the fill in the top side over there. But it is what it is. Shout out to whoever said I'm scalping Tesla off 173. This is a banger, man. Thank you for that one. I was looking for that over under short. I am going to continue to recycle levels. If you guys are tuning in for the first time, my name's Luca Scalp Demon. I, uh, <laughs> I love going for 50 cents and 30 gold. cents and 20 cents over and over and over again. So if you're looking at me saying, geez, why is this guy scalping Tesla for, uh, for 30 cents? It's because I'm going to try to do it 100 times right now in the next couple hours. So I will just do that over and over again. And I basically like to get into positions. Um, if it's winning, great. I will take my profits. If it's losing, I just I cut it there. So uh, yeah, that was actually a short on Tesla. The reason why, so you're probably wondering, well, why short? What makes you think short? Um, for myself, I'm always looking for mean reversions. I come in on the middle of the day. The stock is up on the day. It's hard for myself to buy here because do I, do I want to buy it here thinking that it's going to go up here? Sometimes, maybe, if I can justify it. But I do feel like large caps tend to revert back to VWAP, give or take. Uh, but again, you don't want to fight the trend too hard depending on how much it is up on the day, uh, just depending on the, the overall feel. So obviously we're going into, a, a, this is a, a huge week, still big earnings to come. Um, FOMC is coming out tomorrow at 2 p.m. We're getting that uh, uh, you know, 2 p.m. and, and 2.30 uh, press conference there. So I do, with that in mind, I do kind of feel like this is just a, this is a range day. You're going to get up moves. You can probably fade the range. There's not going to be that much aggressive buying and selling um, on names that you know aren't report, reporting earnings there. So this is uh, my logic. I basically look for uh, the weakness up over here on, on any large cap or the strength down over here. And I just want to take my scalps over and over again. So that's basically what I'm doing. Uh, Lu uh, question, Luca, is it normal to trade on instinct? Well, there's basically, in my opinion, uh, if you're talking about psychology of, of trading, um, you know, there's, there's three, uh, you know, to break it down very briefly, there's three types of trading. So one, you say mechanical trading, and this is, you know, you're building a strategy, you want to do something that's repeatable, you want to take your emotion out of it, so you do things that are very, very mechanical. So you say, if X, Y, Z lines up, I will take this trade, and I will just follow my plan very systematically. Luca. And then as, yep. You got to hear this, bro. Yeah, yeah, go. Someone Googled, uh, or not Googled, chat GPT'd what, how Cookie Monster would trade. If Cookie Monster were to trade, he might approach it with his signature enthusiasm, but also um, risk managing, risk making impulsive decisions based on whims and emotions. Cookie Monster, that's how chat GPT thought Cookie Monster would trade. I think that's hilarious. Yeah. Ask him what, what, <laughs> what, um, what Big Bird would do. Sorry to cut you off. I just wanted to, before I forgot, then that was hilarious. No, man, all, all good, all good. But uh, anyways, to, yeah, just to uh, be very brief with it, essentially, uh, you know, based on instinct, you essentially want to get to a place 
where you're discretionary and you, and you find trades that align with your playbook, but you need a lot of experience. If you just jump into trading right away and it's year number one and you're like, I'm going to be discretionary and make the right decision and be impulsive, it's just not, uh, it's not going to work because your, your, your impulse is probably more aligned with fear and greed than it is with uh, market movements and ebb and flows of, of how yeah. the market works, right? So for everybody asking that question um, or wondering that for themselves, you know, anybody who's in the chat who's been trading for, you know, five years, 10 years, you, I mean, you guys can look at Neil and Sean trading for 20 plus years. They uh, look at things, they get in, they get out, they look at levels, they just kind of feel it. That doesn't, that's not going to happen in year one, but eventually it's like anything else. Practice makes perfect. I'm watching GM. It's going to the downside here. I don't really want to let this go right now, but I kind of want to average into it just a little bit. So I'm going to get uh, a little bit more long over here. I am essentially playing off the idea that this long will pop back eventually. If we go all the way down through 38, call it 38.50, uh, like a straight line down, then that's not going to look too hot. Um, so then I'll re reevaluate that, that one. So, but yeah, I always want to give myself room to uh, kind of add to the trade. Something I tell myself as a trader, if I think this is a long level, I also have to plan for the fact that it could dip down, rip back up, and then go up. And I always kind of know that, you know, like, like <laughs> let's take even GM as an example. It's sort of showing that this is the, the top end resistance, but then it doesn't go down until it actually breaks the top, you know, does a little bit of a volume spike, then it goes down, right? So as it's coming down here, it's not really creating the bottom end of that range, but I'm also factoring the fact that it can maybe go down, go back up, go sideways, and then go back to the upside. So I always want to leave, especially for large caps, um, you know, small caps, uh, it, depending on the flow, things can move very quickly. But I always want to leave room for the, those those ads if they kind of continue to rip against, uh, just because that, that, that is the uh, the market, right? It's always searching for liquidity. If it thinks the long is good, it might try to, you know, stop everybody out who's in a long, and then we just kind of go back to the upside. So that is uh, the feel on that one. We'll uh, keep an eye on that, see where it goes. Phase is now going back down to the downside, which does line up with VWAP. I think safe to say if we break 90 cents on this, I'm just going to be fully out of that trade. This is not something that I'm going to let go against no, me because, you know, uh, Pratt's probably laughing at me thinking, this guy's long phase when you should be short off the high of $1. Uh, this doesn't look, you know, the over under $1 is essentially that, right? It goes over $1. It's great if it keeps going to the north side. If it goes back below $1 and then kind of subsides, yeah, volume is always the that. tell. You want volume to be there. So VWAP should hold. The 50 should hold. It should go back up, go up. That's a healthy pullback. If it doesn't, then, you know, I, I'm out of that trade. And again, it's not something that I'm super committed to anyways, just uh, yeah. having fun with it. So, yeah, if we break 90 cents, that'll be a paper cut for myself, which is not too bad. You guys might notice that I am short Google. And it's kind of like uh, tough here because there's so many like dark pool wicks. For anybody wondering, these are basically dark pool wicks that come in. So they're not actually, uh, you know, the price didn't actually print there. But uh, let me just kind of zoom into this one. I want to be short sure Google right now because it's just struggling to get to the 98 level. And so 98 has not broken to the upside. And we've had so many pops that you would think would go to the upside, especially with the market kind of flying to the upside. So the fact that Google is not ripping to 98, it hasn't ripped to 98, it hasn't went through 98, I just want to be short, and then at any point that this flushes to the downside, uh, I will take uh, you know profits. Something to note on Google for anybody watching it, 97 gave three good bounces off the morning before popping and now barcoding. So I don't know what to think. It's pretty light now doing some barcode action, but if we get down to 97, I, I do like that 97 area for a first potential long bounce. And then if it fails and goes through, I might flip short at that area. But it's, uh, it's so flat, man. It's not doing anything. There's definitely other names that you can be involved in. Um, this is where, you know, if the market's showing you that it's doing nothing, even though I'm jumping in and out of trades, I understand that, you know, the way that it looks right now is very different than the way that it looked in the morning. And so I'm going to size down and, and manage accordingly. And, you know, instead of going for 30 cents, maybe I got to take 10 cents, right? And, and just kind of uh, go from there. So it is what it is, man. You know, the, uh, uh, you got to take what the market gives you. That's what it means to be a day trader. Uh, MPO asking, please talk about dark pool wicks. So essentially, for anybody that doesn't know, uh, this is, uh, this is the, uh, the level two. This is, these are the lit venues, right? And so lit venues can be owned by exchanges. They can be independent. You can route orders to any of the lit venues. Um, just ask your broker for that, for that information. There's also something called dark venues, so dark pools. Dark pools, they do not show the size. And so you might see, you know, sevens and fives. These are lots. And so it's like 100 shares, 500 shares, 1,000 shares. But if I were to route my order to buy a stock to a dark pool, I would be hiding that order from the lit venues. I'd be hiding it from the market. And, uh, you know, it could still get hit at that price, 
But again, you know, it's uh, it's just hiding that order, and this is where institutions trade when they want to kind of trade big big orders. Um, you know, like I need to sell 500,000 shares of Amazon today. Let me throw that in a dark pool and see, you know, if, if I can get the fill over there. In terms of dark pool wicks, what I was loosely referring to is just these wicks. Dark pools do not have the 24-hour reporting requirements, so they can actually print this. Um, and this could be from three days ago, right? And it's just like a print that happened over here. And so our system is very efficient. And so essentially what happens is it picks it up and it prints it on the chart. If you're wondering if you're with Day Trade the World how to fix that, you essentially click this little box, chart data editor, and you just go there and you find that and you fix it. So yeah, it can be a, it can be a pain sometime, but again, you know, as long as execution stays uh, pretty fluid, which I am happy with, um, you know, uh, definitely can't complain there. Not sure if your broker shares that. Not sure if IB uh, uh, does uh, that from time to time. But yeah, if you're ever wondering, no, um, just the know, 8 a.m. Um, just the 8 a.m. The uh, institutional prints that yeah, come yeah, in. Yeah. All right, guys, I got into a baby long here on MGAM at 211 for this continuation break. I'm going to get out of it if it breaks $2. Uh, so I've got to stop waiting around that 198 area. If it breaks that, I want no part of it. It'll, it'll be a move down. In fact, I'll be looking short on this one. But MG, MGAM is not SSR yet. So uh, we can take this one short if you're able to locate... Uh, shorts on it but for the moment i'm gonna stay long but you know it is setting up for a possible it looks like a, a nice little move down maybe a retracement to view up around 190 187 but if it holds to then i want to look to the long side and then i'm going to add like i was talking about this through the 250 break uh, i'm getting i thought this would continue so we'll see how this one does everything's set up the way it needs to so i can kind of move on and not look at it again microsoft making another little move back up uh, close here, it kind of consolidated a little sideways, a few red candles uh, in there, hovering around 246, 246.38 is a high, we're at 16, so this one continuing to look like it's more upwardly bound than the other ones. Uh, the ES also near highs, uh, not too far off that, for the ES March contract that is, 40.58 is where we're at now, 40.61 and a half is the high. So continuing to be closer to the highs than we are the lows. That was kind of the opposite story from yesterday where we we're consistently near the lows and uh, not near the highs. We broke yesterday's high, by the way, uh, earlier on. Forgot to mention that, that that high was at 40, 41. That's a high we made. Yeah, that was like the highest point we got to yesterday uh, after the bell anyway. Let's just double check that real quick. Yeah, so this is after the bell. No, that's not accurate. 4075, sorry guys, uh, it's a mistake on my part. So 4070, 4077 was yesterday's high. So um, 4061 is today. So we technically we have a lower high. Still, you know, it's a little bit bearish. I don't know why you want to do that information. All right, MGAM, I'm out. It breaks $2, so I want no part of this one. Now I'm actually thinking short if this one can actually break below that 190, uh, break, break below VWAP, I might be interested in this one to the short side. So it's got a lot of room to come to the downside. It's up 100%. So if we size into this one accordingly, this one could be good. There it goes. Now it's going to come right down into that 190 area. I just want to make sure that VWAP is the same on both charts, 188 on this chart. And we're, yeah, 188. So they're perfect confluence there. Let's see if we get that bounce though off VWAP. Let's see how it acts around there. But this one, interesting, still giving you directional movement, whether it's to the high side or the downside. That's how we're going to trade this and see what is up. All right, what's the chat up to? BBAI, Dr. Crusher saying, let's have a look quickly at BBAI. That is Big Bear Holdings. Okay, so this one's up nicely. Yeah, 7.5% on the day, kind of uh, making, stair-stepping its way up. A nice little pattern, uh, a calm mover, calmer-ish, I guess. There was a, this area here uh, where you had that big move up from 370 to 445. Bit of a top topping tail candle there. Nice retracement down, but a continuation back up. So the trend is holding and holding above VWAP. So it's good. You're able to get some of these dips. BBAI looks good. It's definitely not uh, the, the sexiest play in the, na in, the, in the game right now because uh, there are some big movers to the high side. Uh, what's GMBL up to? So GMBL is kind of taking a siesta a little bit from, the, from its move to the high side. Let's see what it's up to. Remember, Michael Noss talked about this last week. If you joined us Friday in the morning show, he said, you buy the frowny, uh, buy the happy faces and you sell the frowny faces. And this was that kind of move. If you broke this 14 cent area on GMBL, you flushed a nice two pennies. Obviously, that's a lot for a 14 penny stock. Um, what kind of percentage move is that? I'd have to do the math. But anyway, nice little move back down now below VWAP. Let's see if it retraces up to 13 and a quarter and, uh, or rejects off there. So 
Lots of uh, these small cappers moving as the, you know, the ES and the NASDAQ kind of consolidate sideways and some of these big cappers, uh, they go into hibernate mode at least for this midday portion of the trading day. Yeah, guys, uh, some things, some uh, stuff is in hibernation, um, but uh, it's, uh, it's all good, man. It's all good. But uh, I'll tell you what, though, we're going to go to, and uh, I, love, I love the saying, man, Big B at the big desk, the legend over there uh, with Happening Now. Hey guys, yeah, we'll get you caught up on what's happening so far as we head into the lunch hour. Uh, it is still a green board to show you, but overall, coming back a little bit in a few areas. I'll uh, talk about that in a sec, but uh, 0.62 right now for the S&P 500, 0.2 just for the Dow. Uh, it was up about half a percent at one point so far today. Uh, the Russell 2000 I mentioned early on this morning was showing all kinds of relative strength. Look at that now, 1.75 versus 0.7. And 0.75, the NASDAQ still in charge, 0 0.9, 0 0.84. Little bit of a dip, though, on the uh, 100 specifically back to the downside after a uh, pretty good rebound off that early weakness. If you were with us early on this morning, uh, we got caught up on GM, Tesla, and Spotify, to name a few. Really good report from both GM this morning and Spotify. Tesla, meanwhile, uh, letting everyone know, or Elon did anyways, that they're going to increase their costs uh, coming over the next couple of years. There's GM still holding up nicely here, 7% to the upside, tag 39 on that last uh, move back to the downside. Spotify, yeah, day highs right now, four spot, up 12% off earnings. Thank you for that one. Uh, yeah, Spotify day high up 12%. You know, who would have thought? I mean, I guess I should have. I, uh, I did subscribe to them, and, uh, you know, now all of a sudden uh, profits are rolling in. I'm pretty sure, guys, I signed up for Spotify at some point down that, over man. here. Uh, just saying, just saying, just throwing it out there. I, when they were at $70 a share. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to mention the fact that, you know, I signed up and then obviously uh, they're better up over there. But uh, maybe I should have bought the stock, but I didn't. Uh, yeah, man, uh, um, I'm noticing that I'm finally getting the Google fill there. So, yeah, Google is barcoding, and I know Google would love nothing more than to understand all the barcodes that you sign over there. But, uh, yeah, this is not, this is pretty... Uh, pretty lackluster it's it's definitely not uh you know it's just kind of going up and down nothing too too crazy but again with the fact that 98 to the upside is not breaking i just want to be short up over here and then i'm just waiting on the bid and then eventually i get the fill and i just take my money and move on so pretty happy with that one tesla is uh yeah sort of dumping to the to the downside just a heads up i'm going for a, a in front of vwap bounce play just under 170 so i do think that it wants to run to that 170 level and print the level uh, that's what I'm expecting in the next few minutes. I'm actually bidding just below for the break of 170. I want the long, and then if it flies back to the north side, I'll take that win. So that's what I'm looking for on that one. Amazon, I'm noticing that I am getting the long on this as well. This is a flush through VWAP, so I'm essentially long through VWAP, and now I'm waiting for a pop back up. I just want to, you know, take longs below VWAP, get, get out above VWAP. So we'll see where this one goes. Got to hold on to it for the time being. XOM, it's, I don't absolutely love this. I was sort of going for it, kind of gave a, you know, wick off bottom, wick off bottom. I was trying to go for it the second time, but now it's just not really doing anything too, too exciting. So I think the XOM trade, I'm not really too worried about it, but I am going to, uh, you know, offer out at like 115. Like I'll, I'll take, you know, if it wants to give me five cents, so be it, I'll take that. Um, but yeah, we'll see where Amazon wants to go. I am giving myself room to add to this. You know, if it keeps flushing to the downside, let's see where the market is. Market is coming into that 40, 50. So Again, Amazon did this the first time, and I was scared to hold it. Now, this is a time that I should have held it. Maybe now is the, I'm sized differently. I'm not really too worried, but I do want to I wanna add to that. So let me just, uh, yeah, let me just see if I can get some more over here. Okay, great. So if this thing wants to rip back, I'm not selling it for break even. I'm going to try to hold if it does pop back. Maybe eventually it gets a 50-period test. It's just a matter of time. So, you know, the first time it was better, I will admit that. Uh, the size that I have now is not the same size that I had the first time. So I'm not even really in a state of panic. I'm just kind of chilling, waiting for something to happen here. I'm noticing GM is now actually inching its way back to the upside. So I sort of added, added again. I'm just waiting for this to curl back. I am going for VWAP and above covers. Uh, we'll see if that one wants to uh, work. Yeah, there, there we go, man. Amazon back to the upside. So let's see where this one wants to go. I just feel like Amazon's trying to bamboozle me. It's like, you know, you got me once, but not the second time, man. Not the second time. Paul saying MGAM to 100. And let me guess, this thing's at like $3. Oh, no, man. It bounced, Is that $2? Off, it bounced <laughs> off VWAP. But it had a nice little VWAP bounce there, which I, you know, I was kind of looking for, but I was getting that Spro, Luca. So, uh, you know, got to prioritize here. 
Um, yeah, 188 is where it bounced off, but I'm not really convinced this one's really headed to the high side yet. Show me something. In fact, I'm kind of looking southbound here. If this breaks VWAP, you know, I may be interested into the south side. Yeah, it's XRM not like MSGM. It's not short sale restricted. So it should be able, you should be able to punch into this one a bit. Uh, you know, more easily than uh, the MSGM where well, you're going to have to wait for an uptick. So uh, MSGM also made a nice little move there off that, I want to say, double bottom there on the one minute candle here at 18 and a quarter, rocketed up to 22, broke 22, actually got up to 22.50, hovering around that 22 area though. Yeah, this one, it's rangy. I mean, obviously we're talking dollars at a time here, but it's it's rangy. It's got a it's got a trend and find uh, some sort of consistent movement. Otherwise, it's just super risky to get into. Um, I talked about AI earlier. This is a bit of a slower mover. It is up to up 26% on the day. Uh, you know, I was interested in this one off some sort of retracement. It hasn't really given you. Uh, a nice retracement opportunity. It hasn't come back down to the 50. It hasn't come back to the VWAP. Obviously, there's been areas of retracement here. You had a three times what? So 15 minutes of a uh, retracement, but that's not off any specific level. So AI is still a good opportunity north, but just not sure how to get in or where to get into that on AI. Uh, some of these big tech plays just kind of like had bigger red candles here as a result of the market kind of making another little down move, but we're still near day's highs, 40.55 and 40.61 and a half is day's highs on the March ES contract. Let's see wow, what people are Tesla, up to. Man. Spotify, someone's saying Spotify high of day. I'm just going to look at that one quick before you look at wow, uh, Tesla. SPOT. We know this one was an earnings winner from this morning. They had more premium subs than anticipated. Yeah, this one's just going, guys. 112.44, now it's up 12, almost 12.5% 12 on the day. It gave you a bit of a double bottom here after the the bell, you had that big move down right at around 940, and then that same level got tested again, I wanna say around 1030, so about an hour apart, and that was probably your best entry of the day. Uh, if you didn't get in in the pre-market, now this one's moving to the high side. I bet you I could sit on, the, I could sit on this one all day, and it'll probably continue to move. I, I don't think this one's done its, uh, its move here. So I'm gonna have a look at spot. Obviously, I'm gonna have to size in accordingly on this one. It is a bigger, bigger, uh, bigger price, Luca. Yeah, guys, uh, Tesla, <laughs> Tesla, 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 um, dip down below that 170. I was sitting there and uh, I'm like, wait a second, why am I not long Tesla? It's because the low was what, 92s? Like, come on, man, that's, uh, that, that's uh, something special, man. But yeah, so I am essentially canceling that Tesla bit. That's the move I was going for. And again, it's not a science in terms of where you put your orders. It is really just an art. You want to kind of finesse it. You want to obviously actively watch. And, and you know, if you're battling for price, this is digital warfare, man. That will happen. Uh, you know, it's funny when I, Sean on the morning show was talking about this and he was like, oh man, like this and the order was over here and then that happened. And I'm in the back and I caught that. I just started laughing because I'm like, oh yeah, digital warfare, baby. Uh, <laughs> these bots, they ain't messing around. So again, that was the play that I was looking for. It's a very specific, you know, bounce through 170 and then I would have already been out of the trade. So I am no longer looking to uh, uh, take that fill anymore. Things have changed. This is new information that comes to light. You can change your mind, man. You can change your mind in real time. That's basically the market. I am sort of adding to this um, Amazon long with the intention that if it, it should like rip through 102.50 and then that's, that's good for the up move. But if for whatever reason, like see how it's like riding trend, so it moved down, ride trend, moves down again. If it rejects this and then goes lower, that is not good for the long. So I don't actually think it's gonna reject. I think we're actually gonna go back to the north side and I got a decent average on it, so I kind of want to hold on to it. Um, but yeah, just a heads up there, basically leg down, consolidate, another leg down, a little bit of consolidation. It, you know, are we going to get a third leg down or is this now the below VWAP money fills and then we rip back to the north side? So pretty happy with that. Uh, gonna gonna see where that one goes. And yeah, going back to Tesla just very quickly, I do, I, I mean, I don't love, I, sorry, I don't hate the longs. I just, I, at this point now, I, I need the long at like closer to 169. So um, yeah, we'll see where that wants to go. Uh, we'll see how it acts at 169.69. Maybe that's a like maybe that's a level. Um, for whatever reason, it wicked up over here. And what was this high? That high was literally close to 169.69. So yeah, we'll see what happens on that one. Yeah, Amazon moving back to the upside. So I think we're pretty good on this one. Going to basically nurse the trade and try to scalp some out. Google is uh, barcoding, but back towards the high. So I'm going to take another short on this look at one the and basically I mean, try I know to your get charts nice distorted. There, you can't really see, but look at this. 
I mean, here, I'll bring it for the for the viewers to see as well. Look at the accumulation at that level. I know, it's just like super. It, it's super accumulating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? It's, uh, um, yeah, I'm just basically going to take fills and uh, in and outs. Yeah, yeah, That's uh, I think that's a good call there. If you don't know which way this one's going to break out, that's a safe bet. All right, guys, um, I'm in this MGAM short. All right, I, I like it. Um, I get that it really hasn't broken VWAP. Uh, but it is setting up, in my in my estimation, for short. So you know, it's how much is it going to cost me to find out? It's going to cost me ten pennies. All right, I'm going to give this one to the break of two ten. Uh, but I'm looking for this one maybe to squeeze short into that 170 area. Uh, there does seem to be an area of uh, support around there, former resistance, the peak right there, 168, 170ish area. We'll see what this one does. I mean, obviously, it could start pumping right back up. It is 96 percent up on the day so let's go ahead and put that stop in now uh this is a quarter position too so it's you know we're going to scale into this one um in case you know <laughs> it does blow us out to the high side let's go ahead and put that out and we're going to put 213 there we go so we got that stop set up and we're going to wait for it to make its move let's bring in the side chart here and see what's popping off on some of these uh Ones that we've been following, I really want to punch into Spotify, man. I, but it's just punching in at high days. It just goes against my rules. But these are the this is the kind of stock that can just pump all day because you know some big money is getting into this after hearing about the earnings or liking what they see in, in terms of uh, guidance. And so you know the, this one, the buy button, the buy algo will be on all day, and you can probably just ride that wave. But you don't know when that when that's going to get shut off, and that's always kind of the uh, the concern there. So. I, I'm keeping an eye on spot. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to get into this one, but I do like it to the high side. Uh, what's uh, what are people asking here? Phase at 83 kind of got off that one ever since we, uh, we left it. You know what? Let's go ahead and do this. Wow, spots already gone up 61 cents since the last time I wanted to punch into this. Okay, so let's take that out. Let's go like this. Okay, so then we're in the spot and we're gonna see what happens on this one. MGAM just back quickly here, uh, coming close to that $2. So kind of bouncing a bit of a double bottom here, brewing possibly on VWAP. So I don't wanna take too many entries and exits on this one. Even if it's a quarter position, I don't want to, to get cut up. But Classic if you know this X1. breaks 210 and we start breaking 223, I've still got that resting order above 250 to go long, despite the fact that I'm short at the moment. That resting order for the break of 250, that, that's still there, that still applies, because that's a, a completely different area of resistance. But see what this one does. Let's not uh, take it out before it's due. The chat, what's the chat? Phase at 83, yeah, that's the one I was gonna look at. All right, let's have a look here, phase. All right, so on my chart here, the 200 period moving average is at 83 cents, but this one's stair-stepping down, so to me, it looks like what I want uh, MGAM to be, which is you know the break of VWAP, the sideways move, and the move down. This one actually materialized that way. I tried to take it long on a bounce off VWAP. It didn't work, uh, but MGAM is a lot stronger than phase. MGAM is up 100%. Phase is up 18% now, 17.5%. So not a fair comparison between these two, but I, I don't have a trade on this one. Maybe a retracement to VWAP, I, I couldn't tell you. So um, what do we go? Nice flush back on MGAM there, so rejecting that pop. Now it's really got to break below VWAP and show me that the sellers are going to step in here and break through that 190 and that 188 level. I think it bounced off 188 last time, but it's accumulating here at VWAP uh, with lower highs, not necessarily lower lows. So I'm, I'm liking my chances, but this could go either way. All right, people saying sober in the chat. S-O-B-R is going. That is sober safe. Let's have a look here. I know this one takes a minute to load on my platform. I'm not sure what that is all about. But let's have a max. Let's maximize it here and have a look. All right, any day chart? There we go. Okay, so this one flying to the high side, 158. There, it's making a new high. This is a three-minute um, chart. So the volume really starting to step in here. Look at that increase in volume. We're getting. Uh, this three-minute candle has half a million shares already, and we, we're not done it yet. Let's have a look at the one-minute chart. Hopefully, it doesn't take too long to load. It looks like it will. So bear with me here, people, as this one loads. Come on, sober. Sober up. Yeah, guys, just heads up. So Amazon's kind of flushing to the downside. So I took some out at VWAP, so can't complain with that. Now I'm just kind of adding back in this bottoming range here. I don't necessarily believe that the market is going to roll over and sell off uh, a lot we are getting sort of that little bit of a dip and then reclaim. So this lines up with the uh, the long that I have here. We'll see basically risking off 102. I mean, if we do drop down, 
closer to 102, then eventually the 102s are going to print there. So we'll have to revisit that one and see what happens next. Uh, Tesla, not really too sure what to think, man, but that long, that was great. So I do really want the, uh, the VWAP uh, kind of long if we can actually get back there, but we'll have to revisit that and see what happens next. Uh, GM's actually moving to the upside now, so I am basically paying myself as it moves back to the upside and uh, going for 39.10 uh, as well. Let's see if it wants to actually get up there. And Google, Google not doing anything. Meta, I did get into a long on Meta. This is basically low of day. Uh, sorry, not low of day, but uh, it's barcoding, not doing anything too spectacular. But uh, it is showing that it wants to, you know, print, be wop, print, be wop, want print, brutal. print, print. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. But you know what? It's no problem, man. It's no problem because if this wants to print, be wop, I'll take the money, we'll take man. The so demon, if this wants baby. to run to the upside, yeah, man, give me, uh, give me my wins as they come. I'm pretty happy with that one. And uh, looking for the uh, Apple long closer to 143 as well. If this dips down into 143, I'm going to take a long right over there, hoping for a bounce play back up. Uh, yeah, just going for 15 cents. I don't know if you guys heard me talking to myself saying classic XOM, classic. <laughs> I get long. I go, you know what? I'm not even feeling this. Let me just get long. If it get, It's probably going to go down to here, and then I'll get long again. I literally punch out the bottom, and that was at, that, it was at this moment that all the bots were like, got him. <laughs> and then they're like, let's go back to where he thought yeah, it was going to go. Um, so, yeah, I'm basically telling myself, don't get back in. Like, that, I should have gone back in here, maybe. But, uh, yeah, maybe I should have just added to it. So, I mean, it is what it is. What, what can you do? Uh, what can you do when you live in a shoe? Not much. Get crushed. But uh, that's, that's, that's all funny. good, man. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't overcommitted to that one, so not too, not, uh, too worried about it. And um, Comp SRX, I see you. Maybe Luca can add this to, uh, um, you know, my, my list of sayings. When it's slow, don't go. Meaning don't trade. Yeah, Whoa, yeah, that's maybe. That's basically a, a move, a, a variation of your volume as a tell. Yeah, yeah. When it, when it's, so what is that, Luke? Uh, when, when it's slow, it's slow don't, go. don't go. I gotta, yeah, I gotta remember no that. volume. When it's slow, don't go. I'm writing that down somewhere because that's, uh, that's good there. Yeah, when it, trademark yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Guys, I'm getting uh, uh, the top fill there on GM as well. So now just waiting for the, uh, at this point, you know, scaling out, uh, basically add, 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 out, out, out. And I'm going to see if I can actually get uh, towards the 20s, like 19. So, yeah, you got to be patient with it. Uh, things kind of go down, they go up, they go up, they go down. So, yeah, as long as you are patient with uh, the moves. As Amazon uh, comes back up here, I'm going to uh, get some out of that as well. Uh, just kind of scalp this, this area. Yeah, if we touch the 50 period, that'll be probably my final out if I have any trades left. Um, you know, I get long, and I do want it to rip back to the north side. But obviously, I don't know what's going to happen next. I'm just basically going with, going with the flow of whatever happens here. I know uh, some people were asking before about XOM. Yeah, I'm, I'm not in it no more. So, uh, yeah, XOM, do your thing, do whatever. If it goes back to 116, I'll try the uh, uh, maybe the over-under short again. We'll see if that one wants to uh, come to fruition there. But, yeah, for sure, uh, Tesla watching for the uh, the VWAP bounce there. And um, I don't know if Pfizer is going to give another dip by. I do like the Pfizer VWAP long. So we'll see if this thing wants to actually dip in. And the reason I like it is because as it was kind of curling into VWAP, it didn't actually flush through it. So it's like it kind of just held this general area. So if we can actually get to VWAP, I, I really kind of like that long there. So yeah, 43.30 is basically where I'm eyeing. We'll see if this thing wants to actually get down there and uh, give me a fill. If not, so be it. Uh, on with the net. On to the next, man. On to the next. I know Sharif was talking about Microsoft before, saying it was making mm -hmm. high a day. I uh, don't really know what to think with this one, but I kind of feel like the long is pretty good after it's like consolidating here. But these, every, every large cap that I'm looking at right now is in this weird area where if you do, uh, if you do the dance, just uh, do understand that it is in uh, a weird area. So yeah, may, wait for super key levels that you really like, and then you know take the trade if, if it's a part of your playbook. Uh, for myself, I'm kind of like dancing around in these uh, interesting areas, and I know that. So I'm sized accordingly, not really too worried, and uh, we'll see what happens next. All right, guys, I'm in the Spotify long. Uh, we're long 69s. I think we're printing 90s. I, I'm sitting at, uh, I'm sitting here for a profit taker through the break of I think 1310. So let that one materialize. I'm also in this M gam along. We get, we can, we're continuing to get accumulation at VWAP. The only thing is though, we're above VWAP, which is bullish, and that doesn't bode well for me because I am long. Yeah, we could get a flat bottom breakdown. We're getting some downward movement, but it's being met with a lot of buying, uh, especially I believe at that 190, 188 level. It's having a hard time breaking through there. This is up 95%, so very strong stock. It, l let's see who can win that battle. As I say this, the market just made a new high. It's continuing to print newer highs now. 40, 62, 75 now. <coughs> Excuse me, on the March ES contract. 
Likewise, you see that bull move on the majority of these stocks. I wanna say Microsoft, Google, Tesla and Apple all had nice moves. You saw anemic moves here on Meta and Amazon. They don't really respond. They've been, well, Meta's been weak all day. Amazon kind of had its move and it's been trending to, to the downside, but you had a nice little pop there. The market definitely continuing to show you that it's more upwardly bound, at least for the moment, um, as it makes new highs there. All right, M, back to MGAM here. We're, another, um, basically, Another turning point here at 190, again, is holding. Let's see if we can break through that level. We've been met with a lot of buying at these levels. So I'm looking for that breakdown. Quickly back to Spotify. Spotify shooting down here, a retracement on Spotify. We're gonna have to buy that dip as I'm continuing to think that this one is more bullish. So let's go ahead here and punch in. I'm gonna take that dip or we don't get filled because the, so let's go up, there we go. So we get that ad there and we're gonna continue to see what this one does. Funny enough, the market goes up, Spotify goes down. Uh, it was you know, due for a retracement though. It's been very aggressively to, to the high side here the majority of the day. So you've gotta have a bit of a reprieve. The Hayes record sending a 199 super chat saying 10K likes, Sean and Neil. No, I'm not gonna even read that out. Uh, so we'll just uh, yeah, thank you for the super chat. Uh, but uh, yeah, thank you for that. Hayes Records, you know better. You're, you're a long time um, member in the chat, always uh, seeing you out there. So shout out to the Hayes Records there. Thank you for the super chat. Now back to Spotify, we get that dip and pops up a little bit nicely here into that uh, 112 high 60s. We could be getting some 70s here soon on spot, so let's see how this one does. I think this one is still good to the go. There we go, MGAM flushes below. So we wait for that flat bottom breakdown. We get it, let's cover a little, oh, um, that's gonna be an ad. Let's cover a little bit here, there we go. So we get that covered through the flat bottom break. Now let's wait for this one to continue to go down. I'm seeing a possible area of resistance again at that 168, 170 area. That happens to be the peak of this little ascent here. And you gotta assume that you may be met with some support around there. So let's go ahead and have another resting uh, profit taker. Let's go ahead and sit in front of 170s. We'll sit out 171s. We'll see how she goes there. But everything looking all right, everything looking good, my man Luca, and uh, we're in a couple of trades, we're printing on both. Yeah, man, definitely uh, definitely exciting. Just kind of uh, took took a little bit of profits along the way on, on a few of my trades there. Now I'm pretty light on the uh, positions. You know, Amazon, the, the 50 period is rejecting, so I basically like spammed out of that one. Still holding a little bit, but now, you know, if it, I don't think I'm gonna add to it anymore. I'm just gonna watch this general level to see where does this wanna go. Does it wanna hold? Is this gonna be a triple bottom and reversal? and then break 50 period and then back to the upside or not. Not really too sure uh, what's gonna happen there. I see somebody saying, uh, uh, Luca, feeling foolish for not getting Tesla at 163. Do you think we see that level again? I, uh, yeah, man, nothing goes up forever. Nothing goes down forever. And I do feel like, I mean, not today, not today, but I assume you're just asking just in general. And thing is with Tesla, so this is, you know, post split all the action. Obviously going towards 100, starting the year at 100, and now it's up 70%, right? So we did run a poll, what do you think is gonna be better, Tesla or uh, Meta? And I did choose Meta, but I did not think Tesla, if you told me by the end of January, Tesla's gonna be up 75%, I would say uh, no way, man, there's no way. But yeah, here we are back at this, uh, this general area. But did you see the guy that, um, I mean, I don't wanna promote this kind of behavior, but did you see the guy that mortgaged his house? Oh yeah. You saw yeah. that? Always, yeah, man. And it's, bought the uh, dip, and he's like absolutely uh, cleaning up. He's up 900k on the trade. That's that's obviously wild, man. that's not kind of the, the that's not the kind of thing we want to promote, or the behavior. But the guy obviously, you know, he he had some conviction there, man. Guy printed a lot of money. He I bought the dip on that. He's what does he have? 90,000 shares. Yeah, I, I have no something idea. Something ridiculous like that. Yeah. Fact check me, guys, in the chat. Uh, if you guys heard that story, I think it went around yesterday. Uh, how to saying, Sharif, you missed the AI dip. I mean, I'm looking at it, dude. Uh, spare house, yeah, I don't yeah. really, I mean, it didn't come down to any of my levels. I'd have to base it on price action, and there's just not enough price action at this level recently for me to, to feel comfortable. It didn't make its way down to 20. It's stopped at some random number, 2020, where to come down to 2013. I mean, wh how am I supposed to get that level? So, I mean, unless it's going to come down to some sort of specific level that I can you know, know ahead of time or try to plan for it, then I mean, I don't have a trade on this, but it's obviously strong. 
you could kind of make the same case for me for Spotify, but Spotify, I feel like there's a bigger bull case for that because, you know, a lot of bigger money might be going into that AI. I don't know. I don't want to say this. I'm, I have no, no empirical evidence to support this, but I feel like this is more retail trader oriented rather than, uh, you know, rather than big money institutional oriented. You know, some of these bigger monies, they want to be in some of the safer plays and Spotify, I mean, especially with good user growth, looks like a safer play. Anyway, printing on Spotify, love that average down. Uh, giving us a real good opportunity to, to adjust our cost base here. Now I'm looking for a break of 13. Um, we'll have to wait and see if that one materializes, but Spotify ends up being decent. All right, MGAM here again, retracing back to that, my entry level. I was able to take a little piece through that uh, 180 break, but I'm not gonna change anything about my stop. If this one breaks 210, I want no part of it, but the thing is, I've gotta adjust my stop because my stop was for the previous amount. So let's go find MGAM here. There we go, and we're gonna cancel that one. We're gonna enter a new stop. It's gonna be through 210. Uh, it's gonna be at 211 again, and we'll cover everything. Say we'll give it to 13. There we go. So we got our stop set on that one, and we're gonna wait and see what it does, Luca. Yeah, guys, I am uh, wondering if I should just try to get this long here going. Uh, huh? Okay, we're gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try this here. We're gonna see where this one uh, wants to go. Uh, MSGM, I'm basically going to give this a very, very tight leash. It is just basically at the 50 period right now. It rejected once, twice, three times maybe. But at this point, if we do go, I mean, maybe there's, there's some upside to be had here. So if it goes through 20, I will just be out of that trade fully. Um, but if it wants to go to the upside, then uh, yeah, man, let's see, uh, let's see where this one wants to go. So uh, yeah, I got the position now. And maybe I lose in the next uh, one millisecond, you know, obviously a uh, flow like this. Uh, anything's possible there. But... Uh, not really too worried. Your size is your risk. So uh, I'm willing to give it a dollar. Uh, the spread is like 30 cents, ladies and gentlemen. 30 cent spread. Um, yeah, do what you want with that information. <laughs> I don't know what else to get into, man. This is a uh, meta. I had the chance to get out over here, and I don't know why. Maybe I, I forgot to like put an order. I'm not really too sure what happened there. But then it just kind of flushed to the downside. So I was like, okay, I guess I'm just going to get out of this. But it's just barcoding, man. So yeah, again, I am uh, uh, in chill mode, size down. I'm looking at Amazon, it's now going for that 102. I'm not gonna get out at 102, but I am gonna take along uh, through 10, uh, you know, if it breaks 102, goes to the downside. I'm gonna try to take along, um, like down below 102 for them to rip back to the north side. So we'll see, uh, if, that, uh, we'll see if that wants to happen there. All right, guys, um, just wanna mention this. So we're a subscribed based chat only meeting. In, in case you want to engage with us, ask us to cover any stocks for you, have a look at this, or discuss anything with us when we speak about it, you got to be a subscriber. So hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and uh, send it to your friends and family because that's really the only way we grow. That's how we show up um, on the YouTube page. So any, any benefit we get, obviously we give back to you in the form of content improvement, and you guys know the drill. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed, and share with your family and friends, guys. All right, so here is what we're doing. We're on MGAM. We're still doing the same game here. Now, I feel that this probably is a better long at this point, unless it makes a lower low. Uh, so I'm, I adjusted my stop, you guys know, back to that 211 area, but I feel this one is gonna be kind of like a bear trap where we break, break below VWAP here, uh, to initiate all the shorts and then we rock it to the high side. Uh, we saw that today on um, MSGM, we saw that bear trap where it went to the downside, rocketed right back to the upside. So a lot of money flowing around these stocks and um, you know, basically be careful. Uh, I tried to get another addition here on my Spotify short, but the spread is so wide on the stock, I was unable to fill, even though look at that, look how much it went lower than my order. Uh, my order sitting at 25s, that went down to 11s and I still didn't get filled. So maybe I'll get filled on this other way down, but I definitely wanna add to that position for the move up. Those are all the trades I have at the moment, but um, what do we got here? We got some good stuff. I, I like this Google trade, especially if it goes into the afternoon. Look at this flat top here. This one looks like it's coiling, coiling up and ready to go. Yeah, if, any, if the market really gets going to the high side, and I don't know what would get the market going, to be honest with you. We don't really have any new catalysts coming in, but if, if it does, I want to be part of that Google. It's kind of the opposite 
uh, feeling that I have from Meta on any weakness in the market. I want to be all over Meta to the downside because it's been below VWAP and coiling in the completely the opposite way that Google is coiling, where you have that really tight range. You saw Luca trade that range. Uh, he's skilled enough to do that. I mean, that's just not my forte, but there's quite a bit of range to be had, 147 and a half here to 148 and a half. So a dollar range if you're able to play that. So we'll have a look at these. We'll have a look at some more at the small cappers, big cappers are all moving, but Brendo is at the big desk with volume leaders. Hey guys, yeah, let's get you caught up. Quick update on uh, what is moving around as far as volume leaders this afternoon. A ton of volume being done. Let's uh, get right into it here. This board showing you 10,568 U.S. listings right now, of which 7,482 in positive territory versus 2,150 to the downside. 939 basically unchanged over what they did yesterday, one, two, three right now in the 100 million club so far today, two of which are penny stocks. So you can maybe discount that a little bit. Zila and Mullen, uh, both over 100 million and then some 6% for Mullen today. Zila downside about five and a half. Tesla already there as well. 115 and a half million shares traded. TQ's 92 approaching that 100 million club as well, up about 2% so far today. Uh, the rest of these uh, getting close as well. 60 million across the board including that uh, GMBL, another penny stock, up about 10% today. It's been all about the uh, esports and gaming names. Uh, so far today, MSGM, speaking of, still the leader, was up more than 700 at the top there. Crazy, crazy move for that one. 38 million shares so far. ATCX as well. Notable name there, up 120%. Guys, back to you. Yeah, thank you for that, Brendo. And uh, yeah, guys, no, I'm not having a heart attack. I am just uh, definitely sore from lifting weights, trying to like hey. crack my chest, and it's just not. Uh, it's just like a. It's just like a. It's annoying. It's just very, very annoying right now. So uh, yeah, don't don't mind me. Uh, super annoyed with that. Um, okay, so still waiting on the bid for Amazon to flush through that 102 level. Um, yeah, DL, that's kind of funny there. And uh, yeah, MSGM, man, we'll see what happens with this one. Volume is sort of done, but uh, you know, if it's, uh, why is it holding here? Why are we holding at this 20 level? Uh, maybe we go to the upside, that'd be nice. Google, I'm just basically waiting on the bid as well. Nothing too uh, spectacular there. Man, what a long on XOM. XOM, I don't know why I let that go. Hindsight 2020, but that, uh, yeah, I should have uh, just held on to that one. And then GM pullback to VWAP and RIP. Let's see GM here because I did have the GM long. I'm no longer in that. Basically scaling myself out. Uh, I could have probably held on a little bit longer. I am now not going to take the long, even though I see kind of what you're saying in terms of like now that it's back in the range, it's, uh, you know, it did that little dip back up. Do we now pop to the upside? I just, I don't want to dabble with it. I'm just going to, I'm going to leave it. You know, if it, if it, ha if it works, it works. Uh, great. We'll see what happens. Uh, Joe saying coin flying too high of day. Let's have a look here. Coin high of day. Uh, yeah, where's yeah. 60 here? Oh, yeah. 60 maybe. Uh, yeah, 60 short maybe. I don't know. It is breaking out though. Uh, the thing with large caps is, guys, you know, the trend is your friend, obviously. You got to understand when range trading makes sense, when it doesn't. You got to understand, look, if it is up large on the day, you know, uh, uh, be very careful on the short side potentially because it just could, could keep going. And, you know, after 11, you don't necessarily want to fight the trend unless you're going uh, for quick scalps uh, kind of in and out, right? So, yeah, uh, Doge. I know people were saying, yeah, Dogecoin, mm -hmm. we can actually pull it up on our platform. But uh, here's Doge uh, today up. And, and I was like, oh, Doge is flying. But then I'm like, it's up 7%. I'm like, man, these are rookie numbers. What, what about back in the day? <laughs> like this thing was up like, you know, 5,000%. Uh, you know, 7%. This is like, we're talking like, uh, you know, 7%. What is this? Uh, with talking crypto. About practice? Yeah, we talk about practice. Come on, what are, what are we talking about over here? Uh, yeah, you know, maybe uh, maybe uh, the start of something special, or maybe uh, you know nothing special at all. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we'll see where it goes. Stock day trading saying Luca when volume goes and the stock is under SSR, is it better to hold or sell? As an example, MSGM dark possible dark pool attack. Sorry, I have no idea what you're talking about there. If the volume, <laughs> dark pool attack, I, I mean, it is, ah. it is digital warfare, but who's attacking who over here? Uh, when volume goes and the stock is under SSR, 
Yeah. There's a better to hold. I don't know, man. You gotta, you gotta just do whatever makes the most sense to you. There's no, there's no right way to do it, and that's why the market is so interesting. Anyone can put their money where their mouth is, and anyone has the potential to make money uh, or lose money. Right? Uh, yep. uh, anything can happen. So uh, I would just say, just make sure that you're managing risk. That's the most important thing. For myself, like literally, the reason why I'm long MSGM is because this is like something that could go to 25. Like we saw it before, it like flew up, it flew up, it flew up, it flew down. So it's just holding the 20 level and it's giving a little bit of like curl action. You know, if I lose, if it goes below 20, I, I'm gonna lose this trade, so I'm gonna lose a dollar. But if it goes to like 25, then maybe I make $5. So like, you know, maybe like a five to one, we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, Tyler, Spro time, uh, Spro time coming in soon. Uh, we'll see what happens there. And uh, yeah, okay, so now this is the thing, right? So now we move to the upside. So now we're 22. So at this point, I am now almost a dollar in the money. But this can reverse, and then I can be out of the money, and it could be in a downhaul. So I'm praying to God that my stop is like gonna save me, but it is not. Your size is your risk, so I am sized accordingly. So even in a worst case scenario, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna panic too too hard. And uh, Stonconia saying when dark pools attack, remember the five Ds: Doge, dip, duck, dive, and do and dodge. Yeah, <laughs> if you can dodge, if you can dodge a dark pool, you can dodge anything in this market. <laughs> um, yeah, no bots uh, bots run wild. Uh, hopefully some people getting a laugh at what I'm saying here. I am looking for other areas. I think I missed that Amazon dip buy. I'm just looking, I don't have uh, any more fills there. So it didn't actually go. I think I was bidding 91s, but it did actually break the, the 102. So I was looking for this, but I was looking for it a little bit lower. And again, guys, when I say there is no perfect science to it, it is more so just an art. At least my scalping is more of an art. I just kind of look at areas and I'm like, hey, this is what I'm thinking. You know, I'll try to buy it over here and then sell it over here, but it, it just went to 96. So I guess that's a good thing for the long. Um, now we're actually flying back to the upside. So yeah, I'm gonna hold on to that one. We'll see where it wants to go. Uh, MSGM, I guess maybe I should take profits along the way. So let me just uh, uh, try to take some as it, uh, as it pops. The thing is, is like, because it's a 650,000 float, this thing, it's like, I don't even know what I'm getting filled at, to be honest. It's like, I'm offering and I should be picking my price, but a lot of times I'm like, let me just like spam out at random prices. And look, now it's back down like the, uh, 70 cents in the blink of an eye. So uh, yeah, it's super important to pay yourself, uh, but at the same time, this can, this can really go. And uh, it would have been lower if it was done. That's what I'm telling myself. So if this wants to go to 25, I think I'm gonna try to get out some at 25 or closer to that as well. Every dollar I should probably be taking profit. So yeah, let's do that. Every dollar up, I'm gonna take profits along the way. And then uh, we'll see if this actually wants to break the high and do something crazy, man. That'd be awesome. Uh, is there potential that this actually needs wants to go? I don't know, we'll see. Um, but yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens. But for the most part, guys, FOMC is coming up uh, tomorrow. You know, we're getting FOMC, Amazon earnings uh, Thursday after the bell, Apple earnings Thursday after the bell. You know, lots of excitement tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday. And I just kind of expect that today is, you know, there was some morning exciting moves, and now, you know, you're getting uh, some afternoon moves. But a lot of these charts that I'm looking at, man, like, look, I mean, Google, well, we got these kind of prints here. But essentially, Google is like, you know, dark pool. Meta is like dark pool. I'm just looking for uh, things that are actually moving and exciting but uh you know you got to manage expectations from time to time it is what it is man it is what it is no big deal if you guys see things that are moving in the chat and you want us to look at them and trade them you know let us know we'll look at them we'll trade them and uh amazon is flying back through Microsoft the 50 period now too, so yeah i'm gonna try to hold this now for a potential move above you up new high of days on the es march contract 4064 we're printing higher microsoft moving you heard um lucas say uh, amazon moving so is uh, Google and Apple and Tesla, but uh, Meta, not so much. Yeah, kind of getting off a little bit of that 147 and a half bottom there, moving into the 80s, but it's still slow moving. We are in two trades at the moment. We are in Spot and MGAM, and I flipped long on MGAM here. Um, I'm, I'm looking long, so I've got a profit taker sitting at 19s. We'll see how this one does. A few pennies out of the money on it at the moment, but... Yeah, it's a bit of a slower time now. Some of these stocks starting to slow a little bit. The market kind of, uh, you know, stair-stepping its way up. But some of these small cappers that we've been trading all morning are uh, are slowing down. Comp SRX1 says Microsoft. Yes, we had a day where we were all over that Microsoft uh, word. Yes, it is moving closer to the high of day. 246.38 is where the high is. 240, 246.18 is where we're at now. So. Stair-stepping up is Microsoft now up 1.45% on the day. 
Decent mover, decent mover. All right, um, let's go back to MGAM because that's the stock that we need to nurse here. I'm looking for an accumulation and then a, a break of the top. We had a, a nice, I don't want to call this a VWAP projection because it did break below VWAP, but it immediately reclaimed it. That's kind of what you want to see if you're a bull, um, at least for the moment, and it makes a newer high as well. So that's kind of, it's got all the right ingredients here. Let's see if it makes its way through uh, into, into our profit taker. So we'll wait around there. We've got a, a big position in this one. Uh, so a lot riding on the line. Back to spot, spot, moving to the high side. We are now back green on spot. We sized into this one nicely. I'm looking for that test of 13 again. Um, it's kind of continuing the trend after taking a bit of a, you know, a retracement. That's to be expected, especially after a big move like this. That's normal, uh, but we need that continuation north. Maybe, what's my cost basis on spot? 38, so I'll probably start taking some out in the 80s. Let's go ahead and have something resting right there. How many shares do I have? Okay, so then I can take up this many. Let's go ahead and put some in the 80s. We'll sit here at 81s in case it wants to make, oh, that's kind of far. Let's take some out in the 60s too. So let's go ahead and sit in the 60s as well. So we'll take, we'll de-risk a little bit there. So we'll see what happens with spot. All right, back to MGAM, uh, hovering around that $2 area. I'm gonna, really gonna have to give this to VWAP. I really don't have a choice because that's Next where the, the support lies. The support lie doesn't lie where I want it to be, where my entry is, it lies where it lies. So I have to give it to there if I'm committed to this trade. But so far, decent uh, on MGAM. But yeah, MSGM is really all the hype right now. and. Uh, all these other stocks are riding off its coattails. In case you're just joining us, MSGM is that gaming company and all these other e-gaming companies have been moving off that news and sympathy. Uh, typically happens in the stock market where one stock in an industry does good and all its peers ride its coattails. In case you're kind of like a noob and you, you know, you know, this is kind of like your new thing watching this squeeze, these short flow squeezes to the high side. So that's what that is. That's the explanation for that. And we're, we're trying to trade these stocks based on levels and momentum. Yeah, somebody in the chat was saying, uh, you guys are so calm when you're trading. I get so nervous, that's my problem. So uh, the first obvious thing that I would tell you is uh, drop the size, man. Drop the size. If you're too nervous when you're trading, you're trading too much size. If you're too, you know, excited and when you're in a win, um, you have too much size. Uh, you know, if you're not feeling anything and you're just like, I don't care about this at all, then you're just not in enough size. So it's, uh, there needs to be some type of perfect uh, balance there so where you care about your, your business, but you're not like nervous and getting emotional about things. And then you just need to follow the strategy that you set for yourself and just repeat that over and over and over again and make a lot of money along the way. That's basically the way that it works for, uh, um, uh, for successful traders. Uh, Roberto Baca, Luca, get into Lucid. Uh, let's see here, Lucid. I, I was trying to find a way into this at the highs for a long so I'm kind of glad that I didn't. And this was a little bit of a double top and then fade back to the downside. Something that I see that stands out to me is this, uh, yeah, sure. you know, pre-market bottom, call it 1125, but it is a wide range. And I almost want to say like this area right here is pretty interesting for a little bit of a dip buy. It sort of dipped into that area. That's where we dipped before. Mind you, that was just below VWAP uh, to start the day. Then it had the move, right? So I always kind of tell myself this uh, as I'm looking at it in hindsight, it's, um, you know, in the morning, if you're looking for the dip and it looks really good, then it actually gives you the move. You can try it again and recycle areas for sure, 100%. But just understand that the likelihood that it gives you the exact same move is, is low, especially uh, in the afternoon, right? We are now uh, uh, past 12.30 in the afternoon. Um, it's, uh, you know, things just tend to slow down in the middle of the day. That's why uh, I myself like going for mean reversion, um, you know, in the middle of the day, because good if point. you have the up move, Basically, I'm looking for them to down move back. So it's not that I, you know, love the short and, it's, and I think it's going to $5. Like, no, no, no. I just, like, it went up. It maybe could reverse the whole move. That's basically what I look for. Or, you know, long MSGM right now. It's like I'm taking a long because it went up. It had a pullback. For whatever reason, this, this action on small caps is something that we, uh, we tend to see. Uh, we tend to see this, uh, you know, over and over again. I'm just looking for my snipping tool to kind of uh, draw this here. So, you know, it has the up move, right? comes back down, and something to note is the fact that it did the dip and then quickly reclaimed it. So that was pretty interesting. And then we're sort of doing this, and this is pretty interesting, the fact that we dip and then back into the range. So looking at this, it did it once, it did it twice. I'm like, let me try the long here, because maybe it now has the 50 periods here. Maybe we can get a little bit of a move up. And then at this point now, I am still holding some of the position, but we are kind of going back a, a little bit 
to the downside, but again, nothing goes up in a straight line. As much as I want this move from the morning, it's probably not gonna happen, but what I'm looking for is even if it dips back down, um, I would love for it to hold that 20 mark because if it breaks 20, I'm out of the trade. I'm probably not gonna take another one on it. But if it holds or curls down or even goes here, I would love to see like a high a day like move. And then for myself, like I'm basically having orders to like just randomly get out um, at random prices, just like sell the strength. You know, like it's as a day trader, like I'm not carrying positions overnight, I'm not swinging. And so for myself, I need to, uh, I need to, uh, you know, pay myself as it uh, moves to the upside. So I'm saying Luca did, did get murked. Luca did get murked, question mark. Um, I don't know what that means, man. Like, but did uh, you do badly? No. I well, mean, no, no. I'm in a, I'm in a winner right now. Yeah, it's, it's exactly. going well. I'm a, it's a dollar fifty in the yeah. money. Uh, I'm just like, yeah, I'm just like recycling shares on a few different things. I sold Google for an L, so it actually like moved up to 98. So I sold it at like 91. Any time that. that something goes to like, it's like spend so much time below, and I'm like, well, 98s aren't breaking to the upside, and then they uh, they kind of like move to the upside. I'm like, okay, it's probably gonna print. 98s. I don't really want to hold. I was in short at like probably 75 or something. So I'm like, ah, I'll just like off this and then get back into it. Uh, yeah, man. I take uh, I take L's all the time, man, all the time. And then I take wins all the time. I, I just take a lot of a lot of trades and I just nah, I try not to focus on PNL. I just want to do what I think is the right thing. And as long as I just do it over and over again, I just want to be numb to the uh, the, so the ups true. and the downs. I don't uh, I don't care, man. I just want to like take what I think is uh, good trades and and go from there. Uh, somebody saying I sold Google at 91 for the two for that too. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I just I just got out of it. I'm gonna see how 98 breaks. I want to short this no. over 98, but I want to short like you know like well over 98 into the 20s. Uh, so yeah, let's see if this wants to break 98 now to the upside, and then I'm gonna try to scale into a short, and then hopefully take it. Uh, you know, it goes back through 98 to the downside, and then I'll I'll, I'll cover on that one. Uh, Stonconia is saying Merck. Are we extras on the wire now? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I don't All know. right, guys. Going to an IPO at Luca All right, stock. market yeah. is continuing to print newer highs. 40.65 now is the high on the March ES contract. I believe 40.77. I want to say, hold on, let me double check that. I believe that's the high of day yesterday. 76, 70, 78. 40.78 is the high of day yesterday. So, you yeah, know, we're still uh, 13 points away from that high, but stair stepping up in the right direction. Uh, making uh, kind of like amends with the big L's that we took yesterday on the, the market. I'm not talking about, we had great day, day trading, but uh, we took L's on the long-term account yesterday. A lot, really long-term, it's more of a swing thing, but um, anyway. So um, Spotify continuing to accumulate here at that 112 and a half, finding a bit of a resistance level. It's broken it, I mean, it's broken it by five pennies or so, but keeps reverting back to it. I'm sitting, where am I sitting here with my profit taker? I'm sitting at 65s and 85s, waiting for that move up. Uh, volume kind of dropping off on this one. So I do like my chances once the volume starts coming back into this one, I'm gonna continue to look to the north side. MGAM still below my, uh, my out here. Um, I'm gonna have to give this to basically 190 on a retracement into VWAP, so I'm committed to this trade. I kind of flat fingered and out here, got back in immediately, so about a one penny loss between the in and and out by accident. Kind of breaks that $2 a little bit for the moment. Let's see what it does around $2. If it's more, you know, I mean, $2 is not the level, but you always wanna see holding that whole dollar level. My eye is gonna be on VWAP, wherever that level is. Right now it's at 190, 191-ish area. And that is all she wrote for that. So I'm nursing two trades. Uh, both are longs. Uh, both are slowing down in terms of price action, but you know, holding in the right areas for that move up into the afternoon when we get um, a bigger, a bigger move, uh, a move, bigger volume move. That's what I really want to say. Um, SOBR. Someone asking. Yeah, we looked at that earlier. My charts really have an, an issue with that. Uh, let me put a little up for you. SOBR. Let's see what it's up to. Is it a Nasdaq stock? Yeah. So SOBR up today, 44% on the day. It's a dollar stock. Let's zoom out. It's been stair stepping up. Very volatile though for a dollar stock. You'll have huge peaks here, 168. All of a sudden, we have a, a 20 penny retracement down to 148, and then we mean revert right back to 158. So it's been a tricky stock to trade. It wouldn't be part of this one unless I got a really good entry off a moving average or a support level. I'm gonna stay away from this one, but let's have a look at the three minute chart so we can get a more accurate macro view. So it's been one bull flag uh, here and you know, kind of uh, dancing around VWAP to the high side, low side, not my kind of 
Not my kind of stock because it's not really giving me the right levels to work off. I guess you could have had a, a nice retracement here off this big 168 to 148. 148 was a former top. Right over here, looks like we topped out there before breaking it, so that would be an interesting area of support. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to get involved in that, but that one is moving, though, so be aware of it. All right, back to MGAM here, still holding that $2 area for the moment, kind of bouncing off that 50 period, no, not sure what to make of this stock. We'll continue to be patient. Likewise with Spot, I have my averages in on this one it's very good it's a very big position so i'm going to wait for that 165 break before scalping anything out and i, I definitely want to see if we can test 113 going into the later afternoon luca yeah guys i'm taking an alibaba along here curling just above the 50 period so uh let's see if this one wants to go back to the north side not really super convinced with it but uh yeah we'll see where it wants to go i want to revisit tesla as well uh yeah kind of far away from that 170. man the 170 bounce that was a banger um, what can you say when you miss it? Uh, somebody was asking about Amazon as well. I am basically scaling myself out above VWAP. Now just waiting for an extra pop. I think, I mean, I try to hold, but then it gives you the sharp up move. And just looking at the, uh, the previous candles, like in the afternoon, it's like it does a lot of nothing and then it like moves. Then it like reverses, then it moves, then it like stays there. So now that I'm kind of watching what it's doing, I'm just like, hey, it moves up. I take my profits. It does nothing. It moves up, take my profits. It's probably going to do nothing, and then it's, if it gets that last move up, then I'll, uh, I'll take the, uh, the smallest uh, portion of my profits. Um, and guys, yeah, no, I know what murked means. I, I know that. I'm just, uh, I'm saying like, why are you saying murked? Uh, and it was just written uh, kind, of, kind of funny there. So yeah, Amazon, pretty nice, taking the win. Again, pretty happy that I, uh, it's kind of sad that I didn't get the, the reload long over here, but also happy that I started the long with the idea that it can dip and then rip back up and then I scale out, but then changing it in real time and just recognizing that, look, it is not really selling off a lot, and it's, it is up 2%, right? It's up 2% on the day. The market is up on the day. So this is my kind of, like, form of, you know, buying the dip and just kind of scalping it around and, and making those moves. Um, Lucid, yeah, let's go back to Lucid to see where this one is. Lucid uh, now back up through VWAP. It's just not really, I mean, this thing really needs to clear, you know, this is, this is like the interesting level that I see, like right here. And it just literally went above it and then now back below it. So... I almost want to say it has to hold 1180 to the upside for it to have that potential to run 12 and then go up. Um, obviously, Lucid, for anybody tuning in that doesn't know why this name is up, this thing had a crazy short squeeze. It was at like a, oh, yeah. like 850, and wow. then it exploded all the way, this is real, to like $18, and then closed at like 13, and then yesterday just doing uh, you know half the volume, not really too much, and now just kind of like sideways. Um, there is a potential buyout bid that's coming from the Saudis. Nothing is confirmed. There's no price confirmed. There's no real bid confirmed. It is just chatter to my understanding. So, you know, if that is true, where is the buyout price going to be? I mean, the stock was at $7. You know, if they want, if they want to get uh, some skin in the game and, and buy Lucid and take it private, um, you know, skin what are the they game, paying? Are they going to be paying 15 Are they going to be paying 12 It kind of feels like the market price generally um, is in between that 13 and 11 range. So that's, that's, you know, my take on where the most volume has been done for the past three days. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens with that one. Um, I'm not going to take a long on it right now. I don't, I don't absolutely love it. Uh, but if we dip down into the 11.50 rate, uh, area, I'll try, like, a bid down 11.50. So if we get there, I'll take the trade. If we don't, uh, no big deal. I'll just, uh, I'll just let it go. Alibaba is basically slow to start. Out of the, set, out of the money, 10 cents. Um, Amazon, I'm, I'm going to try to get 102.80s. If that wants to actually get up there, I'll take 102.80s on the offer. And uh, yeah, man, uh, just waiting for MSGM as well. This thing consolidating. Does it have room for another leg up? Can we get the bounce? Yeah. I have no idea. I hope we do. Yeah, I wouldn't I not mind seeing another squeeze like the one we saw this morning. What a nice play that was. Uh, yeah. It was really slowed down now, um, at least in my world anyway. I'm still nursing these two longs, MGAM and Spot. And they're both really taking their time. Again, bears repeating that they, they're at the levels that I want them to be at. So I, you know, I'm going to see these trades through uh, instead of just punching out here. So, um, yeah, I've got really nothing uh, to kind of add. Let's have a look at what some of these recent movers have been doing. Uh, HYPR, that was a stock today. Hyperfine Incorporated. Uh, this kind of made uh, a really big retracement south here, uh, but it looks like it was trying to take VWAP. It got rejected here at 137. This one went up all the way to 177, sold off. This halted too, by the way, uh, sold off, and now we're back down, uh, double bottoming a little bit at that 110, 113 area, finding a bit of a bounce. Hyper, 
What does this company do? Hyperfine is a medical device company. The company provides portable swoop systems, which is beside magnetic response imaging systems, okay. Uh, doesn't really have a headline. Yeah, so this must be a sympathy play. I don't see a headline on this one. Uh, what is the float? The float is 53 million, so on the, I don't wanna say big or anything, but a bigger-ish, so it won't be as uh, you know parabolic as MSGM, for example. All right, Sober finding a nice leg up here. We talked about this one, kind of not really giving us levels from which to, to get off on. Uh, 168, it looks like it's going to make a new high here through that one. I want to say 168 is the high. Yeah, I'm seeing 169 is coming, so that's a new high. 170 going, Sober finding uh, its legs to the high side. Oh, baby, what a move by Sober. But I am now printing on Spotify as we get that big big boy move up through the 60s and 80s. I get both that out. We're spinning the money, money on money, this one. Money, Finally, money, Spotify, money, money, give money, me my money. money. We have 28s long now and we're printing. Where did we print? In the, in the high 80s, so about a uh, 60 penny winner, but we're looking for that 113 break. We rejected off 113 earlier. I mean, I'm in a bit of a dilemma now. Do I de-risk and hold a little bit and hold a, a smaller portion through that 113 because I am risking a lot here because we could have a rejection, a double top off that 113, then a retracement down. So uh, it's one of those dilemmas where a trader always has with themselves, do I de-risk, do I let it ride? It's, uh, it's always been a problem for me anyway. So uh, I think for the moment, you know, how many shares have I taken now? I'm still holding a, a sizable amount here. So we'll see. I'm going to let this one ride. Let's see what it does. Uh, MGAM doing nothing, still holding view up, nothing to report about that. But Lucid now making that move to the high side, baby. This was all the hype. When was it? On Friday, I think. Uh, it was squeezing like gamma, gamma. This one had a whole bunch of outs. And Luca and I were just freaking out. In case you guys want to see it, go back to that. Uh, go back to the video of that. Luca and I were just like auctioneers. We couldn't believe the prices. Anyway, we have a bit of a consolidation below VWAP. And then you have a nice reclaim of VWAP here, bouncing up that 75 moving up to 91s so a nice little move up uh, some buying finding its way into this so uh, yeah we'll keep an eye on it in case it really starts squeezing here but I'm kind of committed to these two other trades at the moment that I have to keep my eye on uh, but I also want to mention that meta just made a retracement here into VWAP uh, it kind of kind of rejected VWAP the majority of the day really only touching it back at 11 o'clock uh, now it's breaking through it to the high side. I wonder if this is a, a bit of a trend reversal here happening on Meta before our eyes or whether this is just a, you know, a retracement of VWAP and a rejection. So kind of hard to tell at the moment. We'll keep an eye on it now that we know that it's happened. Uh, Kyra, I hope I don't, Kira, Kyra, sorry, I hope I don't butcher your name, but I'm not, Kiara. Uh, thanks for that, Bradley. I hope, watch him be wrong and watch her get upset. Um, wants me to look at VVPR. Sure, let's have a look at VVPR. What do we got over here? Uh, we're going to take over VVPR. What is this one? Vivo Power International. Okay, so not much of a day trading stock here. Yeah, it's up 25%. Uh, let's see what the catalyst is on this and get some more information. VVPR. All right, so this stock is Vivo Power International is a sustainable energy solutions company. The company is focused on battery storage, electric solutions, and customized uh, rugger, ruggedized fleet applications. Okay, ruggedized. That's a, that's a new word for me. Um, what's the float on this one? Company profile, it's moved down, 11 million float. Okay, so that definitely is a smaller float. Uh, looks decent. Let's see what the daily chart is on this one. So it's a multi-day runner. So this one's been running since the 24th. It's been a great swing trade for whoever's been riding this. Uh, nice little bottom that it made here at 22 pennies, and now we're up to 90 pennies. So that's a good boy move up. We, re re uh, we reclaim the 50 period here, and we're not that far away from the 200 period. So this could be an interesting, uh, it's a day trade, obviously, but this is, I'm looking at it from a swing trade perspective. I'll have to go back and see what the catalyst is on that, but uh, nice little move up, sure. I don't have a trade for you intraday because I don't typically trade these type of stocks at a sub $1, especially that have charts that look like this is kind of not my cup of tea. It looks like it's breaking out now. I'm printing new highs, so if you're long, good on you. I'm sure you're printing on that. 
Um, let me just have a look here quickly at my other position spot back up into the 80s. Uh, again, I probably want to take some out here and it bears, it, it bears taking some out. I mean, I really should be because I think it's risky to kind of wait. What is going on? Why is it not letting me do this? Okay, so maybe I got to go here. There we go. And just because, oh, that's so frustrating. Okay, I'll get back to that one. Um, MGAM. Okay, so be, holding a bit off too at the moment. I mean, get, getting down into that 195 area. Still moving sideways, but above VWAP. I like this one going into the afternoon, especially if we can get some more action now that we're about almost 1 o'clock. Usually the volume starts coming in here uh, at around this time. But again, I want to repeat this. Meta has just reclaimed VWAP. It's, a, it's, it's an obvious trend change to me. Let's see whether or not can hold above there. But there's obviously a bit of a buyer stepping in here because you don't really have that kind of move on the market right now. We printed 4065 to so the high side. We're down to the 463s, but Meta's curling up. So keeping my eye for a possible uh, trend change there on Meta. It's been relatively weak all day, though. I mean, yeah, all day. So we'll see how that one does, Luca. Yeah, uh, thanks for covering there, Sharif. Of I uh, just coming back to my desk, watching uh, XOM essentially. Uh, sorry, not XOM, Baba punching out of that one, getting the rest out of the uh, of Amazon over there. And let's look at uh, let's go back to Google to see where this one is. Are we actually uh, high enough to get the fills? No. So I am sitting on the offer, waiting uh, for this short. If we can get a little bit higher, but maybe we're we're not going to. So I'm gonna just get short right here. And then we'll see if this wants to go higher. I'll just average into it. If not, I roll with uh, what I got right here. And maybe we dip back into the 50 period. I'm um, looking for low 90s uh, for the cover on that one. Still an MSGM. I came back and thought, yeah, am I going to get stopped out? But a little bit of a dip, a little bit of a rip, looking pretty good. So let's see if this one wants to continue to the upside. Would be great. If not, no big deal. We'll see what happens. Um, and go from there. Yeah, Bre uh, Breckel's in the back is, going, is going crazy. Is he getting excited um, about bio? Yeah, it's, uh, I, uh, pa someone's saying Palantir high a day. Let's have a look here at Palantir. Palantir is, uh, Palantir is, uh, yeah, high a day. My, you know what, I think short. But it is up on the day, just like if we can get a little bit higher. But it is in pretty tight range. I mean, the long is obviously better in front of EWAP. Uh, is third time going to be a charm? Not really too sure. We're going to see what happens. Uh, Jess saying rig high a day. So we could have a look there as well. Rig high a day. Rig is on uh, New York stock. Um, let's see this one. I just feel like these things aren't really like You're dude. rigged, bro. Rig is, uh, rig is for sure rigged. Oh, right. For sure rigged. So I, uh, I probably uh, stay away Ooh. from this one. Um, we'll see there. Right, we got to have some and resting orders here, bro. Yeah, you got to... Uh, uh, I was about to use the washroom, but now we are yeah, yeah, printing yeah, yeah. on Spotify again, baby. This has been a big boy stock. I got him. Let's go ahead I and... Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to take some out in front of 13s. Okay, I took some out there. Um, high 70s. I'm going to sit here at 95s for a little... How much? How many shares do I have left? Yeah, I can take this many out. So let's go ahead and sit here at 95s, and then I'm going to sit above 13s because, uh, so yeah, that's the way it works, baby. So let's go ahead, and if we break through 13, I really want to break through 13. So I'm not going to take a 13.07 break. I'm going for 13.20. Uh, if we can get up there, maybe I'm getting a little bit greedy and getting ahead of myself here, but um, it is printing, but it's just got to stay that way. It hasn't made new highs. That's because it hasn't broken that 113 level. So if you're riding this trade with me, uh, we're looking good, especially coming into that more voluminous time of the day. Hopefully, we get a continued move to the upside on Spot Luca. Yeah, man, take your time with that break, and feel free to uh, get me an espresso, too, if you want to, uh, uh, yeah, get one. And I'll, I'll take a look at everything that you guys uh, have questions. First question coming through, look at coin. Absolutely. We were looking at coin from before, and, uh, oh, there is a little bit of a, of a bid there. You know what? Yes, let's go long coin. Let's see where this one wants to go. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, some size at 6018. The real question is, is that real? Um, you know, time will tell. We'll see if it wants to fill or not or go to the upside. I'm basically long right now for a scalp. So if this thing can, if this thing can, you know, pop to the upside and get over 60.50, then I'll be, I'll be taking fills uh, closer to 61. If that size breaks to the downside, then uh, you know it is what it is. I should have gotten long when somebody called a coin high a day, and I'm like, I don't know, maybe short. But uh, yeah, now here I am long. So I'm gonna take this long. Hopefully it goes to the north side. If not, no problem. I'll just punch out of that one and uh, go from there. Somebody's saying shop. So let's have a look here at shop as well to see where shop is sitting. Just below 49 currently, 
and uh, we're actually right at VWAP, and it is up 3.7. I normally don't trade shop, but I am gonna try. Uh, I'm gonna try like a little bit of a long here right now because I like this setup. It did bounce twice off VWAP, and then gave you the little bit of an up move, and this is kind of giving me vibes of like you bounce into the 50, or sorry, into VWAP, and then quick move back up. And uh, I'll basically take what I can get. But if I can even get like, you know, 15s or whatever, this thing is like already starting to work for me. So I honestly love that. I mean, as a day trader, guys, when you punch into a trade and it like starts to work right away, maybe you shouldn't be so quick to get out of the position. You should be like, wait a second. Maybe I'm on the right side and this actually wants to go back up. Um, so you, you try to find a way into more. But for myself, I'll just recycle areas over and over again. But again, it's, it gives that dip and then pop, dip, and then pop, dip. Now we're at VWAP. So pop again, that'd be great. So I like this long on shop, and uh, let me go back to coin to see where we are. I guess we, may, we probably filled the size there. So at this point now, I'm just going to wait, but we shouldn't get below 59.80. And I am kind of in the weird, a weird scenario. Okay, let me just uh, let me add a little bit more to this one. And then uh, I'll basically risk off of uh, putting a safety stop just because I won't be watching it. And uh, yeah, we're good to go there. Okay, great. Somebody's saying COSM on the move. Is it again, really? I know this one was... Uh, uh, crazy below five, but kind of kind of slowed down. Every single day I'm on the show for at least the past like five days, this move happens at some point. Just crazy move to the upside. And I wonder where we are, uh, relatively speaking. Let me kind of zoom out on this one just to see, uh, because I know there's better levels to the upside. Yeah, okay. So um, there's the stronger move. No, no, let me go to the 30 to see this. Because if this is, uh, uh, there's this is kind of far away from, you know, levels that, um, I really want to uh, potentially dabble in. I think maybe top side being 640, you know, spending some time above that, and then when it gets below, you know, inside day, maybe first potential rejection, uh, just a heads up for anybody watching it. First, uh, first potential rejection um, is, okay, I'm stopped out of S MSGM, is that 640, and then if we clear that to the north side, I would almost just say like seven and then high a day. So these are my very, very basic levels. And then to the downside, it's kind of this, this general area that it's holding. So, you know, call it 580 to like, uh, you know, 590. Seems to be dipping in that area and then, and then giving the pops. So it's kind of far away from levels and I don't necessarily want the short at 640 initially. I would love for this to squeeze to like seven and then get some type of over under. Uh, the, the biggest thing that stands out, and this is a 30 period, but uh, 30 minutes, sorry. But the, uh, the biggest thing that stands out is the fact that it's giving these kind of wick off tops, then reversing, right? So it's like it did it once, it did it twice, it did it three times, then it actually failed to the downside. So I would look for that at seven if we can get there. That'd be pretty nice. Um, somebody's saying meta breaking VWAP. Guys, just a heads up. So I, I lost on MSGM. It is what it is. Uh, I just quickly looked and I noticed uh, that, yeah, you know, this is... Uh, this is what happens, man. This is why, but at least my stop saved me. You know, this, could, this thing could have been at 15, and I don't want that. So I take the L on the rest of the position. I think I come out ahead or maybe flattish, but uh, yeah, it is what it is, man. It's all good. So I am no longer in that trade. Uh, life moves on, and we go from there. Coin is kind of consolidating just above 60, so I am kind of looking for that little bit of a pop to the north side. That would be great. Uh, somebody's saying Tilray double bottom. We can have a look here at Tilray. I know Tilray, I, I love trading uh, these, these stocks when they actually move. When they don't, like, like this, it's yeah. barcoding. It's more challenging, yeah. from my experience, to get the fill like on Tilray. Like, I don't want to be sitting here forever waiting for like 14 it's like a buy for like four cents. Yeah, I'll, I'll like rather do that on Google and then I either like win or I lose. Um, speaking of the Google short, it actually got, got filled there at the bottom, so that was pretty good. A little bit of a nine cent win. Uh, chalk it up, man. Just another 10 cent right. win over and over and over again. All right, Thank guys. Thank you so much for this, bros. Of course. We're going to drop the cash. As I come back, my profit taker gets filled here in the high 90s. We get 96s. I had an out at 15s. Call me greedy, but I just don't think that that makes sense to wait for the break of 113, which was obviously a top earlier, and then scalp 15 pennies. I mean, <laughs> I don't know, it just doesn't make sense to me. So I canceled that order and I'm sitting now at the, almost a half dollar at 45 is there we go. We just broke 13 to the high side, baby. This one is moving. I'm pumped about Spotify, got in late on this bad boy, had to average in to get the better ACB uh, average cost basis. But hey, it's printing now and we've got, uh, we still got a sizable portion on. The one that is not printing, the one that is frustrating me, but I still do have a feeling may go, 
um, is the one that is connected to the one you just heard Luca talk about. That's a whole one-one connection. MSGM, MGAM is sympathy to MSGM, and that's the one I'm in, MGAM. Just averaged in here again at VWAP. I have to give this to VWAP based on my trade. Uh, so we'll see what this one does. I, it's setting up for a flat bottom break, man. And I'm not feeling good about it. But hey, we're in it. So we, we're going to nurse this trade. So spot, back to spot. This is the winner. We're getting up to 113.18s. I'm seeing 18s print here on the ask. Spread is decent for $113 stock. It's like 12, 13 pennies at times. Not the best. You can still get cut up coming in and out of this stock. But uh, not bad. Again, we're waiting at 45s. We're going to see how this one materializes. And I've still got a, a good sizable portion on left. So still money to be made on this one. Uh, the market 4065 is the top. Uh, we're hovering in and around the top. We have been for like the past 10 minutes, maybe even longer, 20 minutes or so, in and around that area. It's setting up probably for continuation uh, as we are near the highs and we are the lows. I don't anticipate anything um, economic data coming in or anybody speaking, anything macro that's going to move the market, but you never know. At any point, <laughs> that could change. So, um, yeah, nearer highs, and I'm definitely looking long on some of these big cappers than short. Uh, but we'll see how the the afternoon pans out on that one, Luca. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I'm pretty uh, excited for the uh, the close today because we're obviously going into the Fed meeting tomorrow. Ernie. You know, the afternoon uh, for myself, everything that I'm looking at. I mean, besides small caps, uh, obviously in a world of their own. And speaking of small caps, this AI stock. Somebody is like. This is a meme stock now. I'm holding forever. I don't know if I read that correctly, but uh, I'm kind of like, should I, should I like buy this? I think I should buy this. Um, and it is kind of holding view up at this bottom. So I am, I am gonna buy this. Yeah, let's, let's go with that. Let's go with, uh, I'm not like, you know, my size is my risk on these every time I punch in randomly and people are like, oh, you're, dude, you're so impulsive. Like, what are you doing just randomly punching in? It's, uh, don't, don't worry, man, don't worry. It either works or it doesn't. If I lose, I lose. Don't worry, don't if I worry. win, I win. Life moves on. Uh, sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe not so good. Love that I am playing off the 20 level over there. It's, uh, it's just like, this is the, the most obvious thing that stands out to me right now as I pull this out is this level right here, which is just above 20. So uh, I'm long. And then if we break to the downside, then we go down. Um, it, man. And I'll be stopped out of that trade. So I'm long. We'll see where it goes. Uh, if it goes against me, so be it. I just got out of coin because the reason I was in coin to begin with was the size. And then the size was gone. And I was like, okay, I shouldn't, I shouldn't even be in this. So I added. And I'm like, why am I even adding? I should, just, uh, I should just get out of that altogether there. So that's why I'm out of coin. Shop, I did add to this um, just over here. And now Ooh. that we're actually kind of lower, I want to add to it just one more time. Um, I feel like this is a, a good candidate for a potential move back towards like this area right over here. So if I can get a 40 cents on that one, that'll be great. It's probably gonna take a little bit of time, but the last thing I wanna see is this, you know, trend lower. Like it shouldn't go to 48, 60. That'll just make my life uh, a, little, a little bit difficult, a little bit challenging, but uh, yeah, it's all good, man. Um, you know, yeah, I just kind of go with it. The biggest thing as a scalper for myself is if I get into a trade and it starts to work right away and it just puts me in the money right away, I'm very happy. I'm like, oh, this is a great trade. It's going in the money right away. This is what I want to see. Some trades, obviously, you have to kind of nurse them and they go against you and it just is what it is. Mm -hmm. But again, if I'm going for 30 cents and if it can happen in the next seven seconds, I mean, I'll, I'll take it and I'll, I'll do it over and over again, right? So it's the ones that go against me that I then go, ah, man, this one, I'm going to have to now finesse it. Where am I going with it? What's this turning into? Like the Amazon trade that I have, if you're looking at my screen here, it's like I really wanted to buy, buy, buy and then rip to the bye, upside. Bye, the same bye, way how bye. I was like trying to do it over here and then it ripped to the upside, but I let it go is, the, is what I wanted to see. But then I'm like, okay, I guess I'm, I'm now going with uh, this, this type of scalp trade. So it's just being discretionary in real time. You kind of, uh, uh, as you trade more and more, you get the screen time in, uh, you kind of uh, go through the, the motions. Uh, things kind of make a little bit more sense uh, as time passes. So that's kind of the, uh, the logic with that one. Uh, yeah, you just need to be in sync with the market and you need to recognize when the market's not really doing anything too, too crazy. Did you just do that on purpose? What? I just, hold on. Did NSYNC sing, sing that Bye 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 song? Yeah. Bye 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 Bye. Did, did, did you not hear me sing that and then you say NSYNC? Uh, I, yeah. Like, come on, dude, if that's not apropos, I don't know what is. <laughs> I'm man. like doing I'm things like, without what even What are the noticing? odds of that too? I don't like, know, man. I'm, I'm, I'm literally, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm just, I'm just going, I'm just flowing, man, just flowing. Uh, that is, uh, that is the, the keys to life, man. The keys to life and the keys to trading. And let me just, uh, the matrix, Henry B, exactly. Uh, just very quickly to comment on this. What I love so much about trading, a little bit about myself, is it teaches me so many important <laughs> kind of concepts and values that I then turn and apply to my life. 
And so, you know, trading will destroy your ego because if you have an ego oh, and yeah. you're a day trader, all I'm going to say is good luck. You're not going to last too long. And really, having a, uh, an ego is not, uh, is not good in life. You know, people aren't going to like you. You're just, you've got too much of an ego. So for myself, trading killed so my ego, true. and then I made all these friends because I have no ego. So it's like, uh, it's like a win-win, right? And then, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you know, I learned a lot of things about myself. Uh, trading is an endeavor that I'm, I will never regret. You know, whether I, I'm driving Lambos in the future, whether I'm taking the subway, or whether I'm on the streets because I lost everything, I'm going to sit back and say, I enjoyed the process, man. I, I did enjoyed it my the process. Way too. I did it my way. I enjoyed the process. It was a lot of fun along the way. Um, I'm looking at Amazon for a dip into 102 for a long here. Let's see if this wants to actually fill me in down there. All right. A um, couple of trades. Uh, let's start with the better one here, which is spot uh, retraced aggressively to the 50 period moving average. My, my in on this one is 22s. It came back into the high, to the high 40s, low 50s there. But I'm like, hey, uh, this is an inflection point because last time we retraced off the 50, we ended up bouncing. So do I want to paper hand this trade and get out or give this an opportunity to bounce off the 50? I chose the latter instead of the former. Uh, it retraces into the 70s here. Doesn't change my plan, but it makes me a little concerned because now we've rejected off 113 a couple of times. Um, the second time we obviously break through 113, but then we retrace below immediately. So for all intents and purposes, when you look at the daily chart, you're gonna be like, okay, 113 rejected, right? Even though you're looking, uh, we're looking intraday. So I don't, wanna, I don't wanna pull the trigger on this one now, but I think if this one breaks 50 again, that'll be a lower low, and I wanna be out of this one to basically lock in my profit. So I'm thinking if we break the trough here, which will be like a 140, a 112.46. If we do that, I'm out. Otherwise, I want to hold the remaining portion. I want to ride it through that break and continuation through 113. I'm sitting here. I've got a profit taker sitting at 45s. Recall, I adjusted my profit taker from the teens into the 45s, thinking you know uh, that that would be the, the move. It wouldn't be a 15 penny move. It would be a bit stronger. So we'll see how my theory holds up. So far, you know, decent move on it. It's bit, it's been a very big winner, but I want to see more. I want to see a breakthrough 113. That will really put like uh, the cherry on top of the icing there. Um, back now to the not so good trade. MGAM, uh, this one's setting up for a flat bottom break and making me nervous. So uh, I've averaged as max as I can I can into this trade. So if it's going to be an L, it's going to be an L here. I'm not going to be averaging in any more into this trade. It's going to have to hold VWAP here and show me that it's got intentions of making uh, a push north. Otherwise, you know, through the break of this trough here, this 179 break, I'm out. This will be a big loser for me, but it'll be. You know, it's not going to dent my day, but this will be a big loser because I've added a number of times on this. So this will take away some of the profits, full disclosure on that. Um, nothing else in my world other than those two at the moment. Uh, it were, it's worth noting here that we're uh, kind of accumulating at the uh, high of day um, on the ES March contract. I don't know if that's good or bad thing. Sometimes when we see accumulations, we have a, an aggressive break through them, especially uh, if, you know, look, look at this. Since 6.30 in the morning, it's been one move up on the futures. That's at 6.30 low. Um, that's basically like when I turned on my TV and started watching the morning uh, business news. We were really low and like, it was weird. We were getting good like earnings and from some of these players and then be down. So I was like, oh, we're gonna have a red day today. The market's uh, you know, gonna sell off in anticipation of Papa coming on tomorrow. Papa Powell is who I'm talking about, of course. Uh, but it's been one nice move up on the futures. Are we extended here? Are we looking, as Luca likes to say, for some sort of mean reversion? Um, so the thing we'll is see. with that is, uh, that's a great question. And I was actually just looking at the market as you're like referring to that, you know, do we get some type of mean reversion? Today is the day that we, we float. So we actually have the up move. And uh, if you look at the, uh, just the ES for the day, like the action on, on today, it's like, it's just very, very, the, the morning up moves were amazing. And like there's lots of action and excitement. And I do expect some type of moves coming into the close that'll be very exciting. But as you guys are seeing, it's like there's a little bit of a barcode. And then we didn't actually make this up move until we tricked it was like it was like tricky, right? Like we were dipping here, and I was like into the Amazon long. I was like, no, I don't believe this because I think we're going up. I think this is trying to trick, uh, you know, trick everybody into thinking that we're going to go down here. And it did that classic. I mean, I like the wick off bottoms when they're at towards the lows. So I think it was yesterday, if I'm not mistaken, or 
or here, we actually went lower into the afternoon after we got off the show. But when I saw, I mean, hindsight 2020, but when I saw this, you know, wick off bottom near pre-market low, like, I mean, this is awesome, right? Dip and rip, dip and rip, dip and rip. So you could add three, three wins on that type of setup and then dip and then not rip and then break the low. So it's like win, 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 lose, you know, 75%. I'll take that, uh, I'll take those odds, right? Um, but then I don't like them as much as it's towards the high of the day because it's like, okay, like where do I think it's gonna go to the upside? This is just, just for myself. I mean, it could, it could keep going, right? It could go to 40, 80, anything's possible. But at the same time, it's like, I don't like it as much unless it dips into like a 50 period or a VWAP or a pre-market low. Over here, it's kind of hard to justify, but it did that little bit of, you know, dip, close the candle up here, dip, close the candle up here, dip, close the candle, then actually rip. So uh, yeah, a little bit of dip and rip action there. But again, for the most part, the market is, uh, you know, just kind of barcoding and muted. I think for myself, I'm just sort of waiting. I'm like very patient right now and I'm waiting for like something to do something. So again, guys, if you are in the chat and you see something doing something, feel free to <laughs> let me know. It is 1.20 in the afternoon. I know it's crazy cold outside, so I'm not looking forward to going outside in the, uh, in the Canadian cold. This week is like negative 20, negative 30. If you're on the beach somewhere watching the show, Hit the like button and have a beer for me because I am just, uh, yeah, it is just too Freezing. cold and I, uh, I want some sun, man, Sharif. I am dying for some sun over here. Yeah, man. Um, and, uh, oh, something else that somebody was asking. UPS, flat top break to the upside. Oh, let's have a look. Yeah, something that uh, I didn't trade or look at today, UPS. But it was, uh, I mean, show before this to my, uh, pull, my uh, law school boy, Michael, uh, for, so funny, this guy was so sheltered. So. We get to, uh, we're, we're in res, we're getting to know each other, and then like, uh, this is in England, because I went to school in England, right? So he's like, uh, yeah, yeah, we have this company uh, in uh, Canada too, UPS. So shout mm -hmm. out to him, he called it UPS. And we never let him live that down. All right, flat bottom breakdown. Flat top breakout. Flat top breakout. There we go. Yeah. So is that even? Talking, a, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, absolutely. you can flip it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just making sure. Yeah, I know, right? People are making up patterns. Uh, no, but um, that's kind of what I'm looking at on the on the futures, Luca. Kind of same thing here. We're accumulating at that 4065. We've been having an uptrend line, and uh, you know we're getting to the more uh, volume voluminous part of the day, and you know we could just see a break of that 186. I mean, for all intents and purposes, uh, 186 is the level, even though we got up to 186.08, uh, break through that 186 would be a nice move up. This is obviously an earnings play today. Uh, you saw a bit of a mixed result bag with this one where it had declines in its international businesses, but it did well in its US business. So kind of a yeah mixed story with this one. Investors liking it, at least maybe because we're up on the day. I don't know, it's up almost 5%. Uh, so a bit of a good move up, you know, th these earnings have been so mixed, kind of hard to predict where we're going to go. So there we go. I'm at a spot. It breaks down below that 112.45. I said, no, -uh, I'm not going to give any money back on this one. If this is going to reject uh, and make a newer low, I don't want, uh, I don't want to uh, have any movement, any part of this move to the downside. Recall my in was 22. So getting out, where'd I get out here? I got Oh, 38, okay. So the end up being, obviously I gave some money back because we went as high as 113.31. And you know, I obviously didn't cash out there, but hey, it ends up being a really good trade. Nonetheless, we get um, almost a dollar on that. So nice little move on spot. The other one that is giving me a lot, a lot of problems is this stupid MGAM. I hate it. Um, and I, geez, I'm, it's not coming to my, my stop out area where, where it's below the break of 180 where I'll get stopped out, but it's not really showing me what I want anymore. It had been, it had been hovering above VWAP, showing its intent to kind of make newer highs and push and push forward, but that that's sort of all faded now. It's still up 91%. Um, no other small capper is really taking its spot here. I mean, uh, you've had a slowdown on MSGM, you've had a slowdown on MGAM, uh, even Sober has now slowed down even though it's a dollar stock. Uh, what else has uh, been up to? Yeah, all the five-minute volumes on a lot of these uh, st on these um, small cappers has slowed down. So, waiting for that volume to pick back up. Whenever that comes in, uh, we'll, we'll definitely be on top of that. Carvana is frozen. We haven't looked at Vana for a last little while, so let's pull that up. Let's take off ups here. CVA. Um, yeah, it has been. I mean, kind of like with the stocks that I was talking. 
You're, you want to short it, eh? I, I mean, yeah. Like it's. Uh, I just want to short it all the way to six. But uh, I think uh, <laughs> safe to say, um, it's funny that you're you're pulling up Carvana, and I don't want to cut you off. No, it's cool. But bro. I have a very very strong. Uh, this is a. Uh, you know, I I initially said maybe 880 can be the bottom. But something that I'm sort of telling myself is the fact that the run started when it broke 850. So I'm sort of wondering. Does 850 react in some type of way? Maybe not today. Maybe it doesn't go to 850 today. But the fact that, you know, it was at 850, those eight over-unders, I mean, we're missing a little bit of data here, but essentially the over-unders at eight, those were money, man. And then we actually broke 850. Everybody remembers the super squeeze to the upside. And then, you know, do we actually pull back into 850? And then do we, do we bounce to the upside? Something to note about CVNA is, do you remember the big bid? We were on the show and somebody was trying to buy a million shares. Yeah. And they oh just sat God, there with yeah. like 10,000 lots. So for anybody, I, I mean, whoever was trading it obviously, obviously uh, remembers um, what I'm talking about. But for anybody who doesn't, we were on the show and we were watching CVNA, if I'm not mistaken. And there was like 10,000 lots, which is basically a million shares on the bid. And this was like somebody that was just reloading like 5,000 lots the day before, 7,000 lots the day after, 10,000 lots. And they were loading this at like, 650 or like seven like something like that like down over there and so it's kind of funny that you know somebody loaded millions of shares of carvana and then it just so happens to short squeeze to the upside um you know talk about perfect timing i mean you know you load up two million shares of a stock have you ever seen and then that three video? four days later it's it's up almost 100 percent uh have you ever seen that How's video that of jim kramer where he talks about his days as a hedge fund manager and how he basically would manipulate the market yeah. and how he bragged about how it didn't actually require that much money mm. and he could push it this way or that way, fake him out this way, fake him out that way. And he was talking pretty openly there for someone who's, you know, kind of like a public figure or like a mainstream figure. Yeah. But yeah, so when I see that, I think of that. When I see that move on Vana where you get that, that huge size sitting there, it's because he's got the ability to do it and he's going to manipulate it whichever way he wants. And I'm sure now it's probably not a trader, it's an algo uh, machine learning and that's probably yeah. even smarter. But I mean, you know, it doesn't I'm, take that much money. The whole point of what I'm trying to make, yeah. it, it doesn't really, institutional money, they can manipulate it however they want. I mean, and I, was, I was thinking like, okay, who's sitting, who would sit on the bid with a million shares and just sit there on a lit, uh, on a lit gateway? You know who would do that? Somebody who's short from oh, like yeah, 300. And they're like, you know what? Whether I get 750, it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't matter. Point, yeah. I'm gonna get the fill yeah, eventually because uh, I'm short at 300. So uh, you. yeah, you know, wh if you are sh whoever that was, congratulations. If you are, uh, if you did rode that short all the way down to the ground, uh, that is a that is a great fundamental guess there. I'll say that much. Let's but yeah, go kind in, of interesting Gam. that you know that that kind of came to fruition and then popped to the upside. But yeah, for the time being, I'm basically watching CVNA uh, this week. I'm wondering, does it dip into the, the 850 mark? Does it give a quick bounce off that 850? Because it was like the short level. Now I'm thinking if we come back down into the level, we're going to bounce very quickly and like maybe get a 20, 30 cent scalp. So again, you guys trade your own playbook. Obviously, you know, find trades that make the most sense to you. But just a little kind of window into the light of Luca as to, uh, <laughs> you know, how do I make decisions? Like, uh, it's just impulsive. But like, no, it's like I'm just remembering these old levels. I'm seeing things I'm kind of playing with in real time. And uh, if it works, great. If it doesn't, no problem. On to the next and, uh, and go from there, guys. I did add to this Amazon long. I'm basically building a long. I want this to actually break 102 and flush like into 10180s so I can kind of scale into the long for then the, the move back up. If it uh, decides to go up from here, then so be it. I roll with the size that I got. But I am basically bidding all the way down on this one. I don't think that we sell off and go all the way to like, you know, 101. 40 or whatever to the downside. I think this is a, this is a pretty interesting area here, uh, like right over here to right over here. So again, the money fills for myself below 95, so 101.95. I'm going into 101.80s and, and even maybe 70s, like down over there, for then the rip back up to print the 102s and above. Um, that's what I'm going with. I'll, I'll be pretty happy with that one and uh, and roll with it. I want to quickly call out somebody in the chat that said, uh, I think it was, I think it was RJ. I think it was RJ. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, saying, uh, saying Luca, come to Manila in the Philippines. Uh, it'll change Manila your life. In I, Manila. I, I have would never. Love to go to the Philippines. Have you been? No, I would love to I, go. I've never been. So yeah. I'm just Googling Manila because I have no oh, idea. It's awesome, man. Um, I know. Great. So I have friends who are uh, Filipino and uh, like half Filipino, half Vietnamese, and they tell me all like cr kind of crazy stories. I, uh, yeah, man, I haven't been to, uh, I haven't been to Asia. So yeah, Neither that should I. be next on my list to, to go. I did, you know, Europe. Uh, obviously the Caribbean, 
Um, but yeah, man, Asia next on my list. So you guys, guys, feel free to throw out recommendations. Uh, I, I'm gonna be kind of classic and say that you know Thailand and, and where Phuket. If I'm if I'm I'm Sorry. probably butchering the spelling of that. But uh, all the classic things I know. But uh, let me know. Uh, yeah, yeah, Patrick saying uh, come to ta uh, Taiwan. Yeah, guys, let me know like the and if there's any hot spots that you know of uh, in Asia. Feel free to throw them in the chat. Uh, always, uh, always love learning from everybody. Uh, whether it's traveling, whether it's trading, uh, I'm always here to learn, man. A student of life, uh, Hawaii, bro. Yeah, Brian. I, I haven't been to Hawaii, but uh, I know it's like super expensive. So uh, I gotta save up a little bit more, and then and then maybe uh, meet you there. All right, guys. M Gam is getting off the Schneid, as my guy Neil likes to say. We just broke two. We got up to two. I want to say 203. Was it 203? Yeah. Uh, and then rejected immediately below, but now we're back at two. So the volume's definitely starting to come back in here. The upward movement is as well. I'm sitting at 205s. What's my cost base is 201s on this one. So not, not really out of the money like I was before, but I'm like really heavily sized. So this one's gotta get up uh, to take some profits here. Let me, uh, let me go ahead and take this many shares out. And I'm gonna sit at 203s. Yeah, you know what, 204s. I'll sit at 204s right below 205. Let's see if this one can really make a move through two. We're hanging out here. I'm seeing two 201s, 203s. Let's go. Oh, and and re we reject again. The selling comes in. Obviously, people initiating shorts at this level. Um, or who knows what they're doing. Uh, but we're close to getting, uh, we're profitable on it now. But, you know, there we go. We get a double fill through that 03, 04 pop. So nice little trade here. So now, uh, no, and then we come right back down again. So that $2 level ends up being a bit of a toughie, uh, right back up into 204, 205s again. Where are we sitting now? So we gotta sit somewhere. We're gonna sit at 209s. Let's hang out there to de-risk. Let's see if we, we're seeing sixes now. I'm seeing, mm, again, let's see if this one holds above two. I just feel like getting out of the position because it was such a bad trade for me. And uh, I'm kind of counting my blessings here by even being break even, but then something tells me, you know, don't be the weak hand that gets shaken out. Um, you know, stick with the trade and let, let it materialize. Sixes here is a level we're getting rejections off six uh, over and over. Uh, we'll see if seven can break. I'm sitting at nines, I think. So mm, let's see what this one does. I think like the more I stare at it, uh, the more <laughs> it annoys me. So uh, I'll just leave that one to be. And once uh, we get the fill, uh, I'll let you know. Uh, Meta though, rejecting very aggressively off that uh, VWAP. Look at it, accumulated at VWAP. It wasn't really touching it before, and then it got super close to it, started accumulating at that level, and then you get a rejection. We're not seeing that same rejection in the market. We're seeing a, a push back to high. So Meta showing that it is relatively weak ahead of earnings tomorrow. Um, but I think we got Brendo at the big desk, and he's got an energy update. Hey guys, we're back up in 30 minutes. Make sure you join us at uh, two o'clock this afternoon. As always as well, hit the like and make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so today. A uh, pretty positive day for oil, really. The NYMEX contract specifically now up 1.34. We haven't seen ice go uh, positive yet, but back to 0.4. Uh, Brent crude was down more than 1% at one point today. A lot of people talking about this. Uh, more U.S. demand coming uh, despite the weaker dollar, so initial weakness coming off the dip in the U.S. dollar overall, but uh, more demand uh, throughout the remainder of uh, the winter reportedly for uh, U.S. Uh, customers anyways. Uh, here it is, uh, crude oil back to 1.32. Just trying to test day highs, in fact, back around 79 after gapping down this morning to 77. We've been climbing higher all day long, guys. This six level on MGAM is a real thing. We're rejecting off there multiple times. There's big iceberg there because I don't see that size reflected on the book. So this move up has really got to get through that six level. And I think we can kind of break through. And uh, there again, another rejection off six. This is like a quadruple top that we're brewing here, albeit on the one minute chart. But I think when this one gets, uh, this one gets going, it's going to break. But look for that parabolic move back south once we break six. That's why I'm hanging out with resting orders here. I don't want uh, to kind of rest on my laws and uh, try to punch uh, using the hotkeys on this. And I just don't trust on meta. Yeah, I know I didn't get into it. Yeah, I saw, but the, the rejection didn't make sense either. 
Sean just went long uh, 147.62. He buys that bottom wick and he's like already uh, 30 pennies in the money. A big retracement here on Meta. Um, yeah, we were talking about that one earlier. This one's just been all sorts of weird today. Uh, b floating below VWAP, then hugging VWAP, then rejecting off it. Uh, it's been it's been relatively weak, though. That's just, I think, a fair statement compared to some of these other big cappers. Uh, again, back to this MGAM trade. I mean, I could punch out here and uh, B break even. I have 90, 92s long now. We're 01s because of uh, that awesome profit taker that we had through the north side there. But... I don't want to be the weak hand on this trade. I want to wait for that 09 break and uh, maybe even print more. So hold There's on, no how many shares do I have? So what I'll do is I'll sit here, 09s, and then I'm going to sit at, um, I'm going to sit at 12s as well. I just really want to hold that too. Um, I don't want this to kind of be uh, a false breakout uh, where we retrace south, but I, I like the time that we're in. We're at 130. I like the fact that a lot of eyes are on. It's up 105%, showing up on a lot of people's scanners. Um, the old, and it's done. It's done uh, 890,000 shares in the last five minutes. So the volume's there. It's done 28 and a half million shares on the day. It's got all the right ingredients. It's just got to execute the way that I anticipated to. And I don't want to get shaken out of this one because I got a lot riding on the line. A lot of shares on this one, Luca. I just hope it goes to the right side. Yeah, guys. Uh, I am. Uh, there's. I don't think there's any news. There's no news on Meta, guys. We'll come. We'll come if there is any news. I mean, it looks play. like there's. Huh? It's earnings tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Like there's no. Uh, there's no news on that move. Sometimes things whip down and whip whip back up. But what you want to look at, if you're ever questioning, you know, is there news? Obviously, stay tuned. We come in uh, um, hot with the news. Uh, anytime news updates come. But look for volume spikes, right? Look for, like, crazy relative volume spikes. So even though we dipped and then went back to the north side, like, there wasn't really, uh, I don't necessarily believe that was uh, uh, anything. But, you know, we, we dipped down. We went back up. Like, there wasn't really that much crazy volume, like, relatively speak. I mean, you're seeing it here, right? There's not, like... These might just be dark pools, these big uh, these big prints over here, so not something that uh, is kind of notable. But, yeah, look for volume spikes. Look for the continuation. Um, look for crazy, crazy price moves. I mean, not, and, and, you know, consider the fact that if we dip and we rip, anybody who punched short is punching out, you know, um, giving that kind of short squeeze move back to the upside, um, and then it kind of maybe subsides and goes from there. So that was actually a banger, and I think, yeah, Sean said he was, like, He's, punching going, short over here. Bro. Like, that was, that was sick, going. man. That was sick. You, I'm sorry, I'm just making else, it, yeah, Meta is going. Oh, it's yeah, yeah, reclaiming meta. VWAP here. It's yes. going to the high side. These are two big red candles. I mean, if it grows above and closes above VWAP here, Luca, it'll be the first time since uh, what time? 9.57 this morning That's that it's true, done yeah. so. so I'm you know, like watching the 50 level, like what uh, 148.50. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I think yeah, if break we break 148.50 to the upside, then like we really have the potential to keep going, um, you know, all things considered. The market doing the same thing, man. That little bit of a dip and then rip back to the upside. So nobody wants to sell this market right now. Uh, yeah, kind of interesting. We'll see what happens next. I might, uh, maybe I'll take a long, yeah, I'm going to put a stop order, take Meta long. Um, maybe this is the wrong idea, but we'll see what happens with this. If we break 148.50, I just like that. Uh, you, Sharif, you convinced me into it. So, yeah, if we break 148.50 to the upside, this thing better go to 149 know, at least, man. <laughs> at least. Uh, yeah, Meta is a distraction as it is going down tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, Who, we'll see go? what happens. No, it's, well, uh, probably yeah. because they're, they're miss earnings. That's the whole idea. I read an interesting article on that that said, you know, this is going to be a really big crossroads for Meta here. I mean, how do they perform um, with, you know, advertisers pulling money back, pulling money out of ads because they're anticipating a recession? Because they're anticipating a decrease and a slowdown in consumer spending, therefore they have to adjust their budgets as such. So, I mean, it is a big crossroads. You also have that huge, uh, you know, TikTok taking a lot of their market share. Amazon dipping into their market share. Amazon, okay, I, I got to manage this trade here. Uh, on M MGAM, it just broke below two. Uh, man, my, I have 92s here. 90, yeah, 92s is my cost basis. But, yeah, so I'm out there. That one sucks. I hate this trade. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I get a little sometimes bit out. Am I, good, am I negative on it, though? Where am I on MGAM? Let me see here. Yeah, I'm a little negative on it, but it's not uh, It's not even a dent in the day. The day is, it's been a big boy day. So um, MGAM, yeah, ends up being oh, red. <sighs> Very bids. frustrating trade. Uh, I should have just taken everything out here at the 05, especially when we kept rejecting oh, off six yeah. there. 
But yeah, back to the, what I was saying. So Meta, yeah, it's got a it's got a big test tomorrow. So if they can come out and uh, fix some of their problems, obviously, you know, going back to 2021, we know about Apple's uh, new privacy changes that really had an effect on uh, their profits and their business model. Apparently, they've been able to kind of circumvent that um, by using some other providers for uh, for user data. They're using, I think, Spotify, not Spotify, excuse me, uh, Shopify, and other sources to kind of uh, to kind of get information on consumers and how they're going, where they're spending their money, where they're spending, because obviously Apple's been blocking that. So I, I heard that they're maneuvering a little bit uh, to try to, you know, to make up for some of the revenue losses. We'll see whether or not that's materialized tomorrow. I'm holding full disclosure. I've got a 133.56 long into Meta. I've been, I'm holding a big position in my private account. And we were as high, I believe, as 153. So I was like 20 bucks in the money. Uh, obviously, that's been cut down now since we're like back into 148. Let's see how high we got there. We got up to 153.19. That was on Friday on the 27th. And then we obviously had that big red day today. Uh, yesterday, it's been an anemic day for Meta. I want to say I thought it would be a bit more you know, robust as some people would be adding to their position because we typically see that, like a lot of volatility and a lot of buying into uh, earnings. Maybe the buying has already been had because it's up so much. Having a look at the daily here, have a look at this, guys. I mean, obviously that uh, November bottom stands out to everybody, but it's been stair-stepping up incrementally. Obviously, it's come from a long way. It comes from like 300-something dollars. I think it was in the high 300s. And, uh, you know, 153 is not even... Uh, a retracement into that, so uh, a 50% retracement into that. So obviously a lot more to look for here. My next level for it, though, is clearly that 160 level. Looking back on some of the price action that we had over the summer in June, July, and August, it really flirted with that 160 kind of being the low end of the range and the high end of the range being that 181, so about a $20 range. But you know, taking the lower end of that range, 160, that should be an interesting area of resistance should Meta do well on its earnings. Do we revert back to that even though we break it? You know, some of these moves off earnings, they can just move with the algo spike, $20, $30, whatever it's gonna be. And then, you know, we'll get some, uh, we'll get a mean reversion back into some you know, average price in between the breakout point and uh, the high. So we'll see what Meta does. Again, it's completely been a mixed bag when it comes wow. to earnings. You're seeing some, uh, yeah, Sean is in Meta. Meta's making a move here, man. So it's time for me to get into Meta. Uh, as well, because now it's shown itself that it is stronger than the bunch. It's clearly uh, with a trend change here. So we're punching into meta. We, we get that long. Obviously, it's going to retrace on us, uh, as is typical. Where do we get? We got long 56s. It retraces back down. But I'm, I'm looking for a longer move on here. There we go, right back into that area. Let's see if we can get anywhere in the 60s here. Uh, high of the day, obviously, is 149.88, but we are still a dollar and a bit off that, the, the recent high though, the recent high, there's no recent high. We go back all the way to 10, before 10, five to 10 before we were at these levels. So for all intents and purposes, we're pretty much at uh, one of the main highs of the day for the moment. Let's see what this one's got, whether it can continue or not, Luca. Yeah, somebody asked a great question saying, uh, what, what is stop loss hunting? So for anybody oh, wondering, yeah, a stop question. loss is, you know, somebody buys and then they go, I'm gonna put my stop loss underneath. Uh, basically a stop order, you're waiting to get the fill if it runs through a direction. Uh, as an example, I am now long meta with the stop order, you know, waiting for it to go to the upside. It breaks to the upside, I'm now long. I'm going to hold on to this to see where it goes. Yeah. If, if we go back into this range, then I just expect that my out so will be uh, down over the there. CAI? So, yeah, we'll uh, see where that one goes. But essentially, going, uh, going back to stop loss hunting, you know, 102, there's probably uh, stops below 102, right, at, on Amazon. And so... I just feel like the long is <clears throat> I feel like the long is going to be good. And so I feel like they're running the stops. They're trying to push it below 102 to there trigger people's stops so that they sell so that they can buy because they know that this thing probably goes back to VWAP. So I myself think that, you know, this is a, a hunt for stops and that's why I'm actually bidding 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 into the flush. Most people will be like, "Oh, it's breaking support. Let me sell." I'm long and let me sell because it's breaking support. But I'm like, I'm, I'm long, I'm long, and now I'm really getting long. And, uh, you know, getting a nice average on that one. And then now when it actually pops back to the upside, it's like, oh, wait, it's not actually going down. This was, a, this was just a hunt, volume spike and reverse. I scale out. So I get in on the volume spike. 
I get out when it pops back using the volume, and then now it just free floats and it probably floats back to the upside, so I ride the rest of the position. So that was pretty textbook. Long below, cover above, try to hold now for, uh, for a move back to the upside. If this thing wants to go to like 102.30s, that'd be great, uh, which is 15 cents away from here. I'll try to get some more out over there, and then VWAP if it wants to actually get there. AI, man, AI, what a nice move. I uh, took the long risk off 20. I thought I was gonna get stopped out for a moment. Didn't get stopped out. That level was holding, so that was a, that was a sick level. Thank you to whoever like brought that one up. Just like right over here, using basically VWAP in the 20 level. Uh, long, you know, my size is my risk. Not nothing to just drive home about, but again, I will take that 30, 40 cent win and, uh, and move on over and over again. Definitely can't complain about that one. Somebody said, Luca, Alibaba, I looked at it, it's at VWAP. I was like, yeah, sure, let me try it long here. So I'm basically going for 10 cents. If this thing wants to pop to the upside, um, that's basically what I'm going for there. And Meta is, is strong, man. Meta is strong. Mm -hmm. We're moving to the upside. I know, is Sharif, are you long this thing? Yeah, too? man. Yeah, you're long. Okay, we're all long. Let's yeah. see where this goes. Wait, we're all long. Yeah, I know. Okay, wait, I should sell then. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> Team trading. Uh, I'm going, not so much, well, more so like overcrowded trade. You know, everybody's yeah, no, in and out at the same price. But no, it's uh, it's nothing. Uh, I don't really yeah. care too much. Um, so yeah, let's see if this wants to run to 40. I mean, this is the level. We identified it, right? This is the level. You know, I said this is the level I want to take long. It's now above VWAP. It broke above the range. Uh, you know, dip, rip, reversal, moving to the upside maybe get a little bit of consolidation and then actually get that push towards 149. So I do like the long. I do like the fact that the anytime we sell off on the broader market, it quickly picks itself back up and moves back to the north side. So that's basically what I'm rolling with. I'm long this name. I'm giving it a very, very wide stop. So if we get back into the VWAP region, you know, maybe I sell it, but there's going to be a lot of volume there anyway, so I'm not really too worried. Uh, I have no defined stop per se, but it is just kind of discretionary area like, what I want to see is I want to see a pop into 149, and then I myself will be taking, uh, taking it out at 149. So give me my 50 cents, and I will move on with that one. Amazon is actually ripping to the upside here, so you know what? Mm -hmm. I said I was going to wait, but let me just take some out over here. And then, uh, yeah, I try to hold some uh, for more pops. I like this kind of idea where I just kind of throw out orders. I go there back to go. them. I go, okay, give me this pop. Yeah, see, we're continuing to pop here on Amazon yes, as well. Uh... Um, yeah, should not I sell on Amazon. I'm, yeah, I'm let, me just, let me just get that. the rest out. I'm getting the rest out over there on Amazon. It's a nice little win on that. Definitely can't complain. Uh, Alibaba is not really doing what I wanted it to do, so I'm just going to get out of that one. Um, and let's now go, just baby. nursing Meta to see where this one wants let's to go. go. I know Sean the... over there is like, let's go. Oh, He's baby, long. let's go through the quarter dollar, He's baby. Long from the bottom. We're at yeah, 75. Break this quarter We're dollar. sitting at 75. Yeah, let's, let's get go. filled, man. Come let's on, go. we crossed. Ugh. Let's go. Okay, so we got one out already on Meta. Looks like we yeah, our second L got rejected, at least for the moment. We were sitting at 75s. It crossed, I mean, but I guess the liquidity was uh, sparse around there. Uh, 40.65, we're back at the high of day on the ES March contract. So uh, continuing to accumulate at that area. We rejected it a couple times, but this accumulation, uh, I don't know, man. I feel like it may uh, burst, and it may burst to the high side here as we've been nearing highs all day. Uh, we've been, yeah, we've been flirting with the highs all day. I'd say we hung out around the highs more than we definitely hung out below the lows. We get the fill on Meta. We money, drop the cash. Money, That's already money, at 20. Money, oh, I didn't mean money, to hit that, money, money, but money. I love it anyway. Um, uh, we hit the, we hit through the 170, uh, sorry, 148.75. On Meta, so our second profit taker. Let's continue to go to the high side. We're now sitting at 148.95. We're looking for that test of 149. It may be a little while before we get up there. If we do get up there, market just printed a new high. 40.67, we break through that top. We are now creating newer highs on the ES March contract. Uh, some of these uh, big techers are gonna look good probably if we can continue this, uh, this move into the high side, but we're printing nicely on Meta here, holding now Still 50% of the position, we're looking to take out some at 95s, and then if we can break 149, I'm gonna hang out here at 10s, 149, 10 on Meta. Those are my resting uh, profit takers. So let's see what... Uh, the secret, what yeah, exactly, Bears are supposed. The secret is in the sticky note. Guys, tune in in the morning. Sean posts a sticky note every single day. Uh, you know, things that are potentially gonna move. You're getting it first, live hands-on from traders, and then you watch it and we trade it. Uh, yeah, definitely uh, really exciting. I'm, I'm excited to be a part of this, man. It's super exciting. And uh, I see Comp uh, SRX in the chat's like, well, Luca, now that I know you're selling at 149, I'm gonna sell ahead of you. <laughs> the thing is, is I, guys, changed my mind in real time. 
fast, man, yeah, fast. So I go, yeah, I'm going for 149. And then I go, hmm, why is it not direct arrow to 149? Maybe I should <laughs> take, uh, take a little bit off over here. So, you know, take what I say. Uh, so I don't know funny. if you guys, like, you know, follow trades and stuff like that. I mean, I'll always say trade your own book, obviously. But, you know, just understand that I am, I am really changing my mind on the fly here uh, because new information comes to light. It's like yeah. when it breaks the level, you know, we're talking about this. I don't know if it's going to break the level, right? I just have my stop order. I'm waiting. It breaks the level. I go, okay, here we go. I'm in position. Where am I going? Okay, 50 cents. Let's see if it can get there. So I have my orders waiting to, like, get the, get the fill. Then it just stops, and I go, hmm, why is it stopping? Maybe I should just take 25 cents and then, and then go from there. So I am holding uh, still some of the position, but, again, if we – if we go back down now and I take like a 10 or 15 cent loss on it, it's I still win on the position. Uh, but yeah, guys, I changed my ideas uh, very, very quickly. Um, you know, j same general theme, but I just, I just, uh, I kind of like make decisions on the fly Microsoft, here. So yeah. I am definitely winging everything that I'm doing, but I do have uh, that kind of good gut feeling. I've seen these things. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not the best trader. I'm not the worst trader. I'm just a trader who's trying to get better every single day. And uh, having a good time doing it, to be honest. So uh, yeah, somebody saying Lawrence saying the January effect. Yeah, uh, I saw that's that. a great. Yeah, that's a great actually topic. And uh, yeah. do you have any thoughts on that? I, I don't, uh, to be honest with you, except the tax loss harvesting. We obviously yeah. know that at the end of the year, yeah, exactly. Some of the people who are underwater on some of these positions need to liquidate them to take advantage of the loss provisions in Canada. It's called the ITA, the Income Tax Act. I don't know what it's called down south of the border, but uh, yeah. So that's basically it and then i mean obviously during january we've seen a lot of good economic numbers and by good here means like could be bad but good for the current economy and here's what i mean by that we are looking for a slower uh we, we want jobs to slow down we don't want the job market to be so tight but we don't want such an aggressive drop because then it spells recession so this comes down to the whole idea of this soft landing that the fed has been harping on about uh for months at a time now so that's the idea. We've seen a lot of that. We've seen, you know, PCE slowing. We've seen um, CPI last time it came in uh, better. So all these little things that, you know, you could say, you know, tax loss harvesting and a combination of all these things probably pushing us to the high side here. But at the end of the day, uh, the inflation is going to have to continue to come down. The Fed can't raise more than anticipated, uh, nor can a job slow down uh, more than, you know, than a reasonable amount. I don't know exactly what that amount is. What the, they're forecasting, but it can't be such an aggressive drop as to shock the market and to make everyone feel like we're in a recession. So a lot of the things pointing the right way. Let's see if uh, we can actually materialize on that. All right. I want to say just very quickly yeah, uh, uh, to touch upon that, you know, the January effect, uh, you said it very eloquently there. Yeah. Um, you know, lots of tax loss selling, lots of buying back in January. There you go. Uh, you know, everybody's sitting in, you know, 20% losses on the, on the broader market to close off the year and uh, taking advantage of those losses, right? So if you're sitting in equities to end the year, you know, your financial advisor probably came to you and said, look, sell that, rotate it into an ETF. You're still, you're still in the same type of exposure, but you can actually capitalize on that. 30 days later, buy it back, yada, yada, yada. Lots of things happen, and good things uh, happen going forward. So, yeah, everything is up. Like, you uh, know, the market's mention. up like 6% to start yeah. the year, right? 10% to start the year. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, sure, go ahead. With um, the... Just a couple of things. Brendo in the chat here um, messaging saying, AI days highs. Uh, C3 AI announces launch of C3 generative Go AI figure. product suite sentiment. Right now. Mostly positive. So there you go. We got that. And then immediately after that, we get um, a super oh, wow. chat from uh, Jean Curtis saying, with $2, thank you for that, saying, I just got out of AI. Should I get back okay. in? I don't know if you should get back in at day's highs. That's not my play. Um, if you made some good money on that, you know, look for a pattern to set up, maybe look for a retracement, but it's not my style of punching at day's highs. If it works for you, great, but uh, that's not my play. Um, obviously, it's been a beast. We've been trading this one going into last week. What a, what a headliner it's been. All these AI stocks are all the hype right now. We saw, we saw it for like a month, over a month in these biotech sectors. Now AI is rivaling them. We saw it on reverse splits. We saw it on a whole bunch of things. It's always like a fad of what's making these small cap crappers move. But uh, that's the way she works and that's the way she likes it because we want consistency and predictability. At least I do. That's how we uh, kind of, you know, you get your, your groove with this market. Yep.
Absolutely. All right, guys. Um, Meta, still hanging out in the mid-60s here. We're long 56s. We've taken out a couple of pieces all the way up into the mid-70s here. I'm sitting now in the 90s. So this one's going to have to continue. Uh, 40.69 is the high on the ES March contract. Meta slowing down here in its ascent, and some of these other names are starting to go, most notably Google, and to a, a, a smaller extent, Microsoft here. Actually, Microsoft's looking fantastic, man. Very close to day's highs. 10 penny off day's highs. 246.54 is day's high. 98.06 is day's high on Google, and we're printing 03s, so this one looks good. Meta slowing down now, looks like it made the move. We'll have to see if there's gonna be a continuation play here uh, through the top. The top here is 148.80 for all intents and purposes. We have to break through there and then we'll see if we can get a continuation into the 90s. But slowing down for the moment is Meta, but above VWAP, so a very notable trend change. I mean, you don't have to be a great chart reader to notice this, guys. We get a big move up initially on Meta. Uh, topping out at almost 150, stopping out at 149.88. Then there, you have a big move down. It holds the 50 period quite nicely for the majority of the day, breaks below it here, reclaims it, then starts hugging VWAP, rejects off VWAP, back, back down to the 200 period, and then shoots up above it. So this one has been coiling up. In my opinion, I mean, what I posited this morning is that it was coiling up to the other way. I thought it was gonna break down on weakness, but we didn't end up seeing weakness in the market. We ended up seeing continued strength as we trended up all day. So I think this one would have headed south had we seen some weakness on the market. Google was the one that was coiling up in a completely different way. It had been coiling up um, at a level, I wanna say it was a 97, 75 level. Now it's just broken through that. Um, we broke in 98, so looks good on Google for the high side now up 1.15% of the day. But I think we got like six minutes left, dude. Yeah, we uh, got we got like five minutes left. Man, yeah. time flies when you're having fun. Absolutely. I'm always having a time when I come on here. I always look forward to the uh, the Sharif Spros that he brings me along the way. Uh, hopefully you guys <laughs> enjoyed the it. show. I, I, I didn't really ask too much for likes, but uh, we're at 2,500 likes, just under 5K people watching. If you haven't already, people, hit the like button. If you're enjoying the show, if you like the show, like the show, hit the like button. Uh, that's all I'll say there. We do appreciate the, the likes that come through, trying to get the, uh, the show to the top of the algorithm and uh, you know, uh, show YouTube that uh, this is a fun show, man. We're having a great time. Uh, so yeah, guys, you know, if you are liking the show, answering questions, no problem along the way, and uh, you know, obviously scalping. I wanna leave the show with one good example, one last thing. So Amazon is atop my list for best trade uh, of my day, uh, best name of my day, best symbol. Did very good on it to the long side and the short side. Everything was great. I had a good learning lesson, which was this that I covered in the morning where I said, load the boat on the long. And then when it actually, row, row, when row, I got row, too row. long, I was like, oh no, I'm scared. Let me get out. <laughs> so guys, scared money don't make money. Yeah. So what am I doing all scared? So Why am I getting out over here? Like, uh, you know what? I should have held on to that one. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was, uh, that was a good learning lesson. Uh, learning lesson number two, which is not so much something that I did wrong, but something that you have to live with as a trader. For myself, when I go for these kind of over-under scalps where I'm like, okay, take the long because it's a volume spike, because it's a stop loss hunt, I will play the other side of that. And then if we rip back above 102, I'm gonna get out of that trade because that's where the volume's gonna take place. And then whatever happens after that happens. I mean, I didn't know if this was actually gonna run to the upside, even though I'm sitting here saying it live, like, oh yeah, it probably runs back to VWAP and goes there. In the moment, like in hindsight, it's 2020. Like I can't pretend that I know everything about everything. No, you just have to trade your own book. You have to trade things that you see that you can repeat over and over again. And so I load the boat on the long. I get out of the long for the scalp trade, and then I kind of try to hold a bit, and then I off it. I off it, and then we we go back to the upside. I'm not beating myself up for missing this portion of the trade. You know, this was a part of the plan. Take the long, get it out. That was a good portion of this little bit of a move. You know, call it average like 93s or 95s and then average out like 11s. So I'm still making 15 cents and you know, something like this, unlimitedly scalable. That's not really a word. Unlimitedly blah, 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 scalable. Um, yeah, but you know, example of the day, you don't know how much the move is gonna be. Never beat yourself up for selling. Uh, for selling. You know, make that money and move on, man. Look at AI. I took the win. I took the win, it kept going. Okay, whatever, it kept going, you know, but I'll Dim find another money. trade. There will be another trade day. Just keep your head up and uh, make sure, you know, you're trying your best to uh, find repeatable strategies. Uh, I think that's a great concept. 
It happens all the time. I talk about it all the time, but it's nice to see it in real time. Uh, and what other show does that for you in real time? So, you know, hit the like button if you're really watching the show. And, uh, yeah, uh, the afternoon show is going to come at you with the clothes, lots of fire. Baby. The clothes. There's oh, yeah. going to be lots of moves ahead of FOMC. It's going to be exciting. Uh, I'm definitely excited. What a, what a, what a week it's going to be. I mean, what a week it's been already. We had a really negative day, nice retracement here. We're, like, I think eight points away from yesterday's high. So we are close to making a new high. Here it is. The high from yesterday is 4078. Today is 4069. So super close to making that new high. And if we do, I like that trend. Obviously, the trend is subject to uh, a lot of stuff. The earnings that we're going to get after the bell, the earnings we're going to get tomorrow, what Papa is going to spit on the mic tomorrow uh, during his conference. So. Uh, he, he better be cool with that, too. Papa, you know, take it easy here. We've got a nice little Papa bull Powell. run in the, in the market. Don't spoil it, Papa. I, I, always, I said this before, yeah. and I, I just want to say it again. You know, we're all joking around about this, but of course. could you imagine he just comes out, <laughs> he, like, leans over, and he just, like, pulls out a printer, puts <laughs> it on the desk, and just starts going like this? Like, guys, we're going all-time highs, you know? Oh, like, we're going all-time highs. So... Uh, you know, wasn't it? It was China who kind of reversed back to, to easing a little bit. Yeah. Um, and that was kind yeah, of the yeah, spark yeah. for, you know, Chinese markets to pop to the upside. Right. And I, I like the tailwind that they have there, man, because they were really clamping down. Here's my theory, guys, and it's just a theory. I thought Xi, President Xi, Xi or however it's said, Xi, yeah. saw what happened to Trump when the in January 6th insurrection happened, how he was completely able to be blacklisted by the media, com by the social media companies, that his big tech companies yep. were able to black. She saw that and he's like, I don't want any part of that. These guys have way too much power. And then that's when he started cracking down on Jack Ma. And he's like, he, he with the ant thing, he's like, no, 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 no. You can't be in payment processing and in sales. And we saw that huge headwind on Chinese tech where they were basically going after their own companies. And then, you know, I think that they realized, you know, we got to compete with the Americans at the end of the day. We, our survival is obviously important. So here's what I think. The good tailwind coming right now out of China is two things in my opinion. It's the relaxation of the zero COVID, and it's the fact that the CCP is getting off the back of its companies. Let them grow. Let them uh, innovate, you know, and that's what investors want to see. I, that's my opinion. It's obviously just uh, it's a theory, but that's kind of how I see it. It's nice to, uh, I love hearing people's yeah. opinions, man. Yeah, I, I love, opinion. everybody has an opinion and uh, you uh, are important, so you deserve to be heard. <laughs> okay, um, it's just unfortunate that it's only me and Sharif over here giving opinions and looking at markets. True. But uh, yeah, definitely had a, had a good time, guys. We're yes, now sir. over uh, over two o'clock and I'm sure, uh, you know, Sean and Neil are super excited yeah. to get back in action. Sean Woo hasn't left his desk all day. He's like active. he's just been there all day. And There's every too time, much going on. Yeah, things are, man, things are, it's, it's definitely gonna be an exciting close, that's for sure, so stay tuned. Uh, you guys most likely get trans transferred over to the next video. Yes. If you don't, just refresh, find it. It's live. Um, we're doing it live every day, all day, five days a week, man. Yes, sir. Five days a week. Yes, sir. We're all done here, guys, but Brendan's at the big desk. He's going to take you into the close. Ciao. Hey, guys, yeah, 2 o'clock. Welcome back in. A couple hours left on what's turning into a pretty positive afternoon. Good to see as we head toward uh, what will be exactly this time tomorrow, afternoon. Make sure you're with us on Wednesday when we get that uh, Fed decision.